Bosch is here. Tacoma weeps. Tacoma in the house. Just fix this wardrobe malfunction. We'll be go. We'll be ready to go. The horse is kind of cute. Yeah. There we go. Yes. Yes, we're here. Waluigi's here. Everyone is here. Tipster's here. We're going to be talking about Tipster today. We're going to be talking about Tacoma Weeps. We're going to be talking about the Vosh Clout Network. And the weird people that it has propped up. People that would have never been... Would, would never have t had 10k um, YouTube channels uh, without the help of Vosh and, and the rest of the crew, right? I got my crew here. How are you doing, chat? Let me get some void coffee. Yeah, this has been a, like a tough day because just as I'm getting ready for, for this stream, which actually took a little bit of preparation, I want to understand what I'm talking about. I want to have all the relevant documents on hand, even though a lot of what we're going to be doing is just watching, you know, um, Poppy and Xena because they are... They are telling on themselves in, in a lot of ways in their videos, but yeah, I wanted to have the, the documents ready to cross-reference them. Uh, and, and all the while I'm doing this, I'm getting more stuff about Candace Owens. And it's not just Candace Owens, chat. This is like a whole right-wing civil war between... I don't even know what you... There's no good side. There, there's no good side to this right-wing civil war. There's only bad people, but there's bad people and there's worse people. And unfortunately, the worst people seem to be winning right now, right? As, as much as I love to see this downfall of the Daily Wire, um, you know, people might say the downfall of Candace Owens because she's the one that got fired, but it's actually not. This has been really good for Candace. This has really raised her profile. This has really raised her name. This has gotten her a lot of attention, and this has got her the exact audience that she's been courting this whole time. In a lot of ways, by bringing Candace in, um, Daily Wire, we're trying to harness that, um, that dark, the, 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 the most, like, um, the most mask off elements of, of, of reactionary, um, sphere at the moment, right? They're, they're trying to bring in the Nick people, and it turns out the Nick people won. Yeah, there's been this whole beef between, uh, Ben Shapiro and... And uh, Nick Fuentes, ever since I know I say that name, it's like it's like saying Voldemort. You're like worried that, you know, Standis Owens is going to be uh, there. Oh, by the way, Standis Owens, now Bandis Owens. If you don't know, there was an account on Twitter called Standis Owens. I was kind of like wondering who it was. Turns out it was none other than Slippery Nick himself, who is banned, who is banned, not allowed on the platform. One of the few people that Elon has agreed to actually keep off the platform. One of the few people that Elon seems to think is, is actually, uh, you know, worth banning. And that account is no more. God, it's like a risk to even show this on stream, right? Okay, so let me show you what I'm talking about. There it is. Uh, free Blexit. AKA Standus Owens. Account suspended. An account is suspended for ban evasion. Okay, that's my guess uh, as far as what that's going on. There's a Groiper. 
sad, sad, crying. Tacoma weeps. Uh, the 4chan weeps, I guess. I don't know. No, not I'm sorry. I'm sorry, 4chan. I don't mean to put this evil on you. 8chan, I guess. It's like more what we're talking about. Uh, the more blatant, the more mask off you. I stand with Standis Owens. What the hell? Yo, chat, what is this? What the f What am I looking at? This is Candace Owens as a JoJo. This is so cursed. This is so cursed. Yeah. So, so you see right here, it says free Standis Owens, uh, free or RIP Standis Owens, uh, free Nick Fuentes. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, like I said, there is a, uh, civil war going on on the right wing right now. We're going to get to this more tomorrow. I'm just giving you a little, uh, update on that. Uh, what I got my eye on, uh, what we're going to be talking about tomorrow. Cause like, uh, like, uh, my job is never done. A Waluigi stands job is never done. Why does she, why is she looking like Soldier Boy? Really? Wait, let me see that again. Let me scroll down there and see. Uh, wait. This is giving you Soldier Boy? Okay, so for those not familiar with the uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure franchise, uh, hmm. You know, she, it's weird, right? I was going to say that she's Jolene, but no, no, the hair is different. And uh, also the outfit is different. Who, th th funny enough, like uh, Jotaro. Wait, is that supposed to? Oh, no, it's Nick. That's Nick. Oh, my God. Nick Fuentes as, as Jotaro. That is a blasphemy. That that is unacceptable. We should we shall not stand for this. What the actual fuck? That is absolute cringe content right here. Um, but yeah, yeah, they're, they're just like I mean, this is just like uh, remixes of like um, JoJo's characters, and uh, I I don't know what J Jotaro. No, no, J Jorno, Jorno. That's what. Yeah, it's it's, it, it's like it's Candace Owen. Uh, it's Candace Owens as jo as as Jorno, right? And Nick Fuentes as Jotaro. That's what we got here. Although the pinstripes are kind of giving uh, Jolene. Interesting. Interesting. I don't know what that's about. I don't know what that's about. We could ask Catboy Kami, though. Catboy Kami could probably explain this all to us. But we're not going to be talking about uh, to Cat Catboy Kami today. We're going to be talking. Um, we're going to be talking about Poppy and Xena. There. Yeah. Yeah. That's. Uh, wow. Wow. Wow, they really like uh they really like Candace Owens. Okay, I don't even know what that is, right? But there it is again, uh AF. If you, anytime you see AF, right? That's America First, that's Nick Fuentes, that's Nazis. That's Nazis, that's Groypers, that's what that is. I am your guide in this horrible journey of dog whistles. Oh my god. Now he, now Nick Fuentes is uh Obi-Wan Kenobi. You strike me down, Elon. And I shall become infinitely more powerful. Mwa ha ha ha. Um, oh my god. Well, she, she went to, look, look. Do you see what we're dealing with here? Well, the, the, the thing that I can't stand is the gaslighting. The people that are like, yo, this isn't anti-Semitic. We just really love Jesus. It's all about Christ and how he's king. No, it's your Nazis. Your Nazis. Your Nazis doing Nazi stuff. Um... <laughs> The Jews really hate Christians. Th this is what I'm reading the I'm reading Twitter here. Um, they purposefully banned Standis Owens on Good Friday as to fuck with. Oh, no, I'm not even reading this. This is so fucking dripping with anti-Semitism. And this is what I mean about feeling gaslit. Like the fact that they're able to maintain what they are doing as anything other than straight up Nazi shit is is kind of amazing. Uh, they're truly pagans. Okay. Oh, you Jewish people are, are pagan now. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, this is okay. So so what am I talking about? Where does this all come from? A Twitter space, right? And this is a Twitter space with um, Carolyn Borosinko, who you're going to get to hear from tomorrow. Do you remember Carolyn Borosinko? God, I, I love how I'm opening up this stream by just teasing you for uh, tomorrow's stream. But I feel like tomorrow's stream is more important. I'm uh, a music production nerd, uh, but on hiatus. Oh my god, wow. That's cool. 
music production is really amazing. It's a very difficult. People don't realize how how difficult it actually is. Wait, what? Oh, this is from uh, Ellipsis. Uh, so any music production nerds out there? I got key step 37. I'm losing my mind uh, playing a Korg Monopoly soft synth on uh, it with Ableton, Ableton Live. Um, yeah, uh, this is of my interest. This is relevant to my interest. You've changed my, you've changed my, you've, you've redirected my attention span off of this. So I'm just trying to give you a, a preview of what's going on tomorrow. I know that's like not what I'm supposed to open the stream with. I'm supposed to be talking about, talk about the allegations. I will talk about the allegations, Bo Blacks. I promise you, we will get to the allegations. And we don't just have allegations when it comes to Poppy and Xena. We're going to talk about Tipster. We're going to talk about a little bit more of the Vosh Clout Network, how it operates in general. I want to give you the background. I want to. I want you to understand this, not just as a separate piece, not just as a separate pot, uh, part of like, wow, this really, uh, you know, messed up streamers named uh, Poppy and Xena like did all this shit, right? I want you to understand what allowed them to do this shit, what gave them the kind of clout, what gave them the kind of reach that they had, because they you've watched them, right? They're not like compelling people. They're not street they these are these are people who never would have gotten beyond, you know, just like like never would have gotten a thousand subscribers if it weren't for Fosh and uh Demon Mama and the rest of the people that empowered them and including, you know, the the network itself. And the fact that they still have an audience is a testament to that, right? In, in a normal circumstance, these kind of allegations would would destroy a, a small streamer, and, and rightly so, right? Because this shit is dangerous. The reason that's not happening is because they have learned. They have learned from Vosh. They have learned from Keffels. They are really good at keeping their little cult together. At, at, at creating these thought terminating cliches so nobody's going to Nobody inside the cult is going to question them. And yeah, like when I look into the names that are, you know, in and, you know, again, chat, don't harass anybody. This is not what this is about. All right. It, in, including the, you know, content creators I'm going to talk about today, but especially people in the chat, because they're the victims of these assholes, right? They are the victims, right? They are the um, unfortunate uh, victims of the, this cult that's been created but off the model off the backs of off the off the shout outs from the cult of Vosh and I'm going to try to make that connection really clear today for anyone who doubts so anyway this is um this is a twitter space that went on shortly after Candace Owens was fired Lauren Chen familiar face right hosting it Carolyn Borsinko does anybody remember Carolyn Borsinko Carlin, sorry, Carlin Barcinco. Anybody know who I'm talking about? Wait, what's up with AI? Did I saw somebody post about AI? Easter is pagan. Oh, that's true. Christians are pagan. Oh, don't shh, don't tell them. Don't tell them. I'm sort of edging till tomorrow, Donald. You are correct. You are somewhat right. Wait, I saw something about AI in chat. What's up, Tails and Wings? Good to have you in chat today. Oh my god, those are all emotes. They don't... I wish the emotes showed, um... Wait, I saw somebody post something about AI somewhere. Very likely AI generated? Oh, you're talking about the... You Wait, what? Wait, okay, let me... You're, you're talking, um... So, uh, Bella Glazer says it's very, li very likely AI generated, to be honest. And you're talking about the JoJo stuff, the, the, uh, they are dressed like, uh, Team Rocket? Her hair is more like Giorno, yes, yes! Uh, Peach Adelia, you are exactly right. You're exactly right, that's what's going on. Okay, I thought you were saying I was AI, alright, and I was gonna have to disagree with that. Like, you know, I don't know where you heard that, I don't know what, what Minecraft servers you've been hanging out on, uh, to, to be able to posit a theory that I might actually be code, but that is, uh, that is offensive, um, to AI. Just to be clear, it's offensive to AI, not to me. I would prefer it was AI rather than someone taking the time and effort. to. So we're talking about that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty striking and uh, no wonder it's so far up in the. Um... Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if this is actually trending, right? I typed this because I know what's going on. So it looks like Elon is banning some of the Groypers. He maybe has taken a side in the right wing civil war. 
and he has cho chosen to uh, enter on, on, I don't know, Team Shapiro, for lack of a better term. Those are the combatants. This is what this is about. This is an old, old conflict between Ben Shapiro and Nick Fuentes, and it should have been over. Okay, so, you know, we're going to talk about irresponsible platforming today, right, in terms of, like, who made Poppy and Xena a thing, because they didn't get there by their own, their selves. I mean, you're, you can, you can watch what their stream is like, and you can tell that this is not a stream that would have grown uh, without the help of others, which they got because they were useful. I will show you exactly how they were useful, right? Um, but when we're talking about the Groypers, we're talking about a movement that is centered around one Nicholas J. Fuentes. Nicholas J. Fuentes, um, <laughs> sorry, I shouldn't say his whole name like that. Like, I really respect the guy. I'm going to use this whole, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, chat. Um, I, I think his middle name is J. Um, anyway, uh, middle initial anyway. So, um, So yeah, this goes back to when Fuentes started doing content and Shapiro was one of the first people on the right to blow the whistle on the fact that this guy is, uh, this guy's a straight up Nazi and look, they're okay with, uh, nationalism. They're, they're okay with Christian nationalism, but they are not okay with the, the mask off, um, kind of shit that Nick Fuentes has been exposed for. And again, Nick Fuentes would not be a thing, much like Poppy and Xena would not be a thing if it weren't for Vosh. Nick Fuentes would not be a thing if it weren't for Destiny. Destiny, at a time when he was losing relevance, at a time, you know, when when he was um, looking for some content to do, right? He looked back to what he'd done in the old days and how Destiny got his start was from debating Nazis. I don't know how else to say it, right? You know, there's a big debate between him, Lauren Southern, and a bunch of people. There's a lot of examples of that. He wanted to get back to that kind of content. And that's when he found, he dug up Nick Fuentes, and that's when he dug up Lauren Southern, and he brought them on his Twitch stream. Never minding the fact that he actually resurrected at least Fuentes' career. I mean, Lauren Southern, um... I, I don't know. She seems to have dropped off the map, more or less. But uh, Nick Fuentes is unfortunately more relevant than ever. And you have Destiny to thank for that. So thank you, Destiny. Thank you, Steven. I'm so glad that you don't give a fuck about what you do, what the effect of your platform is. And that it's all about you and it's all about your numbers. And you got to have the spicy debate with the Nazi, even if it brings the Nazi's career back to life. Thank you so much, uh, Destiny. That, that's, you know, <sighs> that's great. But um, yeah, it looks like, uh, I, if I'm to guess, right, this is a pretty prominent Groyper account right here. It looks like Elon may have taken a side in the culture war. And that is, uh, side is Team Shapiro. Which might not be the winning side. He might have chose, un unfortunately, I mean, I don't know. There's not a lot of, there's not a lot, there's not anybody to cheer for in this whole civil war. But um, there are there are worse people. God damn, that's so fucking like and it, like I love that people don't get that this is like this is fucked up and this is anti-Semitic. Um, but yeah, this is what we're talking about. That's AI, uh, is it? How do you know, chat? How do, how do you know that it's AI? Because people really love Candace Owens, and unfortunately, people really love Slippery Nick, Booger Nick. Um. Do, do, what is it? What is it? Do they like, how does this work anyway? Does, do you feed a picture of like Jolene uh, into this and a picture of Candace Owens and it comes out like, you know, it sort of puts Candace Owens face on, on, on Jolene and then a little picture of uh, Jorno maybe and puts Jorno's outfit on Candace Jolene. This is terrible. How do, how do you like, cause like, look, chat can pick out AI. I can't, I am, I am blind to AI. Um, sorry. Well, I'm like, not even, I'm not even close, um, to catching up with chat here. All birds are your gods, uh, mam mammals. No, truer words were never spoken. Uh, Donald Duck. Just ask Andre Breton. Just ask um, surrealist painter Andre Breton about uh, birds. Um, Spring Equinox was over a week ago. Really? Oh, you're right. Sasha G. Sasha G, you were right. 
Oh my god, okay, so, um... Why the noses are missing from the, uh, Egyptian sh uh, Sphinx? Because the French shot it off, right? Was it the French? I blame the French. Uh, Christian religion would have never survived without stealing all the holiday stuff from the pagans, so we gotta blame the pagans! No, just kidding. The plagan- the pag- the plagans. The pagans platformed Christianity, and that- no, they didn't. I don't- I think they really probably fought with it. Um... I'm getting out of my depth here, chat, with my, uh, comparative religion shit. Oh, this is a good question. Vodka says, have I been hit with a DMCA for the Poppy and Xena stream? Uh, no, actually, I haven't been hit with this DMCA. Are you? Wait, OK. Whoa. Vodka, tell me what you know. Tell, uh, it sounds like you know something. Uh, AI makes music now. Yeah, AI, AI makes this music. Just kidding. Uh, me, me rules the world makes this music. So uh, maybe I should, uh, since we listen to uh, their stuff so often. Let's give them a shout out. All right? You want a more good music like this? Go to uh, me rule the world. Who has slightly more uh, subs than uh, Poppy and Xena? Who knew? Um, okay, so let's see. Get to here. I'm sorry, chat. I don't know. Like, I keep, I keep on saying that I'm going to wake up earlier and I'm going to be ready for stream and it, we're going to stream earlier because it like sort of makes sense to do that. But I do the opposite. I stay up late at night playing the Viking game. You know that Viking game? Oh, Woody Red knows who Carlin is. Good, good. Um, the Viking game is, uh, you know, the Valheim, right? I was playing that uh, yesterday. I ended up going on a little boat trip and circumnavigating the entire, oh, almost the entire island. We'll finish the island today. Oh no, so I got one of my mods advancing a conspiracy theory about birds, especially ducks, not being real. What shall I do? She has those interesting beliefs that don't jibe with her right-wing worldview. Yeah, her look, she looks like a right-wing caricature of SJWs, right? You know how the right-wing, when they show SJWs, it's like somebody like Carolyn Borisinko. Like, right? She, anyway, let me, let me ditch this chair. This chair is uh, cramping my style here. I gotta be on my feet for this one. There we go. Much better. Okay, I know I'm all over the place, chat, but... Um, yeah, I'm just trying to show you, like, some of the research that I've got uh, for tomorrow I want to talk about. Uh, the question that we're going to ask to, uh, sorry, let me, whoop. let's get the sound good. There we go. That's, uh, see the difference? Do you, do you hear the, do you see the difference with your, do you see it with your ears? Do you see the difference with your ears? Um, so, uh, the question that we're going to ask tomorrow is going to be, why was Candace Owens fired from the Daily Wire? There's three theories that I want to go through and, uh, tell you what my theory is, right? Because there's there's a bunch of different like theories on uh, why she was actually fired, and it matters. It it, it actually does matter. It it tells us something about the Daily Wire, I think, and it's not good. I mean, as as you can imagine, right? Uh, even though the Daily Wire seemed like the um, the less pernicious force in this right wing civil war, uh, they are still not good, and they they bear some responsibility. Like they brought Candace Owens on. Uh, Stannis Owens explains why he supports Trump. It's Nick. It's Nick. Right? So this is what happened. Yeah, Nick Fuentes, I guess, was banned from Twitter still. He created an account called Stannis Owens, which very quickly revealed itself to be Nick. And they participated in a live stream along with Lauren Chen. Lauren Chen set this up. Let's see if we recognize anybody else. Um, Jeremy Boring uh, from The Daily Wire, the CEO of The Daily Wire, stopped in. And, um, you know, had some harsh words for Nick, but they weren't, like, as harsh as you would think. Like, he was definitely walking on eggshells. Like, the, yeah, there he is, Jeremy Boring, right? Uh, so we got Lauren Chen, Stannis Owens, Jeremy Boring. Uh, this is a friend of Carolyn Borosinko's. This is Carolyn, Carolyn Borosinko, uh, herself. Mio. Oh my god, I haven't heard that name in a long time. This is somebody that used to be associated with, like, Twitch poll Nazis. 
Uh, I don't really know anything about Mio, though. I, 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 I never watched any of that content. <laughs> like, anybody who associated with Cozy TV, I just cut ties with, right? Including Ninetales, unfortunately, which was really sad. She just came out on my stream out of the blue. I was going to have a nice conversation with Ninetales, and what she wants to talk about is how what she's doing on Cozy TV. And I'm just like... Ah. Do you know who you're talking to, Ninetales? But oh my god, it's it got it got even worse. Like before, you know, I, I ended up finally blocking Ninetales when she, you know, responded to something about white privilege with what about black privilege? What about black privilege, Ninetales? What are you what are you, what are you trying to say? Um, but yeah, like this is what sucks about Twitch poll, right? Uh, she seemed like good people when I first met her, and and you know. I, you could say that she hung out with the wrong crowd, but in, in some ways, these things are self-sorting. So she sorted herself to those uh, that side, and I uh, haven't really looked back. Yeah, this is nasty stuff. So yeah, when you type in Standis Owens, you're going to get a lot of these um, Roiper accounts here. But yeah, this was this uh, mega... Oh my god, I gotta, I gotta close the window here. Okay, sorry, it was getting a little noisy. Um, let's see. So yeah, um, and and the the conversation is all about um, the phrase "Christ is King," right? Which might sound innocuous. It might even sound like a Bible verse or something like that. There's uh, some Bible verses to that effect. But most recently, it has been a slogan, a dog whistle, if you will, um, for from Nick Fuentes, right? And what does this do? Well, the Groypers, when they hear "Christ is King," They know that, that that you're one of them. And when Candace said, you know, those words, that's what she was signaling. Right. And they do know. I mean, look, look at the fact that he called himself Standis Owens. Look at this Queen Candace shit. Right. Team God. Right. Uh, they know Candace is, is one of them. But to but when somebody tries to push back, like, you know, the, the daily, like, I think Andrew Clavin was the one from the Daily Wire who actually pushed back on this um, talking point on this dog whistle. And, uh, you know, when you do that, then their, their response is like, do you, do you not like Jesus? Are you anti-Christian? Do you think that Christians are Nazis? Because you're saying that this is a Nazi phrase, but I, it's right here in the Bible. Is the Bible Nazi? Right? They, they you know, it's it's designed to do that. It's to, oh my god, oh my god. Okay, so yeah, Standis Owens, uh, rest in piss, bozo. Rest in piss, and uh, keep eating those boogers, Nick. It's good for you. Anyway, back to Tipster. Uh, Woody knows Carlin. Remember checking out Xena and Poppy back in the day? I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. And look, I don't think it would have been a problem, right? I think left to their own devices, they would have never garnered the kind of influence to give Poppy the ability to smear somebody's name, like like what Poppy did to uh, No Flake. Like it just, it wouldn't have been an issue. And, and they wouldn't have developed this, you know, cult around them, which, which they have. Like, and when I look at the names in the, when I look at the names in the chat, and again, chat, I do not harass anyone, okay? Whether it's, you know, a chatter or a content creator I'm talking about, right? That's not that's not helpful. That's never helpful. That's not never um, something that I, I want to be a reaction to one of my streams, right? It's really important when I'm pay showing people in a less than positive light that you know that I want you not to harass, uh, you know, anybody involved. But um, that that being said, some of the names in the uh, Xena and Poppy chat are just like familiar to me as as like Vosh. Um, you know, community members, as, as Demon Mama community members, right? They're, it's all, you know, the same group, essentially. Wait, Vodka had something for me, though. Vodka said something about, have I gotten a takedown, a DMCA? I'm not seeing Vodka in the chat again. Uh, it also resulted... Wait, what? there's a first part to that. Uh, the basic function is to provide a platform for merchandise and donations uh, to bypass the juice that you have to... 
yeah, yeah, um, that's that's true, right? It makes streaming um, more sustainable at a lower level of um, at a lower level of audience, right? And thereby it makes um, streamers, you know, that that are defensive of Vosh, which they are, and I'll I'll show you I'll show you how many times they've gone to bat for Vosh because this is this is like their mainstay. This is their mainstay. Go to bat for Vosh. Go to bat for Keffels. Go to bat for Demon Mama, and uh, attack the enemies of all these people. Oh my god, chat, you're like, I'm sorry, I'm so distracted today. Upload a bunch of JoJo pictures to determine the style, I think. And then you have to do Candace, okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. So you're essentially M you're essentially creating a massive learning model based on um, Araki's uh, art style. We got duck drama in chat. We got bird drama in chat. Oh my god, did Vodka really just come in here, say that one thing, and leave? That is... Sorry. Like, I'm getting mad at a chatter for leaving. Uh, not really. There you are. There you are. You popped back up. You popped back up. And I promise I wasn't about to get mad at you. I was just like, you sound like you know something. And, uh, and I need to know what you know. Um, oh my god. Still here, Poppy and Xena have hit smaller channels with DMCAs. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Huh. So just for full disclosure, all right, I've been hit with uh, attempted DMCAs by uh, Whiteleaf. And that's what's interesting about it, right? Because I didn't do like a White Nervo... I didn't, I didn't, I've never covered a White Nervosa video. I've seen them, they're very boring. I don't think you would like them, right? I don't think there's any reason to, like, White Nervosa as a uh, content creator has not been relevant um, since I was, you know, first starting as a streamer. I, I actually used to watch White Nervosa streams. I used to, um, gaming streams, which she uh, did in, on Twitch, right? And she would do them in the morning. And so when I'd wake up in the morning, I would watch her um, while I got ready for class. And um, so, you know, I'd, like, I don't hate her guts. Um, I don't even hate the fact that she ganked um, Destiny's code to make, um, you know, to, to, to make the, you know, to, to, like in terms of like what she's done with like sort of uh, freeing that code and making it available to more people. I think that's a good thing, too. Um, what where I had a problem with her, right, was when I did a video um, reacting to a Xander Hall video, right? And I got something from YouTube. I got um, a email from YouTube and it said that this person has um, has tried to take down your video, right? And and like the way that I understand it, it's in the way that would have caused a strike. So there's a three strike system on YouTube that if you get three strikes, you are banned, you are out, right? Your, your channel uh, will very likely be banned and never come back. So um, this was an attempt and I, I think that there's been at least three of these filed on uh, on me. So in my mind, this was an attempt by, um, you know, the person filing uh, the claims to take down my channel. Now, what did I do? I just reacted to Xander Hall videos, right? I reacted to a Xander Hall video. I reacted to a, um, to a Vosh video and I reacted to a, a Doe video, I think. And I got takedowns uh, for, you know, each one of those respectively. Um, all White Leaf creators, um, but they weren't from Xander Hall, they weren't from Vosh, and they weren't from, uh, from Doe. They were from Vosh's sysadmin. They were from White Nervosa, right? Why is she managing Xander Hall's content? It makes you wonder. And I think the answer is that that is maybe the deal that you sign, right? The deal with the devil that you sign when you join the White Leaf Network. The same deal that was offered to me by Zonia, right? Friend of, uh, White Nervosa. 
um, you know, way, way back when I asked about, um, you know, possibly getting a website, Zonia was like, oh yeah, I, can, I got a friend that can hook you up with a website. Her name is White Nervosa. And I was like, it's not, I don't want to be tied to Vosh, right? And she's like, oh, 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 you've got a problem. If, is Vosh bad? Yeah, I don't know. That, that whole, that whole thing before she was, uh, before Zonia was, became persona non grata with Vosh. Um, technically, uh, uh, Poppy and Zeta built their own, built their platform off of, yeah, so there are, these are, this is an interview get that you're talking about. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know, it's, it's pretty hard to point to one video and be like, this is the, this is where the platform is built from. Especially when you see, like, Vosh and Demon Mama names, you see names that are White Leaf Chatters. You know, in their chat, like, right? You see those people modding for them. Yeah, they're all retreads from Keffel's, Demon Mama's, Vosh's community, right? So, um, yeah, not not really buying it. This is this is an issue with White Leaf. White Leaf has, uh, you know, obviously a very problematic uh, figure at its helm, has a problematic history. What? How did it start? Where did White L Nervosa get her start as as like a Vosh um, operative? Actually, in defending Vosh against the allegations. Uh, made by another poppy, not this poppy, but the poppy that Vosh harassed on Destiny's Discord, right? This was going to be a big scandal. This was potentially going to, you know, stop Vosh's career before it started. And stands like White Nervosa were the ones who who were who were there to essentially, you know, try to protect Vosh. And that meant, you know, changing his name from Irish Laddie to Vosh. That meant going after the people that were making claims against Vosh, you know, harassing and intimidating them. It's really bad stuff and it just there's not there's not an excuse. They will give you a thousand excuses for it, but there's not one, right? The fish rots from the head down and Vosh is the head of the fish. We've seen that fish start rotting. Um, you know, Ethan Klein and H3 Productions have covered that extensively. And what we're seeing now is that birds of a feather do indeed flock together and that it's a problem with the network. It's it's, you know, Just how heinous is Vosh willing to get for clicks? I have to wonder if he doesn't go looking for drama. I mean, not right now. He's definitely not looking for drama right now. Yeah, Irish Laddie uh, was Vosh's name uh, before he was Vosh. He had to change that because of the um, because of the um, screenshots of of him uh, talking and uh, harassing someone on Destiny's Discord were were thought to be too toxic for his career to survive at that point. Um, they did end up like changing, you know, rolling over to Vosh, right? So the, the screenshots will, I think, for the most part, show Vosh now. Um, but yeah, there was a, a large attempt made to just kind of cover up. Can you get banned from YouTube by, for filing false DMCAs? I'm not trying to get anybody banned, just to make that clear, okay? Um, I'm not telling you that you can't file a report if you see somebody doing something that you think is against terms of service. Um, you you know, you're you're an adult. You can, you know. But don't I, I just don't want anything that I'm saying to be taken as a call to action in that regard. I am specifically not uh, not calling for that. It, it is really it is really scary, though. Uh, White Nervosa did streams and vids. Yeah, a long time ago. Is not a stream off tap like some gold... Wait. Uh -huh. Oh, I got it. Wait, I don't, I don't think I got it. The whole weird uh, cottage industry of content creators whose whole existence is solely based on defending Vosh. Well, you, let, let's let's take a look at that, okay? Um, also, like, I am fucking dehydrated. I'm gonna drink my... It's not moonshine. For anyone asking, this is water. What's with, <laughs> excuse me, what's with them and DMCAs? I mean, to be clear, they, 
<coughs> the DMCA's that Vodka is talking about, unless I misunderstand, are coming from Poppy and Xena. Like at this point, whatever arrangement that they had with White Nervosa, right? Which, you know, from Xander Hall, we, we've got a sense that maybe it involves like some kind of ownership of content, right? Since, uh, since, you know, or management of, of content, right? Uh, since White Nervosa is the one that actually filed the DMs or filed the attempted uh, takedowns of my streams. But um, as, as far as we know, um, you know, the severance between uh, Whiteleaf and uh, Poppy and Xena has has happened. That that happened, um, I think, slightly before I covered them the first time. See, this is what we call an unsubstantiated claim, right? It's a strong claim, and a strong claim needs to be backed up. And I'm sorry, but like, because this chatter says so is not like a, it's not a source, right? I hate to hit the H-bomb, like, source, please, um, button, but... But yeah, look, the bottom line is that... Whiteleaf and Vosh have some responsibility in what's happening, and I'm not letting them wriggle out of that responsibility, especially when there's other streamers right now trying to pin this on trans people, right? There's other streamers covering this that Poppy and Xena are these fucked up trans people that have, you know, like, like that this is a problem with the trans community. I think it's a problem with the Whiteleaf community, and I think that you're going to find that, like I said, the fish rots from the head down. Um, Vosh's issues are reflected in the people protecting him because that's how this network works. It's a mutual, you know, protection. It's a mutual defense sort of um, network. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Oh my God, chat. It's one of those days where it's like a little bit hot outside. And I want to open my window, but it's also very noisy outside. Let us, um... Okay, so when I type in a search, and this is what you should do if you want to make a claim strong or, or weak or whatever, um, you got to start by, by sourcing it, by doing a little bit of research about it rather than just, I don't know, shooting off at the hip, right? Poppy Z and Xena Vosh. That's all I typed in, right? Uh, wholesome degenerates, right? So what do we see here? We see first a 27k video, casualty of a failed witch hunt. Why did ContraPoints lie about Vosh? Attacking ContraPoints to defend Vosh. You can see there's a lot of videos by Poppy and Xena about Vosh. Cat Black. Again, ContraPoints getting attacked here, right? This was when ContraPoints um, first, you know, cut ties with Vosh. Oh, only... Old Man Laundra tries to... Oh, this is a goldie but goodie. Look at this. This is defending Vosh against uh, Pedi Pedialyte claims, right? Now, I don't know about this Old Man Laundra character. I think that's like a Destiny Orbiter. But yeah, they were there, uh, you know, a year ago to uh, to push back on, uh, on what actually turned out to be not false claims. Again, as Ethan Klein said... If the jacket fits, you must not acquit. Okay, so now here's a here's here's something interesting. They also disagree with Vosh, right? On the issue where Damon Mama disagrees with Vosh. So if you want me to if you want to make an argument uh, that they're a little bit closer to Demon Mama than they are to Vosh, then go ahead. But understand how the human centipede works, right? Just as they're you know. <laughs> 
just as they're attached to Demon Mama, uh, Demon Mama is attached to Vosh. And yeah, it is it all is all the same people. It is the same, you know, it's it's audience capture, essentially. First of uh, uh, Contrapoints had ties to Vosh. Yes, yes. Let me explain that, okay? A long time ago, um, Contra had scandals, right? Um, Contra transitioned. Oh my god, uh, there's so much background to this, okay? So, um, a lot of people um, transition you know, before they become content creators, a lot of trans content creators, like, you know, they they start their transition before that. Contra has actually been on the internet for a really long time, and it was actually, you know, before she uh, transitioned, before she came out as, as trans, right? And, um, you know, so her early videos, the videos that a lot of people remember, a lot of the people really like, like decoding the alt-right, a lot of the work that Contra's done has been in exposing alt-right stuff that she knows from being terminally online to normies to 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 leftists who might not know their way around these spaces right she she's vaguely aware of a number of uh, internet traditions in, including like 4chan and stuff like that so she was able to make videos with a little bit of insight that a lot of leftists didn't have in terms of understanding like what's going on where did this alt-right stuff uh, come from right she did that was the kind of you know work that she did this is why people wanted her to be their bread mommy this is why bread tube started right you know that back in um the day contrapoints live streams would um often be contrapoints playing some kind of game wrong because she always plays the games wrong she always wants to break the games and fuck with them right um, and then there would be a chat that was just posting bread, 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 bread emojis all over chat, right? The the way that weasels are in my chat, bread was in ContraPoints chat. And Contra would be like, what is all, what's with all this bre bread? And people would answer, read the bread book. Obviously, Contra herself, uh, although she sort of flirted with leftism, like she did try to uh, do a alternate uh, book cover for the Communist Manifesto. Have you ever seen like a Communist Manifesto the way it's usually published? You know, it's a short, it's a quick read. If you haven't read it yet, it's it's worth uh, worth your time. It's a very, very, very quick read. It's almost like a pamphlet, right? But it's usually just like red book with black text, very boring, very academic looking. Contra thought she could update this, right? And she envisioned a vaporwave marks, right? So there's like a bust of marks against like a vaporwave background and like pink flamingos and sunglasses right it was that whole thing right um so she did sort of she she flirted with it right but she, she was ne that's never where her heart was she definitely doesn't want to do like leftist content she did anti-fascist content and i think her anti-fascist content is is pretty good and stands um uh i mean other than a f in a few instances it, it holds up pretty well right um, but anyway, so she became like she was one of the first real big breakout bread tube creators, even though not really a leftist herself. And she's early on in her transition and early on in her transition, um, she would say stuff like when she was talking to an interviewer, like, you know, these pronoun circles things. I don't know. I don't really like them. Right. I love it when I talk to somebody and they just use the right pronouns for me without me asking. That's gendered euphoria that she's experiencing there, to be clear, right? Um, you know, be passing, you know, uh, we, could, we could talk about the passing uh, discourse, you know, when it comes to trans people, but, um, but, but essentially, because she was, you know, trying so hard uh, to pass and, and kind of liked that affirmation of somebody without being asked using the right pronouns for her, she didn't like pronoun circles, right? Because in pronoun circles, you go around and you just like, all right, everybody, what's your pronouns? Like whether you're trans or not, right? And the, the idea is that, um, you know, for people, it, this makes things easy for people who are trans to just like from the beginning, start off by acquainting everybody in the group. Like, like let's say that you move, uh, let, let's say that you're going to college and you move into a dorm and uh, you have a dorm meeting 
and the RA says, hey, let's go around the circle and everybody tell us what your pronouns are, right? That that does make it, um, you know, it, it prevents some misgendering, which is really hurtful to trans people. It's usually not intended to be hurtful, um, but but it's, it's still hurtful nonetheless, right? So ContraPoints was kind of like, I don't like this pronoun circle thing. So here's the weird thing. Like, I understand where she's coming from. I 100% understand where she's coming from. But when a very popular trans creator tells a normie audience that she doesn't like pronoun circles, their ears are attuned to her. ContraPoints for a lot of cis people was their favorite trans person. The only prominent trans person maybe they even knew or definitely like the only prominent like trans youtuber that they were following so when they hear this person that in some ways in this isn't contra's fault but this is true contra represented trans people to a lot of like cis people to a lot of you know you know cis people who, who were like allies right um you know contra points would be their frame of reference so when contra point says oh, i don't know about these pronoun circles cis people are likely to think oh gosh I thought that, you know, I was being nice when I, I went around the circle at my dorm that I'm RAing for and said, let's get everybody's pronouns. Let's check in and, and see what people's pronouns are, right? But it turns out that actually trans people don't like it. And the truth of the matter is that for the trans people who don't like it, for the trans people who don't want that, the harm is a lot less than the harm of, of not doing one of those the, than the harm of getting misgendered for somebody who is maybe getting misgendered a lot and, and constantly having to correct people and and, and wondering if, it, if it's even worth it because like when a trans person corrects a misgendering a lot of times the cis person feels attacked like the the the, the, the they assume that complaining about getting their pronouns wrong is coming from a place of thinking that they are being transphobic because sometimes transphobic people will do that on purpose a lot of you know i mean that's like right so um it, it doesn't have to be like that and it shouldn't be like that but um it's it's a this makes it really hard for trans people to come forward and be like actually i don't go by those pronouns i know that you looked me up and down and you assumed that like you know these were the pronouns that I go by but they're, they're actually not it's, it's these pronouns right if you have the conversation up front and have the pronoun circles oh my god chat i'm like way over explaining this i'm way over explaining this but contrapoints got in trouble with the trans community because she said something that's potentially like harmful to um you know, you know to, to people who don't pass or to to you know people whose pronouns are not standard issue if somebody uses they them pronouns right they're gonna need a pronoun circle maybe more than ContraPoints is. And I think that I, we can all agree that that's the person that who, whose need needs to be prioritized, right? In terms of, you know, that's the pers person furthest removed from uh, cis privilege. And and so, like, while I disagreed with her take, um, I felt like um, that some of the things that some of the, some of the conclusions that people jumped to her, about her uh, might have been, you know, wrong. I, I think that she's you know, just kind of new to uh, being trans and, and made some mistakes. And so so anyway, she got canceled. She got canceled. She got yelled at on Twitter. Let's be real. OK, because she didn't get canceled. She didn't lose her channel. She didn't lose her audience. Nothing like that happened. She didn't really get hurt. But there were people on Twitter saying, I don't know about ContraPoints, especially trans people um, saying, like, I don't know about ContraPoints because she, you know, never really apologized. She saw in Vosh a fellow um, a fellow victim of cancel culture. You know, she made a video called Canceling. She talked about being canceled. I I, I, I failed to see how, where she actually was canceled, but I understand maybe that she was hurt. And Vosh is somebody that's going through the same kind of stuff. Well, wait, Dave L, are you talking about when Xander Hall tried to cancel uh, ContraPoints over disagreeing with Vosh. But anyway, that's how uh, Vosh and ContraPoints got together, right? That's how they um, became. And, and, you know, like when I say that, I mean that they did a couple streams together. They, they talked together. They were friendly. And it was like the um, what are you, it's the camaraderie of the accused is what we're really talking about when we're talking about ContraPoints and Vosh. Um, they felt a certain camaraderie of both having 
been perceiving themselves as, as being canceled, right? And their alliance, you know, their, their friendship, the, them following each other, them being, you know, friendly with each other, lasted all the way up until the Cat Black discourse, right? Where Vash accused Cat Black of sexual harassment. And um, this was after his um, tactical misogyny that he used on JK Rowling. Um, and a lot of a lot of trans people did not appreciate this is the first time that Vosh kind of like threw trans people under the bus for his own benefit or the first major time that that happened. And so um, when Contra was sort of forced to choose between supporting trans people and, and supporting Vosh, she she went with trans people. She supported Cat Black. Um, she, uh, you know, she said, yeah, tactical misogyny is bullshit. Like, right. And when you're doing that with a turf. You're providing them in, uh, the ammunition that they need to make their claim because their claim is always that trans rights, trans liberation is somehow misogynistic in nature. That, that you know, allowing trans women to be part of women's only spaces is compromising women's only spaces because in the TERF's mind, trans women aren't women, trans men aren't men. And, and so that's... Um, complicated isn't it whenever we start talking about uh trans stuff it gets complicated and i still have i cannot properly hydrate myself um yeah but i mean like look they all came after um they all came after uh natalie when um when she turned on Vosh, right? And that includes uh, Poppy and Xena. Let's do a little tipster. Just the tip. Oh my God, why did I have to say it like that? Now, who is this? Uh, this is Alex Gunter, uh, another White Leaf streamer here. Having a conversation with Tip. I don't know much about this guy. I know that he was in some kind of controversy uh, uh, for a video that he made um, about dog whistles and, uh, you know, d doubting the uh, idea that 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 friend F R E N was was a dog whistle. Uh, but I haven't really followed that um, super closely. Let's see. Really gets mocked for being a little cow. So it's like you know, anything he can do to get some level of relevancy at this point. Yeah, it's just pathetic. And I, I did repost the uh, I made sure to repost the, the little clip of him in that interview because he's a pathetic man, baby, these days. That's all he is. Um, and and he, the, I, the fact that he's trying to go after you uh, and, and try to turn it. So, so we're talking about Boogie here. Boogie uh, 2988 is a, a old school YouTuber, used to be a big YouTuber and uh, essentially lost a lot of his uh, a lot of his subs and a lot of his viewers. He, you know, he's uh, he, he gets nowhere near the viewership that he used to get uh, when this Gamergate part two thing came out and they started talking about Sweet Baby Inc. Uh, Boogie decided that it would be a good idea to join Gamergate 2 on the side of Gamergate. He had, I guess, spoken up in uh, the original Gamergate, maybe, um, you know, against the Gamergaters and, uh, you know, perceived himself as having lost some clout for doing that. So this time he was going to be like on the side of gamers and, uh, you know, just kind of uh, just kind of roll with the uh, the Gamergate crowd. Uh, Tipster, I think, made a video calling him out. And that's when uh, Tipster and uh, and Boogie got into it that like you're the pathetic one or something it's just very silly to me i haven't watched his video on you yet but it's only eight minutes i might watch it after i'm done after we hang up yeah i, I think what's interesting is you can always tell when someone doesn't have an argument against the talking points you're making because then they resort to either parroting bullshit about you or like tacking more lies onto it because like his response is like uh, well you defended bosh which means you're defending really degenerate stuff and it's like, well, no, I wasn't no. defending the con. So do you see this? Do you see how this comes up? Tipster's right here in calling out Buggy. For the record, all right? 
for the for the record yeah the, like boogie you know going team gamergate is pretty pathetic it's it's grifty and it's cowardly and, and it's shitty right but what's he running into baggage baggage not just from defending vosh when this controversy happened which he did along with keffels right tipster jumped in and then uh keffels you know this is like tipster kind of i, I guess you could call it tipster more of a keffels orbiter but again, you know, when um, Tipster is attached to Keffels and Keffels is attached to Vosh, like it's all the same clout human centipede. That's what I'm trying to get through, right? That's that's why I value my independence. I'm not attached to any of these people. And if I was, I couldn't speak as freely as I can. And I think that my um, insights on what's going on in these communities would be a lot less um, valuable if if I had, um, you know, some people that I was trying to protect that was on Vosh's computer. I was defending Vosh in the sense that, like, I don't think that that stuff makes him, you know, who people try to make him out to be. Okay, so now this is wrong, though. Tipster had a controversy where he himself was defending Loli, like, like a year before this happened, right? You know, so I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, let's see if Alec Gunter maybe pushes back on this, because this is this is the area in an interview where you would expect the interviewer, this is uh, Alex Gunter, um, to to maybe push back on that and say, no, wait a minute, you this isn't the this isn't your first um, rodeo, so to speak. And then I also um, he claimed that I go around harassing e girls, which isn't true. And then on top of that, he tacked on like a new claim that apparently I go around sexually harassing trans women, which also isn't true. So I mean, I don't know. These are rumors. Boogie didn't just make that. Boogie didn't just pull this out of his ass. All right, I don't know what's true and what's false, but I, I, this isn't coming out of nowhere. So you can always tell when you've struck a nerve with someone when they resort to literally parroting or making up lies about you. So you know, I said what I had to say about him, and it just kind of is what it is. That's ridiculous. I've I've seen there was that one video I watched. Oh, uh, Campos is bringing up Zeno and Poppy also defended Vosh during the non-compete stuff. Uh, I think you were there for that. About like they were trying to say that you're harassing girls or something, and like the worst that they showed, Ooh. like taken out of. I didn't even catch this. Oh my god, chat! I gotta apologize. Like I've been so off in my own head today. Um, like just having to explain so many things that um. There's some Twitch chat and some YouTube chat that I've missed, and I, and I want to pay attention when people say uh, important stuff right here. Uh, Alice, Alice on Fire says, here in Spain, historically, Christ is King is something that a uh, classical Spanish fascist would say. So again, it, it, I didn't even know that, right? But it, this is a, uh, you know, Nick Fuentes um, slogan, and it does actually have a historical tie to fascism in, in addition to its its modern tie. But um yeah, sorry. I feel like I gotta I gotta acknowledge that. I gotta acknowledge that. How's everybody doing? Tipster is the guy uh with the badass gangsta intro. Is he? Uh how many people belong? You know, we didn't count. I, d I did look over. Somebody sent me a screenshot that showed everybody on there. I think there was like 20 people, but some of them weren't active. Like I remember Queen Marcy being on there, and I haven't heard I don't think that that person is still doing content. I don't, I don't think that person's doing content anymore. So uh, it's hard to tell exactly who is, you know, how many active people, because that's the real question you want to know, not just like how many people have signed up for, you know, uh, White Nervosa services, but how many people that are current streamers are on um, White Leaf. I mean, I would guess uh, 15 to 20. That's my best guess. context uh okay like the, the the absolute worst thing that i saw if i may say it was um like there was there there may have been one time where you accidentally got into the the inbox of like an underage girl is that correct um okay so there's something yeah there's a little bit of research that's gone on i mean this is a soft pushback you accidentally got into the inbox of the like what the fuck is that alec what what is that? accidentally get into the inbox of an underage girl Believe, no, that doesn't ring a bell. I think that what you might be referring to. Okay. Well, well, tell me what you're referring to first. Maybe I can. The, yeah, my it. understanding was okay. So there was like a time. Well, oh yeah, no, I remember. You were in the inbox of somebody, and then you said that somebody that that person knew was cute. 
And then that person responded right. that that person was 16, maybe. Is that correct? Yeah. So essentially, like what happened is I had this friend that I used to talk with uh, pretty regularly and uh, we had a falling out and they ended up leaking a bunch of DMs out of context to make me look really bad. Look, if you're tipster and like a search of your name here, let me show you what I'm talking about. A search of tipster's name is going to yield uh, mostly videos about tipster by people that that don't like tipster. Right. And this this became such a problem for Tipster that he actually went to YouTube support for it. Uh, if I just type in Tipster, I'm not typing Tipster exposed. I'm not typing uh, anything else. Oh, wow. So we do get the latest from Tipster. Let me show you what I'm looking at here. All right, so we get, we get the latest from Tipster, but that's not really the search. The search gives you Chud Logic making fun of Tipster, uh, gives you uh, somebody saying it's over for Tipster, going over the Tipster versus uh, Nicholas Diorio, Sensitive Society. So some of these are kind of right wing um, aligned uh, commentary people. Uh, Mayo Monkey, Bo Blacks, that's you know more of a apolitical um, Tom Dark. Why is actual Justice Warrior coming? This has nothing to do with tips or people also watch. Okay, okay. So this is this is just YouTube being shitty at, shitty at search. Tipster burnt the bridge with me. Another Nicholas Diorio. Right, so this became so bad. This became such an issue for Tipster that he had to um He had to talk to YouTube support about this. Oh my god, I'm having the same problem on uh on on Twitter here where I'm seeing uh stuff about Tipster rather than stuff uh from Tipster. And this is kind of the um What if I type Tipster live? I'm just trying to get to his tweets. Is he like, I can't find him. See, this is what, oh my God. Um, am I going to literally have to go to, Okay, Twitter. Just so tippy. Okay, that's your that's your name on Twitter. I'm blocked. Chat. I'm blocked by Tipster. <laughs> wow. Wow. I, I mean, uh, wow. I'm kind of amazed here. I I am blocked by Tipster. Tipster, do you realize that you blocking me here is going to make me have to watch a very embarrassing video about you? Chat, I'm trying to get through the tipster part. Like, you know, the tip is, uh, you know, this is a very short tip that we're dealing. I'm sorry, I said that in the wrong way, right? Um, but I'm blocked. I am blocked by tipster. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I have not interacted with like the only time I ever interacted with him uh was what I just came into his chat and said love you uh like wait what was it like cheers my dude I think I just said the cheers my dude meme I, I but this didn't just get me blocked on YouTube okay this got me blocked by tipster 
on Twitter. That's wild. I am pre-blocked. I am pre-blocked by somebody I've never even, you know, I mean, did I, I don't think I've ever mentioned him on Tipster. Uh, did Keffels block you? Let's see. I don't think so. I think Keffels is too smart to block me. Yeah, no, she doesn't block me. Keffels knows that it's, it's not, it's not going to be helpful. Um, anyway, anyway, let me, let me just, uh, I'll see, I'll see if I can find what I'm looking for. No wonder I couldn't find Tipster on Twitter. I'm blocked by Tipster. I tried to make it look like I was trying to flirt with them and stuff like that. Uh, and ultimately what it was is we were just friends and we were kind of goofing off in DMs with each other. It was nothing that deep. But one of the DMs yeah. that came out was, uh, she had sent me a picture of, uh, someone doing her hair. And this was at like two o'clock three o'clock in the morning something like that so i'm like oh who you who's your friend they're kind of cute and keep in mind in the picture which i'm not gonna show the picture because it's a minor so i don't want to put a minor's picture out there i don't know tipster sounds kind of sus to me but you can't even see their face their face is covered by like their hand so i just made like a joke comment of who's your friend they look kind of cute and she goes whoa she's 16 and i instantly oh my bad i i had no idea my apologies but of course, that part doesn't right. get showed because it doesn't fit the narrative right. So, but yeah, it was a stupid comment I made. And I can admit that it was a stupid comment I made. But like, is it an indicator that I'm like a pedophile or something? No, but that's what they want you to think, you know? Man, I've always stuck by, listen, if you find interest in a girl and she turns out to be 16 or 17, guess what you do? You apologize and you walk away. That's it. Okay, this is, to be fair, that like, I'm not trying to talk about Alec Gunter here, but what did I just hear? Has this, is this an experience you've had? Is this some, a common occurrence, Alec? I want you to think, you know? Man, I've always stuck by, listen, if you find interest in a girl and she turns out to be 16 or 17, guess what you do? You apologize and you walk away. That's it. Like, it, there's nothing more to it. It, it. It's like one of those things where, you know, I forget what I was referring to, but recently on stream we were talking about a similar topic where the internet is so quick to jump to the, this person's a pedophile or a creep sort of thing, when like ignorance can be like the easiest explanation for what's going on. Uh, and I equated it to like, let's say you're in a public place like a mall or something like that, right? And you're a younger guy in your mid twenties and you see a girl you find attractive, you spark up a conversation with them. Hey, why don't we go on a date sometime? And they say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm 16 or I'm 17. And you instantly go, oh shit, my bad, I didn't know, I'm sorry. And you move on. Nobody yep. would call that person in the real world a pedophile, but on the internet, you absolutely would call that person a pedophile. It's pretty insane. Wait, what? I'm sorry, I'm like- insane. It's gotten warped to the extent that people have actually- What is even going on here? A pedophile on a date sometime and they say oh i'm sorry i'm 16 or i'm 17 and you instantly go oh shit my bad i didn't know mid 20s and you see a girl you'd be like the easiest explanation for what's going on uh and i equated okay, so the occam's razor razor of like loli cons is that to just assume that people aren't um creeps even when they seem creepy is that what tipster is saying like let's say you're in a public place like a mall or something like that right and you're a younger guy in your mid 20s and you see a girl you find attractive you spark up a conversation with them hey why don't we go on a date sometime and they say oh i'm sorry i'm 16 or i'm 17 and you instantly go oh shit my bad i didn't know i'm sorry and you move on nobody yep. would call that person in the real world a pedophile but on the internet you absolutely would call that person a pedophile. It's pretty insane. It is very insane. It's gotten warped to the extent that people have actually forgotten the purpose of why we don't go after people who are underage, which is the fact that they cannot consent. Okay? It's not, it has nothing to do with how they look. It's the fact that they don't have the brain development yet to consent. Okay? So if you have somebody... I mean, I think there's multiple reasons. I think those are both good reasons not to... Uh, wait, do you need a reason not to go? Uh, we're, we're, what? What is this conversation? What am I even dealing with here? Like, let's say that you have, uh, you know, like, a, again, a 16 year old who looks like she could be 23 or 24. You know what happens? And then you, you go up to them, not knowing their age, take an interest in them, and then they, and then you discover they're 16. That's the point at which you walk away. You know, and I know this is a tangent, but I feel like this is very important. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a tangent. I'm not sure why. Why are we on this tangent? What's going on here? To point out, like if you get into the mindset that even just approach, like you should be able to tell that somebody is 16 or 17 just by looking at them or whatever. You forget the point that it's not about how they look. It's about the fact that they cannot consent. 
So once you find out that they're right. 16 or 17, that's when you walk away. And I feel like that's very important to point out and remember. But anyway, uh, I, 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 de I definitely agree with you on that because like, it seems like, look, if somebody's being a predator and they're using their platform to prey on, you know, people, I'm 100% in favor of that person being outed in order to protect other people from becoming victimized by those people or targeted by them. Um, but it's become this thing where it's no longer about actually trying to catch people who are genuinely predatory. Now it's become this tool of like, I don't like this person or this person, I disagree with them for one reason or another. So now I'm going to like slander them as like a pedophile or present yep. them as being somebody who's predatory so I can ruin their name and reputation. And I think it's really gross. And I think it invalidates people who are actual victims of that sort of thing. I think it really is a slap in the face to them. Well, and it makes it harder to investigate real claims, you know, like right. they are actively muddying the waters and they probably are doing it knowingly as well. So it's just really gross. I agree with you. Um, but getting back to this uh, sweet baby thing. So um, that was your. Oh, my God. OK, OK. Like, what do you think, chat? Are they beating the allegations? Is the Vosh network beating the allegations or are they, in fact, beating the allegations? And like with more people, like, do you know what I mean? This was not about Alec Gunter, okay? Like, this is just an interview with with Tipster. Uh, this, you know, was 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 a moment, uh, you know, w w of Tipster trying to explain, like, me think, you know, it's kind of a me thinks thou doth protest too much uh, moment for Tipster. But uh, I don't know, I don't know. Like I said, the fish rots from the head down, and whether it is uh, Keffel's Tipster or any other member of this human centipede that we call the white leaf network it's bad it's really bad okay so i found what i'm looking for um i wanted to show you this this is uh this is one of the things that you deal with when you jump in to a drama it's not even about you like your your whole thing with lily was like a year ago people had almost forgotten about it but no tipster had to jump in and like i said this is what is this like um camaraderie of the accused here felt some camaraderie with vosh jumped in to defend vosh and ended up dying in his boots on lily hill right um just spoke to team youtube and as expected there's not much they can do so this goes back to march 18th i have seen several people inform me that in the past 24 hours uh I checked in the past of this in the past uh, 24 hours. I checked and confirmed to them my channel is not showing up in search. It shows up for me, uh, Tipster, like your your channel does. Uh, most of the videos are about you rather than being uh, by you, and that's because more people are clicking on videos exposing you than are clicking on on videos that are by you. Right? Your your videos, whatever you, you this is a skill issue. This is a skill issue, all right? And, uh, you know, it sucks, but it's also it's also an issue of, of him jumping into this whole Vosh Keffel's mess, right? That's that's why there's a million videos on Tipster right now, and they're drowning out his traffic. Look at this. He's like, um, when you when you type in Tipster, this is the search for Tipster, you don't get Tipster. And it's it's also it's also partly his branding, right? Like there's tipster, there's a lot of people named something tipster or tips or like, you know what I mean? That's like a common thing. Like it's. I think your channel is shadow banned. No, it's it's not. That, that's it's just less relevant than all of these than all of these. And look, some of them like don't have like, I mean, some of them are big, Um, you know, some of them are smaller than tipster type tips, right? 10.1K. That's uh, about the size of Poppy and Xena. Uh, that channel is showing up before Tipster shows up, even though his name is Tipster and their name is Type Tips. I, I don't, I don't know. Like this is okay. So uh, Team YouTube comes in and says, uh, "We we recommend these tips to try to optimize uh, search discovery. We also recommend uh, try to use advanced search filters when they do the search. Yeah, if they're gonna have to use advanced search uh, filters to find Tipster. Anyway, that's just uh, that's that's what you're dealing with, right? That's this is the price of defending Vosh. This is the price of dying on Lully Hill, and he doesn't seem to get it. 
doesn't seem to understand. Did you shadow ban Tipster? If the channel has a common channel name, it was commonly used in vid titles. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so he's talking to somebody at Google support named Hazel. Oh, hi, my name is Hazel. How are you doing today? I am okay. Thanks for asking. That's good to hear. I am contacting you because my audience has informed me that yesterday my channel no longer appears in search results. I checked with an alt account and confirmed this is an issue. What would cause this and how can we fix it? He thinks he's shadow banned. They, I, I don't know why he would be. They even tried a filtered search uh, to search for channels and it still doesn't come up in the search. Uh, the help, uh, for Hazel says, thank you for sharing your concern. I understand that you are concerned about your, oh God, this is like a bot. He's talking to a bot, I think. Understand that you are concerned uh, about your channel search results. Yes, my channel just randomly stopped showing up in search results. My audience has been informing me of this for uh, since yesterday. I'm sorry to hear this, uh, just to confirm, is this the channel link in question? So they're confirming it's his, uh, yeah, that's his channel. Okay, thanks for confirming. By any chance, can you screenshot the search from your end? Sure, he sends the screenshot. Thank you for the screenshot. Thank you for the screenshot. Oh, multiple screenshots, uh, or I don't know, double post, I guess. Um, I know how important this is to you. No worries, this is definitely a bot. Let me check this for you. Just to confirm, Are we still? are you still connected with me? Can't get rid of him that easy. Yes, says Tipster. Thanks for confirming. To help you better with this concern, I'll go ahead and check this matter uh, further on my end. It is it uh, okay if I place this chat on hold for a few minutes while I look into it? Sure. Thank you. Thanks. Please stay connected. Thanks. Thanks for waiting patiently. No worries. I feel bad for him. I feel bad. I'm like, I mean, like, look, I mean, other than the fact that this is happening for a reason, and that reason does not reflect positively on, on Tipster, right? It's literally, like, people get a lot of benefit, whether it's Poppy and Xena or whether it's uh, Tipster. Membership has its benefits, right? And even if it's secondary membership, because you're a, uh, like a Keffel's orbiter, and, and you're kind of like a secondary Bosch or uh, orbiter by virtue of that, there's still some benefits to it. Now, these benefits are blowing up in their face. That's what happened with the horse apocalypse. That like uh, white, you know, a, a lot of these people, a lot of these white leafers, um, you know, just got wrecked. And the smart ones like Demon Mama and Shark Three O Zero, uh, did did go ahead and try to defend Vosh, but they deleted it. They they thought better of it. They realized that this is not their fight. This is not their uh, their, you know, like this should not be their problem. But but it kind of is. It kind of is. Like I said, the fish rots from the head down. And with Vosh, you've got a very rotten fish, a very stinky and rotten fish. Allow me to share details with you. Okay, thank you. Uh, please know that the Google, like Google's uh, search engine, the search on YouTube strives to surface the most relevant results, i.e. not your videos, according to keyword. So what they're telling him is that the most relevant resu re results for the keyword tipster are expose videos. That, that, that those are the videos that people are clicking on, not videos by uh, by tipster channels and videos are ranked based on variety of factors, including how well the title description and they're literally telling him how to be a YouTuber here. Title description and the video content uh, matches the viewers query. Beyond that, uh, we know we look at uh, which videos have driven the most engagement again, not your videos, right? Uh, not like the videos about tipster, the videos that show up positive for the word tipster in the search are videos about tipster not videos by tipster and they're not alec gunter's like softball interviews either they're they're you know exposed videos right they're they're all the other videos about tipster um probably probably um ethan klein's video you know right uh search results are not on the are not a list of the most viewed videos yeah so it's not by viewership right it's by engagement um but I mean, viewership obviously helps engagement. Also, a YouTube search tries to show you the most relevant results. Results can include videos, channels, playlists, live streams, 
you may not find your channel on the top of the results if a you have a channel name that is commonly used in video titles that's kind of an issue with tipster yeah there i mean there could be other you know tipsters kind of a common fairly common thing uh you have a common uh, channel name your youtube channel is new your channel may not be appropriate for all audiences oh uh, i don't know i don't know how much they know about tipster but i would guess that they don't know you know that he's not like shadow banned for being like a lowly supporter i don't think that kind of i mean there's plenty of channels that do support that kind of stuff that are that are that do not seem to be uh shadow banned right other uh, other more explicitly lowly con creators uh do not have uh have a problem um you know getting their videos watched unfortunately um there's a, a link uh, additionally here's some uh tips uh see what words people use to find your channel in traffic sources and youtube analytics consider incorporating the most relevant search terms for each of your new videos and channels you can add them as uh titles and descriptions a uh, write robust uh descriptions up to one to two paragraphs long if relevant consider implementing YouTube's translation tools uh, to reach an international audience. Oh God, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know if your videos would be interesting to an international audience, Tipster. I don't, I don't know. These are brainstorm new video ideas. They're telling them how to be a better YouTuber. That YouTube's bot is identifying this, I think, correctly as a skill issue. Because uh, Tipster, we're talking about somebody with like a hundred thousand plus subscribers who's getting 2.6k on his videos, 1.7k. Like, chat in some cases, like, I don't know, like, the, my, my videos are you know, are, are getting are getting more views than a lot of these, right? Oh my god, and here we go, Heffel scared away, Kvash other uh vosh slash demon mama orders demon mama herself i mean this is you know this is the this is the human centipede here this is the the human clout centipede not quite as healthy as it used to be but um yeah anyway chat you didn't come here for tipster drama you can go to almost any channel for tipster drama right i just i hadn't covered this and uh, i felt like I needed to, and this was the day to cover it since we're talking about Whiteleaf. Oh my god, chat. Here, I'll spend a little time talking to the chat. Uh, what's Whiteleaf? Uh, somebody asked, Germ. Uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's, it's, it's essentially... It, it's a set of servers and a software that allows streamers to receive donations not through youtube or twitch in which case you know like when you uh donate uh to me whether it's through super chats super stickers whether it's through um memberships uh gift memberships um or even you know um the direct donations uh the link is down in the description or uh, well no actually not right when you when you don't actually the direct the direct donation gets around that so you know I, I left the link down in the description for anybody who wants to who wants to do that still even with that um stream elements takes a cut out of that right so if i didn't want somebody to take a cut out of it and i was and i had no like morals or ethics i would have taken zonia up on her offer to join whiteleaf right because what whiteleaf allows you to do is receive those memberships almost directly so that you're you know any any amount of money that's donated for subs uh or or whatever can go directly to you so it's a something that uh, vosh's sysadmin maintains off the back of his very large channel which is able to pay for the servers and then smaller content creators who support vosh and this is the important part who support vosh who are useful to vosh who protect vosh right they get access this is why i say memberships membership has its uh benefits oh my god chat is very active vosh has 12 apostles like what in the white lit oh wow so shakespeare is maybe correctly identifying that there's 12 members is that right is are just joking because it's like 12 apostles it's around that i wonder if shark or demon mama will jump ship soon you know what if they're gonna back away they're gonna do so slowly right because it's shit's falling apart right now and if somebody as big as shark or demon mama um were to were to uh leave the network i think that they might you know get some like it, it doesn't in fact they're they're still benefiting from it as long as people don't tie them to vosh right and people don't tie 
this is why I'm talking about the network, right? Because I think people don't recognize the ties when they only recognize them when it's like Demon Mama appearing on Vasha's stream or Vash appearing on Demon Mama's stream. When there's a collab, they recognize a relationship. Sometimes the relationships go on, you know, with, without there being a collab. And in this case, the relationship is sharing a, ser a set of servers, sh sharing a sysadmin, uh, sharing a software. Am I even caught up with um, chat yet? Zara says, yeah, Shark has been uh, in White Leaf for a while uh, since joining the Voshclout network. Oh, um, Dave says he's got 34 members of his service. Yeah, and again, I can't guarantee you which one of these are still active because I did see some people that I don't think are active anymore. On the, I don't think that list is well maintained. I don't think it's up to date. Did we ban Mr. Fappy? Groove Dragon says we need a worker-owned site that is owned by content creators and subscribers. Yeah, I mean, something like, look, like I said, I, I don't think that it's a bad thing that uh, White Nervosa liberated that code and shared it with other people, right? I, I think that's a good thing. But what what is a bad thing is that she's tied to Vosh and therefore the membership to this network you know, sort of implies a certain relationship, sort of requires a certain like friendliness to not only Vosh, but everybody else on the network. It's a human clout centipede. They're all they're all sort of glued together. And um they're all watching each other's backs. Okay, so like I said, there's a long list of uh, Poppy and Xena defending Vosh from all kinds of people, attacking the perceived enemies of Vosh. Here, let's go to the channel. Oh my gosh, it's so cursed. We're going to click. We're going to click anyway. So again, yeah, the uh, Lily Orchard, uh, Orchard sister, that's uh, Courtney Orchard, um, getting 15k views compared to, if I look at these, oh yeah, look, going after Soul Bunny here, Bosch and ContraPoints. Jesse Gender, I forgot about that. They went after Jesse Gender. Over, over what? Over the Hogwarts Legacy? Over saying that maybe you don't play the turf game. That's literally all that Jesse Gender said. Maybe you don't play the if you're a trans if you if you care about trans people, maybe you don't play the turf game, right? Ooh, shit, there's another video with Jesse on the thumbnail. But yeah, there's like a lot of uh, videos. Um... Wow. The 
defending uh, Kethel's attacking Contra points after Contra points turned on Vosh. Going after uh, Abigail uh, from Philosophy Tube. Talking with Kethels. Yeah, so like, I mean, I don't know if this isn't an orbiter. I don't know what you call this. If, if, you, if you're going to, you know, make a claim that uh, there's there's not a connection here, there's not a strong connection here, that Whiteleaf, that Whiteleaf does not bear some responsibility for platforming these people in the first place, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to press X to doubt on that one. Anyway, let's get into uh, where, let's pick up where we stopped last time. So we got through uh, the discussion of Poppy's relationship with someone named No Flake, N O E H uh, Flake, and uh, subsequent. Um, Subsequent, like, like so, this is somebody that that broke up with Poppy, and as a result of that uh, breakup, Poppy accused this person of rape. Why, why, why was that accusation made? Because Poppy said that she, you know, went into the relationship, went in, you know, was was intimate with this person, assuming that the person would not break up with them, and then the person broke up with them. So yeah, like just a weird weaponization of of the platform. Um, we've also got a weaponization of the platform against uh, their adult child, who we will refer to as Spawn. And uh, again, thank you, uh, Zara, for editing this, right? Um, in this original... Yeah, so we were, we were, if you remember last time we were um, on the toxic gossip train here, listening to uh, Poppy and Xena, right? So um, they mentioned the name of Spawn. They mentioned um, the, the actual name of their adult daughter who has come out uh, with allegations of mistreatment against them. And uh, this is not a person that wants to have their name public, right? But they made it public to, to you know, kind of throw some intimidation on their, their to, to, you know, try to silence uh, this person. And um, Zara was nice enough to go through this and edit out every mention of spawn's actual name because i didn't want to i don't know i mean unfortunately thanks to poppy and xena spawn's name is out there i don't want to spread it anymore um they they talked about concerns also that um you know websites like like kiwi farms were on to this drama we're talking about this stuff we're, we're paying attention right and it's a weird thing to do to mention like identifying information about a person when you're concerned that that those eyes might be on you. And has decided to treat me as a lily level threat. And I'm gonna be honest, I have my issues with Lily. I have a lot of issues with Lily, but you know what? I haven't talked shit about her in a while. And you know why? Because their behavior makes her look downright rational. Oh my God. Wait. Yeah, no, Nightwild, you're... So that's Lily Orchid. Um, somebody present uh, uh, mentioned that w some of their other big videos are about uh, Lily Orchard. Um, specifically, they got um, Courtney Orchard, Lily's sister, um, on in an interview to talk about abuse, like you know, familial, um, like an incestuous abuse uh, from from Lily Orchard. The big youtuber the big animation youtuber um and, and she poppy just said that compared to the people that are you know talking shit about her on tumblr and on twitter lily is seems reasonable it's, it's just a weird thing like the one good thing that they did in terms of exposing uh lily orchard it, it seems like she's willing to go back on it, it, without any need to do so i don't, I don't know, even know what this achieves is that I genuinely think a lot of this just comes from just transphobia. Well, Specifically, I mean, in my case, trans misogyny. Sound familiar? I mean, this is literally right, right from the Keffel's playbook. Like, like I said, you know, the Whiteleaf and the people in Whiteleaf are 
responsible um both for platforming um poppy and, and xena and also for inspiring like their defense their attempt to hold their little cult together their their attempt to run interference their attempt to just you know gaslight people uh, about the reality of of what they've done is straight out of the keffel's playbook right you know I, I this is all this all comes down to transphobia that's that's what it is it's not anything bad that 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 poppy did it's not anything bad that that xena did it's because of it's because of transphobia right and this is the worst kind of crying wolf. Do trans people get subjected to a different standard than other content creators? Yes. Yes. Are a lot of, you know, attacks on trans creators, and including people like ContraPoints, directly related to them being trans? Yes. Yes. The, you know, when we're talking about harassment sites, um, you know, trans people are some of their favorite targets. But... When you cry wolf about this, it makes real claims of transphobia, which is very common. It makes people not believe those. Absolutely. Because what I've noticed is the people who come at us, there is a subtle way in which, or not so subtle way, that they just come out at they just come out after us and they come out after me. And again, it's any action I take is somehow bad. So if I act spicy, I'm not acting like a therapist. I'm back. Oh my god. Autumn Leaf says, you know, Ali Ali's appearance with Eric Adams infuriated Anna. Not only was Olay debunking Anna's uh, talking points, she's also getting more recognition and praise from the left. Anna is seething. De uh I'm never going to stop streaming, chat. I should just stay on. I should 24 hour stream, like right until I cover everything. Bad. If I post something that's not safe for work, I'm being bad. If I make an argument, about, you know, hey, it'd be cool if I wasn't assaulted. That's bad. Irritable sometimes. That's horrendous and bad. Like, I'm not saying I'm an easy Steven person Crowder. to get along. I'm not. Like, I don't think I am. But the idea that I'm somehow abusive or terrible, or I just, I don't accept that. I don't. And the reality is, is that these people are never going to convince me of such. One of the reasons I'm still around and haven't, like you know, uh, unalived is that honestly, when I come out of my own, like self-hating fugue, I do realize that like this stuff just isn't true. These people are accusing me of things that like, you know, honestly, like are so, are so exorbitant and like, I guess extreme that like there's no way my brain can grab onto them and ever like gaslight myself into thinking I've done them. Like for example, with my my my. Okay, so chat. Apologies if um. Apologies if we're repeating anything here. Um, I I feel like um. I just wanted to make sure for anybody who didn't watch the beginning that we're not just like throwing them into this. Like we stopped somewhere right after this. Trauma as a child. Did I reenact that? Sure. With a girl that was my own age. Okay, this is the part that, like, I, this is where I kind of tapped out, right? We, so we were, we were streaming about this, um, I think on Monday, I was talking about this. Just for the record, okay, this is not my favorite thing to talk about. I do have, like, kind of a personal aversion to looking into the dark, like, and sordid, um, like, affairs of other, you know, trans content creators. I, I realize that this stuff can be weaponized by transphobes and um and that's part of the reason that i feel like i have to cover this because a lot of the coverage that this has gotten from people like chud logic is like it, the the nature of it is like look at these trans people L look at how fucked up trans people's lives are. like a lot of it is just transphobia right so there's a non-zero amount of that so it's important to have you know a, a source that that's not coming from that kind of uh place to to cover this stuff but it it's depressing it's a lot and it's difficult for me to deal with and i would much rather be talking about annika sparian right now into her twin sister and we've buried the hatchet through that 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 intermediary but the reality is is that like when that happened that got out of school. I ended up being a pariah for several years, barely had any friends. But this is the part where I was like, what is she talking about? Like, I'm not, she's not being clear about the situation. It does sound bad, though. She's talking about re reenacting abuse with another.
person. This is where she learned about consent. Do we do we need to rewind it even more? Do we need to rewind this even more to to get to the uh sounds like Anna should talk to Olay. Oh wait, she's scared of talking to black people. That's right. That's right. she said that actually. Uh or something to that effect. Oh my god, chat. This is like the confusing part. I think it's fine to start from here. Look, I gotta pee too. So, um, and I hate to like, you know, this is like the This is what you all came to see. And uh I know there's a lot of interest in this and that people have been asking me to cover this story. Um I I can see why it you know I I can see why this needs my touch. Do I need a uh, cat chat? No, I'm just gonna have to like go pee really fast. That's what I need. And from there, I got real good about consent because why? I never wanted to be treated like that again. I'm not saying I haven't fucked up. And I gotta be honest, this was a like. It was a kid doing a doing like, things like that. These were children, where adults utterly failed them to actually take any of the proper steps that should have happened. So yeah, no, Poppy kind of had to educate herself on shit. Figure things out. Yeah. Like, I grew up in the 90s. <laughs> Not a great time to learn consent. That's something yeah. I had to figure out on my own and how to be careful. Like, I grew up poor. So one of the reasons I was so big on condom usage with my partners because I didn't want to be a parent. And then I found a lady who groomed me and then I became a parent. <laughs> Oops. Um... So, yeah, I'm just going to be really clear that, like, if people want to fold off or unsub, be my guest. It was nice having you. The comments and the, the trans, you know, the transphobic slurs and all the other bullshit that people have been leaving, you're just going to get hidden from the channel. We've had so many, like, fucking KF le level, like, stuff. I literally deleted, like, eight comments an hour ago that were basically things saying that... Uh, I fuck. They were saying things, you know, just using the, you know, the other T slur. Um, you know, it's like, okay, that's fine. You, you guys can fuck off. Honestly, petty all assaults are just that. False allegations, all boxing is another. Well, that's my thing. Is like, I don't mind making fun of these people, but I'm not gonna go after their lives. As much as I dislike some of them, as much as I, I loathe some of these people, and I'm going to be really clear, some of them I fucking loathe. I'm not going to go after their love. Okay. I'm not going to fuck with their job because I have principles. Away. This world is hard enough to be in without people screwing each other over out of being able to eat. Like, I want you to put always had that principle too. Like, there's literally a line in our server. On the rules is they don't go after fucking people's per don't go after people's personal lives. I don't care how much you hate them, what you think about them. Like, it is way too easy to have parasocial assholes, um, you know, going after people or trying to make judgments about IRL situations that they're not part of, not around for. I have no idea what the actual nuance there is, you know, to go after people. And people on the left have tried this in the past. That rule on the server is there. Because somebody made us put it there. Somebody's actions were really fucked up and we were like, you know what? This is not how we want our community to be. And we have held that position for years. But suddenly it's us and people hate us and they're like, oh yeah, let's go do it to Xena and Poppy now. Okay. And again, here's the thing. This is, this is why I know I'm in the right. Because I've had people come to me in private and tell me that our community has been the safest place they've found on the online line. They've left, they jumped from Vosh's server to... Every other person under the sun. There it is. There it is. And I can tell by the names and I can tell by everything else. Like, look, this is what this is what orbitership is, right? Um, in the same way that a planet that orbits a star is sharing the gravitational field of that star, a streamer who orbits a larger streamer is sharing the audience. That is the, you know, baseline definition. If we're talking about orbiters, there's also, you know, the um the 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 effect of things like shout outs um you know the and, and stuff like that but at, at the baseline level you know what made me a dylan burns orbiter without even realizing i was the fact that i shared so much audience with dylan and that's why criticizing him uh you know had such 
you know, negative effects on my channel. All the people like, you know, a, a lot of the people that were watching me, um, you know, had to choose. And, you know, Dylan's the bigger streamer. Dylan's the one that most people are going to go with. Right. It's a me it's a messy affair. And most people, as a result, don't ever make that criticism. If they, if they have any any issue with the person, they'll they'll keep it in, in private. If the person tells them, I don't think that's a problem, they'll let it go. Right. This is why I value my independence. Like, I would never want to be stuck, you know, defending people like this up until the point that it becomes like unmanageable. Right. You know, because like when you're defending people that have that have hurt so many people, like whether it be Keppels or Poppy or and Xena or, or Vosh, um, there's there's a responsibility there. There's a real responsibility. And the one place they found a home where people listen to them and actually want to talk and engage and care is our, 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 our server. One of our own mods split it off because they apparently um, didn't like my pushback. Uh, Zara says, many people say this is the safest and best community. Never mind the harm I've caused and the allegations against me. Exactly. Against my boss. They thought my boss was in the right. And now has directly told me, I'm being really clear. Our ex-mod Kira just literally just spit out, oh, I don't believe that you were sexually assaulted. Because I read some DMs from before the trip that convinced me that what happened during the trip wasn't real. Okay, so it's important to say that, talk about a little bit about believe victims. Like, what does believe victims mean? Um, it, it means... Um, a lot of people misinterpret belief victims as... Um, you know, somebody should be damned just based on the allegations. That's that's not actually what it means. Um, what belief victims is about is about resisting the tendency of um, of people associated with the accused to um, attack the victim in order to defend the accused. Right. So if it's, you know, somebody's friend gets accused of something, somebody comes out and says they did this horrible thing to me. A lot of times what happens is that all that person's friends come out and they and they look for stuff and they t they try to poke holes in the story and they try to discredit the witness right and and they try to say you know you weren't um that no that didn't happen right so um it, it's about resisting that thing it's not about jumping to conclusions of as far as you know the allegations go and obviously you know allegations like you know poppy's allegations against no flake that's a great example of uh weaponized uh, allegations that are done um, out of, um, you know, as, as like strike back essentially uh, against this person that left Poppy, like this was punishment, uh, for leaving a very controlling relationship. I want you to think about that for a minute. There, there was abuse in this relationship, but the abuse was in, uh, w was the abuse that Poppy did to know, not, uh, that, that, you know, no leaving Poppy is, is somehow a uh, a violation of consent think about that those two things don't work together anything that happened beforehand doesn't actually counter the claim and this is a person i've had go through like studies and documents this person's very intelligent oh she's known for like just Throw outright reading like 50 page documents just in their full coming to conclusions like, she's known for doing that and doing but, extensive research. But then this happens, and then she says, oh, I'm probably going to get demodded for this. And then she hits herself in the face with a stupid bat. Yeah, exactly, Gabby. And leaves the server on her own. Despite me defending her numerous times. And then like, it goes behind people's backs and starts DMing some of the more vulnerable people in our community. Love that for you. Um... It's been the safest community I've been in in a while myself. Yeah, no, Nightwild, you're you're wonderful. And again, I want to give I want to give like a thing real quick. I want to point out Nightwild for a second because Nightwild. Are we was, are you able to say on stream? Nightwild, can I can I mention what happened previously? If I'm vague, I'm not trying to shame you or anything. I just I, I want to bring it up because I think it's a really it's a really good show of your character as a human being. Sure, I'm oh, I don't care. Oh, I didn't mean that part. I I meant just I know they've got some stuff they're doing IRL. Mm, so. No, that stuff I'm not bringing up. Yeah, yeah. No. Oh my god, do you hear that? Like, there's this, like, they're, they're alluding to other stuff that they're not talking about, and, like, I don't know, I don't know if, are, are, if you're in the community, does this stuff that they're saying make so, oh, no, we're not going to talk about that thing, we're going to talk about this thing, is it okay if I talk about this thing? No, I'm not trying to call you out here, like, what, what is even going on? Nightwile is a plural system, and a survivor of a lot of shit. 
I'm not going to go into it, but I'm going to say human trafficking is involved. Nightwile is a fucking trooper. And like queer mm -hmm. as shit and literally gender personified. I love Nightwile. There was a point where Nightwile had a alter who ended up going to another person's server who doesn't like us. And then came back and admitted what they did. And was I upset? Yeah. Was I angry? Yeah. Did we talk about it? Yeah. And you know what Nightwild did? Worked and regained my trust. They had to do penance for having gone to the server of somebody that doesn't like you? What? To the point now where I've actually... This is so controlling. ...suggested that I think Nightwild should be a mod for our server. Because the reality of the situation is, is that when we have conflict in our server, we try to work through it. Ask Ghost, ask Christy, ask anyone. If I Alchemist step up, streamers, Alchemist anybody, streamers, yeah. yeah, Alchemist streamers, same thing. Got preyed on by somebody, pulled over because these are young Babu systems. And what ended up happening? Welcome to Back with Open Arms. Did I express my anger? Yes. Did I tear them down? No. Nightwell, did I ever tear you? So Vodka's mentioning the docs. Yeah, I do have the docs. Let me let me see if I can. Um, I'm gonna have to bring them up in a special way because I'm in like a. I've got them open in a different browser. Uh, we yeah, the, this is uh this is what I'm uh gonna do tonight, right? So we watched um. You know, Poppy, uh, we, we watched the overview, right? If you haven't checked my earlier VOD, it's in it's in two pieces because the stream went down, right? Um, but we went over the interview between Brother Malcolm and Chud Logic, and uh, that is the shortest synopsis I could possibly provide you for all that's that's gone on, right? Uh, I think Malcolm, uh, you know, is the, the first person to kind of bring this stuff onto YouTube. Before that, it was on Tumblr, it was on uh, Twitter, it was in a lot of different places. And so, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, putting it all together uh, on stream and then uh, being able to explain it in an interview. And unfortunately, chat, the only interview that uh, that I've seen that uh, that Malcolm has done so far is on Chud Logic. So that's why that's why it was kind of yikes. Right. Um, but yeah, we, we did like sort of the overview of that. We've done, um, the beginning of, of this stream, which is, I, I guess them trying to talk about the allegations and, uh, there's also documents. There's, um, I think at this point, three main documents. Um, the first one is about, um, Polly and, and, uh, no flake. The second one is about, uh, sorry, this is about Poppy and, and no flake. Um, in that relationship, um, the second one is about Spawn, the adult child of, um, of Poppy. And, um, I don't even know, wait, the third one. I can't remember what the third one is, but we've got the first two loaded up. A mod because they're sorry for harassing. Wait, is that what they, d I couldn't even tell. Like, right. She's speaking to somebody like that, that. You know, obviously, they they know what went on, but I don't I don't feel like Pop I don't feel like Poppy's doing a good job of, of explaining. Is like for what I got of it was that, um, Poppy was mad at this person for being in the server of a person that does not like them. In other words, a person that is that is you know aware of what they've done, uh, to to people, right? And and so, but like uh, Brianna is interpreting this as uh. That maybe they went over there to harass the other person. I don't even know. I don't even know. Down, did I ever attack you as a person or did I just express that I was hurt? Be honest, please. I, I genuinely want to know. Like, this is the issue that I have, is that the way these people characterize me does not meet the reality of my day-to-day -day life. Yeah, I just expressed I was hurt. Like, again, like, this is, like, literally what you said. Thank you. Like, there's a reason why every night I hang out in VC, Nightwile is there and is just a delight. Yeah, systems gotta stick together. True.
So that was cringe as fuck. Anyway, um, <laughs> I, don't know that, I don't know what that fist was. I'm white as hell. Um, but I, I just want you guys to understand this. So before we get into segments, just, just please understand that like this is the, the shit that we're dealing with is so multifaceted. Like I've literally heard that like anywhere I go to work, gonna get review bombed all to hell. Yeah, by Chat GPT. Because, generated emails because they can't be bothered to write them themselves. Because one of Lily's enemies, Brittany, has decided that she, I am the devil and has decided to treat me as a Lily level threat. And I'm gonna be honest, I have my issues with Lily. I have a lot of issues with Lily. But you know what? I haven't talked shit about her in a while. And you know why? Because their behavior makes her look downright rational. Like, someone gave me shit online because they were like, I made, a, I made a, a, a joke about, like, that moment when the same people that harass you are the people that harass Lily. And then it was that picture of, like, um, Grizzly Adams, and it's, like, the pan in, and he's, like, like, the nod. Like, that's the shit that the, the like, it was just that. And I joked about it being a truce, and what ended up happening was is they got butthurt as f and we're like, you're justifying all these No, it's a joke. Uh, Baked Freeman Zeta, thank you for the raid over on Twitch. Welcome, raiders. Welcome, streamer. How was your stream today, uh, Baked Freeman Zeta? You f***ing idiots. It's the fact that, like, from a certain perspective, I can understand why she lashes out and rages, because you guys have no lines. It's also why stopped working with you. Yes, Zeno, people more unhinged than Lily. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. because Lily's never threatened to come to my house. Let's put it that way. Let put it that way. Okay, so they're talking about Lily Orchard. Uh, Lily Orchard is a large, very large um, animation YouTuber, right? Uh, does uh, videos on uh, stuff like She-Ra and the Princesses of Power, does stuff on like uh, Steven Universe and, uh, you know, co controversial takes sometimes. But... Um, the stuff that's gone on on Lily's server is actually pretty disturbing in, in terms of um, like, you know, and, and, and in fact, there's like allegations from uh, of abuse from Lily's uh, sister. So um, I haven't gotten into it. Uh, Essence of Thought actually has a really good video. If you want to if you want to watch a video on what's up with Lily Orchard that is not by these two, I uh, I would recommend Essence of Thought's uh, videos and uh like, I don't know a lot of, I'm not a Lily Orchard uh, expert by any means. Um, so, uh, Vodka was referring to a document, right? Actually, there's, uh, I've got two documents here. I think there may be a third, but I'm I'm having uh, trouble finding it. It was great. You started with some American truck sim. Oh, I've never, I've seen, I've, I've seen European truck sim before, but I don't think I've ever seen American uh, truck sim. Here, let me show you, uh, let me show you what I'm talking about, right? Because, like, I feel like it's a good time to, like, I don't know. Uh, this is, this is hard stuff for me to deal with. Um, this is not my favorite kind of subject to cover. So I'm dealing, uh, you know, however I can, but, um, I'm, I don't know. I've had a little too much poppy and Xena, maybe some of you can relate, right? Um, so this is the document. This isn't polyamory. This is poppyamory. Uh, proof of uh, Xena and Poppy's emotional abuse of No Flake leading up to the trip, how they coerced and abused her into going on the trip, even after she expressed not being interested in continuing the relationship. Trigger warnings, gaslighting, abuse, invalidation, manipulation, boundary violations, general narcissistic abuse. Um, October stream about personal drama. The now hidden clip from their stream, from Poppy and Zena's stream, in October about how, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to take a... Here, let me, let me see what that is. I'm not, so some of this stuff has been, uh, taken down. Let's see if this one's still up. Okay, there it is. Um, yeah, 
can't figure out how to get the site to work. Oh, there we go. We got to hit. Un I'm not mute. saying it all. I'm just giving a light overview because I need to I need to vent. Um, and then we're going to get to beyond safe words and foreign man in a foreign land. Piss some people off. No. Be sure. No, we're not pissing anyone off. Uh, wow. Uh, Plubius, thank you for the four gifted tier one subs. Uh, again, Harmsy donated five dollars. My war on white names has begun. Very nice. Levy uh, Artyom shifted two tier two subs to Faritz for Faripsy and Hunter dot me. Um. So, because there's this there's this thing that happens sometimes when we are dealing with a lot of stress and a lot of stuff. And it creates a positive feedback loop. And I don't mean positive good. And that that feedback loop is something to the effect of Poppy gets stressed and has a migraine probably every three days. ZZ gets stressed, starts having a migraine daily. Environmental factors fuck us because Michigan's weather has been god awful. And then on top of that, We've had personal life issues going on from multiple directions. One of those we're going to be talking about on stream tonight. Another one will probably be a future segment on polyamory because I got some fucking thoughts, but I'm going to leave that be for now. So the health issues have been ZZ has basically had a migraine ongoing for about two to three weeks now, and it's been yeah. it's been awful. And the problem is, is that ZZ is kind of the linchpin in the house because I'm usually working. And so, like, I'll get things done around here, but, like, there has to be, like, a changeover and some discussions because, A, I have ADHD and don't remember all the stuff that we need to do. But also, like, ZZ's usually the one that handles, like, the grocery order to have a, a, a fucking crusade against me online. Okay, there a we go. Of people nearly killing my girlfriend. Uh, a current situation with a partner where I basically had to declare war on metamors. I'll get to it. And on top so, of for anybody who doesn't know, um, polyamory uh, has terminology to it, right? Uh, one of these terms, which Poppy just mentioned, is metamor. A metamor is a um, a metamor is somebody who is dating um, So if you're in a polyamorous relationship and, and you know, you're you're with someone, right? And and you're both poly, right? A metamor is somebody who is dating your partner, but not you. Am I getting this correctly? Partner of your partner says Brit Skrieg. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, right. I'm not I'm not exactly an expert. What's up, Carlos Wild Ride? Good to see you, Poly Pride. Yeah, exactly. That's the other thing. Okay, so I mentioned this being used as poppy and xena and and you know sort of the abuse that went around uh that that went on um in their community enabled by the the white leaf network i i i mentioned this being weaponized against trans people right that's one vector another vector is it being weaponized against poly people what you're going to hear about from poppy is going to be um you know what this um document calls poppy amory right not polyamory which you know having uh multiple partners there's different ways that this can work there's different like arrangements of you know how the, this can work right um but um this is poppy amory this is like uh poppy's you know kind of version of polyamory that's 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 really kind of against a lot of the like the principles a lot of you know how polyamory um you know should work in in terms of um in, in terms of respect between partners and in, in terms of like right it, it's kind of uh this is something different right this is uh this is poppy's version of it and it, it, it the, that is to say chat that this should not reflect on um on the polyamorous community right 
the 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 kind of uh situation that you're going to hear about here is not reflective of how uh people who are are poly are right so we we just don't want this to be you know used to go after um the polyamorous community all of this other shit then had to become estranged from my own kid because my kid was acting abusive towards my partner that has been our and year Vibes are not immaculate right oh, and now. The people in question, by the way, that nearly killed my girlfriend, the way they did this was not intentional. The way they did this was they took a person with borderline and then tried to isolate them away from their favorite person, which caused dissociation and psychosis. Wait, I'm Just sorry. Saying. In the span of like a couple months, dissociation and psychosis. And then tried to isolate them away from. Oh, and the people in question, by the way, that nearly killed my girlfriend, the way they did this was not intentional. The way they did this was they took a person with borderline and then tried to isolate them away from their favorite person, which caused dissociation and psychosis. Just saying. Um, okay, so uh, borderline uh, personality disorder or BPD is a condition that is uh, much maligned in social media. You may have seen videos about it. Um, there's a lot of bad information, right? There's a lot of uh, demonization of, of BPD, right? Um, we're talking about a mental, you know, health condition. We're we're talking about, um, you know, it's it's part of um, what are termed the uh, cluster B uh, disorders, and um, you know, it it, it is. Um, from what I know, you know, a, a difficult um, thing to deal with. However, there are, you know, um, therapy, um, there, there are therapies that are specifically, I think, dialectical behavioral therapy is, is used to deal with um, BPD. And uh, but um, a favorite person if I'm not mistaken, which I don't know if that's like specific to borderlines or if that also applies to other uh, cluster B personality disorders, but um, it's it's somebody that gets fixated on, like right when one of the one of the common um, occurrences in bur borderline is that the person with BPD uh, might find a person that they really you know really like and and end up wanting to spend a lot of time with and. Um, and and this is termed the favorite person, right? It's uh it's like a psychological um term. Um Jewel says uh Luxander has uh BPD and it said this favorite person thing is not real. It's an internet thing. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So somebody somebody that actually um So wait, so she's not right about this then this is not okay so according to lux uh fp lux sander uh it, its pronouns uh fp stuff is not part of clinical language so this is more of a what like a people should not weaponize mental health terminology conditions especially not by falsely accusing people of this is the other thing that i keep on hearing about poppy and xena is that there have been multiple attempts by them to like diagnose other online people with with various things now poppy does have like a, a degree I, I i guess in um you know the mental health field and and has worked in uh you know in, in that field but um you know things like you know especially like weaponizing a diagnosis against somebody that's not your freaking client like that's massively massively irresponsible and super dangerous actually uh baked reman zeta says i am autistic and ocd i can definitely obsess about my new partners not suitable foundation for building a relationship. Um, okay, so this is interesting because I'm learning stuff. I don't know a lot beyond um, just what I've seen, which is like, you know, kind of a demonization of um, of cluster B uh, personality disorders in general and, and BPD specifically, right? There's a lot of videos like, you know, focusing on like BPD and NPD that, you know, if you watch them kind of lead you to believe that maybe all the interpersonal problems in your life come from the fact that 
you know, the person you have problems with has has BPD or NPD. And I, I you know, that's, you know, I, I, without having like a lot of knowledge um, about the specifics of any of these cluster B personality disorders, I, I can tell that that's messed up. And uh, it's got to be make it even harder for people, um, you know, with these issues to be able to navigate the interpersonal space. I don't think that we should perpetuate the stigma against mental health in our world by weaponizing. Yeah, exactly, Shakespeare. Exactly. Um, uh, borderline. See, now I don't. I don't even know what I know. <laughs> like, right? Because, like, I've heard people say that. Yeah, that what borderline is is like a. Um, like a strong, like you know, idolization of um of of people that that then becomes a demonization of people. But then again, like this might just be you know stuff that I've picked up from the internet that's not necessarily um any mental health professional will tell you that you don't diagnose know somebody from a video, right? I mean, like, even the stuff with Donald Trump, right? Donald Trump, I think, is a dangerous person. Um, you know, definitely has some negative personality traits. But when people try to be like, you know, it's psychosis, it's sociopathy. It's like, you know, like, you've even brought on, like, you know, people with degrees in in, in mental health fields, right, to, to, to make these claims. I don't think that's helpful. <laughs> I don't think that, especially not to other people that, you know, uh, that deal with those same issues, right? Now, now they're associated with, Donald Trump, based on the half-baked, you know, diagnosis as a at a distance by somebody that just wants to get on TV. Yeah, so I don't know which parts of this, like now, now I'm questioning like what I actually know because I thought the famous, the favorite person, uh, was uh was a thing with BPD. Uh, apparently, Luxander. Um, says it's uh, that's a myth. Span of like a couple months, we lost two mods and a friend of ours, a former girlfriend. In fact, we lost uh, a girlfriend of mine who. So it's not a clinical term, is it? Just it's a, like a colloquial term for for something that is part of BPD or was actively doing manipulation and sabotage in the background. We lost yeah. my kid. Yeah. Because my kid decided to just bounce. Yeah, I have a 23-year-old, guys. I got married when I was 19. My wife was three months pregnant when I met her. I decided to sign the form. And then I raised this kid the entire time. Even after well, their mom died in 2004 from a horse riding accident. Okay, so now the we're talking about spawn here. That that's uh that's uh, uh so uh Poppy was married to somebody who died in a sport in a in a horse riding accident. Um that person had a child, right? That child we will be referring to as Spawn. That is not their real name, and I'm specifically you know Trying to prevent from disclosing their real name because, like, I feel like uh, Poppy and Zena did release their real name, and it feels like an intimidation tactic, right? Them, them, you know, saying that, like, you know, these harassment websites are going to get involved, and then, like, mentioning, you know, their real name is uh, is something that seems like it would be dangerous to them, right? So I don't want to spread, uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter what their name is, right? They are. Uh, I'm going to try to keep them anonymous. Uh, seems to be some heavy uh, personal distancing uh, from Spawn. Well, we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. Um, funny how she doesn't say that she was groomed by the... Yeah, she, you're right, Vodka. Uh, so in, in, a, in, a, in the video that we were watching uh, before... Let's see, that's this one, right? Uh, she she did accuse this person, that the um, parent of, uh, of Spawn, uh, that she was married to of uh of, of grooming her like that that you know she was was groomed in this relationship joke is is that this kid has basically been there with me through all of my life all of my ch changes 
I have been an awful parent at times. I've been a great parent at times. It just depends. But this year, they decided to just give, like in the last year, give the fuck up. They didn't want to deal with anything, despite the fact that Xena had got them to go to school, had helped them get more responsible, had helped them get jobs, had done, like, ZZ was basically acting as a fucking unpaid case manager. Because I don't fucking have the time. Also, like, just our skill sets lend, them to, lend themselves to different things, and yeah, with that one working, and me, Poppy working, and me, like, here, like, no, like, I, I did a lot of the help raising them and educating them. You know, for particularly the adulthood portion of their life, which they really didn't want to do. Well, so we ended up getting some psych testing back on them and found out that not only do they have basically borderline, like it just was clear they had borderline. I was like, okay, well, good. That runs in the family. So I'm pretty sure my mom did. Um, I must have given it to them through osmosis. Um, but the joke is, is that. Yeah. So the, the key fact here being that uh, this is not. Um, this is not like. Um, like Poppy's not the biological parent of of Spawn. Uh, Poppy uh, raised Spawn after her partner died in a horse riding accident. Holy fuck! Like <sighs> the testing was so sophisticated that it actually pointed out that they were doing this thing where they would pretend to be incompetent in order to get people to give them negative attention. Which explained why Adrian would know how to do a task, and then suddenly, like a ro oh, wait, bad lefty. Are you trying to see if your if your chats are coming through? They are, right? So, uh, yeah, bad lefty's had some issues before with with YouTube trying to um, YouTube not showing uh, their chats, like a, a rodingly forget how it worked. Yeah, yeah, they would do it perfectly for a couple of weeks, and then all of a sudden, just gone. And they'd be complaining that like they couldn't do it, they didn't know how. They needed all this help. So my thing is that my kid ended up leaving uh, surreptitiously, just left. They said they were going to be going to, a, to the store. They ended up tossing a bunch of stuff out their window and bouncing the fuck out of here. And I guess lying to the person they were going to be doing room share with. Yep. Let me be clear. This year has been fucking hell for me and for my partner. It's been hard. I also need to remind people, and this is not going out to any future partners, just as a FYI. I have borderline personality disorder. When I make a boundary based on my mental health, I'm wondering if there's any. I request that you want. actually listen to that and do that thing. Or, or just say no at the get go and just. Make the decision, there we are. So at least now we all know like, we don't have to get any further into it. Now, if you've been following my Twitter, the short version of this is very simple, and I'm not going to throw my partner under the bus because I do love her dearly, and I don't, and, and she is an FP, so I'm not super comfortable doing so anyway. But the long story short is, one of my triggers is that I don't ever want to hear about my partners being intimate with their partners. If I hear about sexual content from my, other, from my partners about their other partners, I will start getting intrusive thoughts of this act between my partner and sort of a faceless amalgamation of people. And this is harmful to me. It causes anxiety. It causes desires to want to get away. It causes a whole bunch of really uncomfortable stuff coming up that I will not share on stream. Well, when this stuff happens and get shared, the issue is, is that if it's also in concert with stuff that brings up safety concerns, you get into a problem because all of a sudden, I don't play nice with other metamors. Now, for those who don't know, metamors are a term in the poly community referring to your partner's partners. So instead of a paramour, metamor. Got it? Meta. So the thing that I want kind of to make people aware of is that, like, I generally don't have a problem with my metamors. Like, a number of my partners have partners, and that's fine. That, that's good. Um, hell, a girl I'm thinking about dating has, like, Oh my god, chat, this is, like, this is getting hard, right? Risa Tisa's now on Hulu? Nice. Um, I hope Risa Tisa's making some money, because, uh, so Risa Tisa's the person behind, uh, the, like, the, what was the video called? It was, like, um, who the fuck did I marry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we watched uh, part of that in here. We watched the rest of it on community night, right? 
and it's a wild story, a wild, wild story of what Risa Teese has been uh, about. But this this thing went viral, right? This is a series of TikTok videos that just went viral, right? Unfortunately, Risa Teese was not able to financially benefit from any of that virality, despite the fact that millions and millions of people like watched not just one TikTok, but like every TikTok, because it's kind of like once you get into the story, you get pulled along. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, Risa Tisa will be able to make some money uh, because, like, I mean, you know, once you once you hear the story, you, you'll realize like what all um, Risa's been through. Okay, so I gotta get, I gotta, you know, uh, ask some help. All right, um, is there anybody in chat who is is, is Polly and would feel comfortable? Uh, speaking to this, like, 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 just you know, your take on, um, the idea of um, having being in a poly relationship and having a boundary where you don't talk about your metamors, right? So you know, to to somebody that's your paramour, to somebody that you're with, you know, like in, in the poly relationship, somebody that you're intimate with, right? You don't speak about the other people. That you're intimate with right so you're you're poly you're both you know able to you know have other partners at, in, within certain you know sort of negotiated and understood um uh boundaries right but the idea that that you know you would just omit all discussion of anybody else that you were intimate with right it i, I don't know if that is like it seems like that would be difficult, but I don't know, right? I've, um, okay, so Bakery Manzari says, I talk, okay, I talk about my experiences, sorry, I talk about my experiences with all my partners. I've never been, uh, So it would be, it seems like it would be difficult, right? Like I, I'm, I'm just imagine, I'm trying to imagine myself in this situation, right? Where I'm with like uh, multiple people, but one of these people has a rule that says, don't talk about the other person, don't acknowledge the other person, just like, you know, I, I don't know if I could do it. I, I think that would be really hard. And like, I mean, I'm Demi, right? You, you, you all, God. This is like, um, does everybody know what demisexual is? Because there's a lot, like a lot of misunderstandings about this. Uh, sometimes people will, will say it like that. It's like you only uh, are intimate with uh, with your friends. Uh, that makes it sound like you're you're intimate with all your friends. And, and that's not what it is for me. Right. It means that I have trouble um, taking in a, a relationship to a, a point of intimacy with people that I don't already consider to be my friends, that I they don't have that kind of basis of trust and friendship with, right? That is like a prerequisite uh, with me in particular for being intimate with somebody. That it, like it, it's scary. It's scary to be intimate, like essentially with somebody that I'm not. Uh, I don't have that, you know, sort of baseline uh, friendship, that foundation of of friendship and understanding with, right? Um, so you know, it's uh a little different for me but i'm having trouble imagining um like but, but okay so because i i'm demi um somebody that i would be in a relationship with would be you know not just a friend but like a really close friend i and i can't imagine it any other way like i can't imagine being in a relationship and having like, you know, kind of a like we're, we're, we're intimate, but, you know, we don't talk about everything. Right. Uh, anybody that I've ever been intimate with, I like talk about every everything, every every facet of my life. In fact, I have I would have trouble being intimate with somebody who I didn't have that sort of, you know. That, that sort of um, communication with. Uh, can't be poly without being open to all your partners. Uh, Bake Riemann said us as I could not do that. So yeah, I just I don't want to like, you know, make assumptions. Oh, you too, uh Bake Riemann said uh Poppy does not get Polly at all. 
it's funny i don't usually talk about being demi because i feel like i've gotten made fun of it for before it before like i even had somebody that was like on my timeline say that they thought that demi people were like judgmental that like my by me saying like i'm only going to be intimate with somebody that i'm like you know friends with or really close to that that i was saying that they're like somehow a slut or that like you know what i mean like imp implying that they just like you know fuck anybody and i was like wait a minute like are, are <laughs> am i maybe talking to somebody that's demi and doesn't realize it and and is saying we i'm the same but i'm not demisexual like what what do you think you're better than me no i don't think that i'm better than you i think i'm just demi i'm just well, different, but but in this case, maybe maybe not so different. Maybe not so. Maybe that was the the person's issue was that like they felt the same way, and because it's it's really easy to imagine somebody being demisexual and and like never realizing it, like never actually realizing that's what that is. Like, because to me, it just seems like normal to um to only be in a relationship with somebody that you that you um have like a, a a base a foundation of of friendship and trust with but other people aren't the same i know a lot of couples even married couples where there's a lot that they don't share there and yeah i mean like that's great for them i'm not trying to be judgmental i'm not saying that there's anything wrong with the way that they're living their life but i it's just just not how i live my life um yeah so we got some we got some demi representation in chat here um I'm not poly, uh, but I know about boundaries. It's okay to decide for yourself that you don't want to talk about metamors. But okay, so if you were to say that, like, you don't want to talk to your partner about your metamors, right? That's, you know, that's one thing. But Jules is saying, but you can't decide that other people can't. You can only say, I don't want to be in a relationship with you if someone isn't compatible with your boundaries and that's not quite what she's that's not quite quite what poppy's saying here right yeah yeah me too uh brits creek we got a lot of, damn wow i didn't realize how this actually does make me feel kind of good because like i always think that um, I always think that b being Demi is this like weird and uh and like rare thing. Cause I, I guess just because people don't talk about it that much. Poppy is open rather than poly. Okay, so can somebody describe to me the difference between an open relationship and a uh, polyamorous one? I hate it when people say that being Demi, it just means being a woman. Uh, yeah, no, that's that's rather limiting. <laughs> I don't think that's a requirement um, or, you know, a, a, a correlation there. Um, I think some people are frustrated by the explosion. Oh, that's probably what I was dealing with. Yeah, Brits Creek. I think that's that, that's what I was dealing with with this person, right? I mean, that that's a fundamentally like like I hate to say it, but it's kind of like a fundamentally right wing thing. Right. Uh, like, I understand it. And like, I guess I'm, you know, like when I see the, like flags, right. Oftentimes I see a, you know, so so if you look at the umbrella behind Poppy. Oh, my God. Let me expand this so you can actually see what I'm looking at here. See this umbrella. So we got a bunch of flags in here, right, of different uh, forms of. Uh, of sexuality but when i see one that i don't recognize it is a little bit frustrating um how should i explain this like it, it makes me realize that there are like other people's experiences out there that i have like no concept like i wasn't even aware that you know you know that was like but it the, the only frustration is that it's a frustration with myself that there are you know, parts of the human experience that I am totally ignorant about. And it, and it does make me realize that I need to do, I need to do some research. I need to like, you know, understand this stuff. But um, yeah, like the, the sort of reacting to that by like, you know, new thing is bad, you know, <laughs> like, right. Like uh, it's, it's. 
Um, what would demisexual representation look like? I mean, just talking, like, if you're talking about in media, it would just look like, um, uh, you, you, sort of incorporating themes or, or even just a character who, um, operates that way or finds out that they are demi demisexual. <laughs> Talk to my wife? What's next? Talk to my children? Poppy has it backwards, says Jules. Uh, they're this web of lovers. I mean, it's a lot to keep track of, uh, Peter. Um, uh, she thinks other people need to act according to her boundaries, uh, not that she should break up with someone who isn't compatible. I see. Well, okay, so Peter Hopkins says this just sounds like plan cheating. And like I said, I'm not um, polyamorous, right? So this isn't my life. This isn't my like lived experience. But uh, I can imagine being interested in someone, uh, wanting to be like, you know, maybe even explore intimacy with that person, uh, and, and wanting to explore a relationship with that person. but not wanting to not not wanting to like limit you know yourself to that person right does that make sense and then if you met somebody else who felt the same way then wouldn't it make sense to just kind of set that because like you got to realize these like sort of relationship boundaries these like I, somebody said allosexual um in, in terms of uh you know what we call what some people would call like normal relationship uh, boundaries like you know you're in a relationship with someone and uh you know if you are intimate with somebody else during that time that's cheating that's bad you're you've hurt that person um right that that's kind of taken for granted and it doesn't necessarily need to be like that like you can't really justify to me like you know this is like uh, without without brandishing a bible without brandishing a bible at me there's not really a lot of ways to, to to justify that like this is the way that it has to be just because this, this is the way that it has been um traditionally I, I think it's perfectly appropriate to question um those traditions and to you know step outside them if you're if you're comfortable with them right and uh, like unless you got some sky daddy like you know telling you you're going to be condemned to hell if, if you don't do that then i don't really I don't really see the the um but yeah like I, I i see where you're coming from peter i see where you're coming from um and it's definitely not for everyone that's for sure she thinks other people need to act according to her boundaries uh not that she should break up with okay um does polly mean you're in an open relationship i think there is a distinction right again chat this is out of my area of expertise Uh, I sometimes want to describe my own experience of Demi as finding sexual attraction abstract until it isn't interesting. Interesting. Yeah, aren't all words new since we were always encountering them? Uh, yeah, and I want to learn. Like, I, I don't want to, like, have that reaction where I try to close off and say, this new stuff is bad and it needs to go away because it's confusing and I don't want to have to learn. I want I want to be the person that, like, learns and adapts and... And and it, like I feel like my life is enriched by like learning about uh, other people and the way that they are. Uh, Polly is multiple lovers. Open marriage is typically open to sexual. Oh, okay, okay. So Paul, with Polly, you're talking about the possibility of multiple relationships, right? And with open marriage, you're talking about one relationship with the possibility of multiple, you know sexual in, sexual encounters outside of that relationship but in a mutually agreed upon and understood sort of way because i mean like there, it, it's not supposed to be like a license to cheat right cheat cheating is generally something that somebody does in secret uh without you know it hides from their their partner and um you know doesn't discuss you know th this what we're talking about in terms of polyamory 
is something that is discussed up front. And um, I, I think that's the... Uh, sometimes learning is fun and scary. Okay, so Autumn Leaf says, Polly, uh, everyone in the relationship is dating each other. Open, you have multiple partners, but you may not even know each other. They may not even know each other. Yeah, people just don't like change. And I'm like, I understand being frustrated by having to, like, you know, by realizing that there's stuff out there that you don't know, but I don't think you have to react in, like, anger. Um, tomorrow there will be new words. True. Looks like a beach umbrella. I don't think so. I think it's, like, I think it's got, like, it's got different flags in it, right? It's, um... But yeah, I can't identify, like, every single like flag there is and it makes me realize that there's a lot of uh there's a lot that I don't know. But yeah, this is an interesting discussion that kind of broke out. <laughs> the Book of Facts, chapter one, verse four says, Ye ye sky daddy lovers. Oh, polycules can uh, live together. Open relationships don't. New stuff. It, yeah, it is interesting. Uh, some people are use, starting to use polyam for polyamorous communities instead of poly, since poly is also used for Polynesian communities. Good to good to know, uh, Metal. Um, that makes sense. Uh, Bad Lefty says learning and grow. Oh, you're still dealing with the thing where you can only say short phrases. That, that I don't know why YouTube does this to Bad Lefty. Free Bad Lefty. Uh, cheating is something that breaks the social contra uh, contract of a relationship. Uh, for me, at least, when uh, that was my agreement, is uh, spontaneous sexual encounters were fine. Uh, but talk about it afterwards. Yeah, yeah, it's something that you, um, yeah, make an agreement. Um, like, you know, they, like, they, I, I think that polyamorous or polyam relationships can be, um, can be, like, sort of, uh, like, they're, they're not all the same, right? Not, er not everybody goes by the same rules, but there are certain concepts of, like, um, respect and, and reciprocity that are upheld um okay so yeah i mean like i don't know i i, I guess i sort of um understand but yeah this is complicated for me too so if you're if you're having trouble um you know following i that's why i wanted to put pause on it and and take a little time to uh try to get on the same page and understand each other partners the thing is is that i don't have a problem with that i might need time to like work towards connecting to those people because my brain because of borderline immediately sort of puts them in the enemy slot because they are a threat to my well-being and needs. Now, are they really? Probably not. But that is the way my brain interprets them. So I make it very clear to my partners that if you're going, if you want like this sort of like metamor paradise where everybody gets along, that's fine. Your bitch ass better work towards it. Well, and if you have people who are, this gets infinitely more complicated, but there are people Good for Gabby says, I'm so grateful my ex wasn't a streamer. Hey, I understand, like, you know, like the idea, like, so, so they're, you know, they're, they're talking about their relationship on stream. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a lot like to, like, I mean, um, sometimes as a public figure, 
um our, our personal lives get dragged out into into the public sphere even the parts that we're not like because you know like I'm, I'm sharing part of my life i'm spending time uh with everybody now um sharing sharing you know stuff about my uh like like kind of how i am and 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 asking chat you know how how this stuff works for you what your experiences are like but um you know obviously no nobody's like comfortable with sharing everything and sometimes stuff gets like dragged out there um unwittingly now it's even worse if you're not a public figure and your shit is getting dragged out on stream like what's happening to no flake here that's um that's where i really think we see the the, the poppy abusing her platform poppy using her status as a public person uh her um audience you know etc and, and sort of like weaponizing that right what happened you were in a relationship with somebody you got really pushy and you forced them into situations that they weren't comfortable with and they left you right now while it sucks to get left while it sucks to be dumped right um it doesn't give you the right to like throw a tantrum go on stream and make allegations against a person that sound like really bad right what poppy accused no of was was rape with the idea being that Poppy was intimate with No, uh, with the understanding that she would not be broken up with, and then she got broken up with. The, the sad fact is, being broken up with is is part of a is part of being in a relationship. That is the that is the chance that you got to take, and there's no way around that. Otherwise, you're in a situation where you're sort of forcing somebody. Uh, to be in a relationship that they might not want to be in and look consent is important right poppy's trying to invoke consent here but um consent one important part of consent oh my god what is it there's there's like a there's like a um acronym for this right um anybody remember this the acronym for consent let me see if i can get to it Oh my god youtube is or like my browser is choosing right now to be really slow fries thank you fries yes 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 that's the one i was talking about so um the r stands for reversible right now i want fries too yeah what is going on with my browser that's really worrying. That's that's very concerning. Um freely given, right? So consent. Freely given, reversible, informed, enthusiastic and specific, right? So freely given in other words, somebody's not, you know, for putting pressure on you, not, not, not forcing you um, into giving it right. Not, not, not pushing you um, to put pushing to like ob obtain your consent. Right. Reversible means that even if you consented to something at one point, like let's say that you're intimate with someone, um, you know, they, they you know, they they ask if you want to be intimate with them and you're like, yes, and you start to do stuff. And at some point while you're doing stuff, something doesn't feel right. Something doesn't feel good. Should that consent that you freely gave at the outset of, you know, your, um, you know, sexual encounter, should that be used to, to force you to continue in the sexual encounter when you're no longer comfortable? No, it should be reversible. Um, now, informed is what Poppy's trying to invoke here when she says that she was not informed or she, she was she was in for, after after berating Noah Flake Noah Flake like said yeah we'll we'll stay together right and so she's trying to say that I was informed that I would not be broken up with and I was and yet I was broken up with but you see you see where that 
you know, becomes a conflict, right? You're not respecting Noah's, uh, you know, the, the, the freely given part um, of, of Noah giving, res giving consent and you're not respecting the reversibility, right? That the, the maybe that seemed like a, you know, being in the relationship seemed like a, a, a good time, a, a good um, thing at the time. And then things looked different um, at a later time. Enthusiastic and specific. Yeah. And then there's also crisp, which is considered, considered reversible, informed, specific, and participatory. I haven't seen the crisp thing yet. So considered like, you know, giving like, you know, not just putting somebody on the spot, giving them a chance to consider. Reversible, informed, specific and participatory. Anyway, yeah, sorry, Chad, this is like a little bit of a I, I just. uh. in a situation who are either bad actors or unskilled and don't really know what they're doing so yeah exactly so basically long story short is is that there was an accident some stuff got said there was some stuff about it that was weird and i'm not going to go into specifics i'm not going to give up any people despite the fact that i have an issue with some of the people that are involved i'm not going to throw them under the bus because we're on stream and people do weird shit when you say things on stream so what i'll simply do is say that this brought up safety concerns for myself and for my partners. I brought those concerns up. Those were heard, but not fully understood or grokked. And it basically created a point where now there is just a stalemate because now my anxiety is so bad that if I even see these people online, it causes a panic attack. Um, this is not relationship anarchy. Relationship anarchy is a very different thing. I do not pra practice relationship anarchy because I genuinely think it's, it's um, immoral. It also goes against attachment theory in every conceivable way. Um, what I would say more is that dealing with borderline and being poly means that I have to have special relationship accommodations. For example, one of my partners is going to be going out of town soon for a week to go visit one of their partners. I am going to have the option during emergencies to call if I need to or have regular calls and texts because I need to have that connection or I will start having problems. Okay, so, um... An accommodation is generally something that is made for, um, a disability. I mean, like, that's one of the con the contexts that it exists in. Um, and it, it's, it's like things like, I mean, you're probably familiar with this if you've been in, you know, uh, school anytime uh recently like you know like an accommodation for somebody with uh like i knew somebody that had back problems and uh the school provided him a standing desk right because him sitting down for long periods of time like you do have to do in a class would not be good for his back right so that's that's a very simple example of an accommodation now she's invoking the idea of an accommodation uh you know for something that that she deals with and that accommodation is constant contact with one's partner in a poly, in a polyam relationship while that partner is spending time with another partner do you see how this becomes more of an imposition on the partner rather than an accommodation uh, for poppy I can't imagine that, right? Like again, Chad, I'm not uh, poly, so you know, a, a lot of this is like difficult for me to imagine. But even putting myself in that situation, right? I can't imagine being in the situation where you know you are, uh, you know, with you know two different uh people, and while you're with one of those people, the other person you are, you are supposed to answer the phone immediately. You're supposed to text back immediately, right? You are supposed to be like while while you're trying, you can't just spend time with this other person. In other words, so it kind of I I don't know. Uh, Vest demon.
Thank you for the Bettys. First, first donation of the stream. Thank you so much, Vest Demon. Yeah, I haven't been doing it. Like, look, like I said, chat, this stuff is difficult for me to get through. Um, I'm not super comfortable about talking about like personal people's personal life, even like other people's um, personal lives. This has become discourse based on the accusations that Poppy made against um, like a, as a content creator. Right. So just to understand what's going on between Poppy and and Noah Flake. Right. Um, they, they had a relationship. They were in a polyamorous relationship together. Um, when Noah Flake um, broke up with Poppy, Poppy made an accusation of rape, which, you know, that's fucked up, right? But the what was based on the fact that they had been intimate and then the breakup had happened. So it's essentially implying that you're not allowed to break up like with with poppy after being intimate like do you see what's wrong with that and and smearing somebody's smearing somebody's name because this is what poppy did went around like you know and and just blasted out like that um that, that this person who like their 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 sin their offense was to break up with poppy was like a a, a rapist right i mean so so here we are here we are where you know, this is, um, you know, that th this person has a community and has a platform, thanks in a large part to uh, Vosh and the rest of the White Leaf Network, and they're using it to harm their ex. They're, they're taking this ex that, who's like a person on Twitter, right? But, um, you know, not a, not a YouTuber or like a content, like I, when I looked at, um, you know the 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 Twitter account, like it's a small Twitter account, and and now their shit is all over the internet, accusing them of being, you know, like a, a really horrible person, so, somebody who did something really bad that they didn't do. What they did was they broke up, and they're being punished for that breakup by having their name smeared. That's why we're here. That's why we're talking about this. That's why I'm incredibly uncomfortable today with this content, and even. As gross as the Candace Owens shit is, even as gross as the whole little underworld underbelly of of Groypers and and Nick Fuentes fans is, like I will be thankful to get back to that uh, compared to compared to covering this stuff because this this just makes me really uncomfortable. Oh, anarchy in your own nebulous definition. Okay, got it. Relationship anarchy neon rush refers to a type of polyamory where there is no such thing as actual rules. Or agreements. So most of the time I tend to go with the Frank Vove school of like more than two, which is that you don't use rules, you use agreements. Agreements are things that everybody has to follow, such as you get regular STI testing, things like that. The problem is, is that um, relationship anarchy as a thing seems to have this notion where you don't really have to tell your partners about your other partners. You kind of keep everybody in the dark if you so desire. And you have this tendency to not feel like you really owe anyone anything. The problem with that is, is that people have things like jealousy come up. They also have things like possessiveness come up. And these are natural human things. I am possessive. Exceedingly so. <laughs> there are partners, not all of them, but there are partners I use the term mine with. Good example is Xena. Xena is mine. Now, does that mean Xena can't can have other partners? Sure, there's a person we're both looking at wanting to date. But guess what? There's still a way in my brain that that Xena and actually one of my other partners is coded as mine. Yeah, does that play well with Polly? No. Do I care? No. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. It's what my brain needs to feel good. Um, and so this Polly situation wouldn't be that deep, except it was something that kept eating away at me because there's the clinician side of my brain that sensed that there was an issue with the situation and what this story involved. And then there was another part of my brain that was like BPD freaking the fuck out. And the problem is these two parts work together. Really well. 
And so what ended up happening is, is me having a ton of anxiety coming up, having to deal with a bunch of blowout issues, this cut time away from me hanging out, you know, spending time with Xena, spending uh -huh. time with friends. Um, it basically caused a lot of stuff. And here's the problem. You could say, well, Poppy, why didn't you just make sure to spend time with people and like, you know, just step away from the stuff? Omega Star says, this is really strange poly behavior. I can't imagine being in this situation. And that's why I'm covering it. Because, you know, like, like I said, this was a difficult and deep and uncomfortable rabbit hole to get into. But when I, when I found out what was going on, when I found out what was at stake, and especially that this is another example of a white leaf content creator you, misusing their platform to hurt people, right? And that this person's name had been dragged through the mud. Now their adult child's name is being dragged through the mud, right? I, I feel a certain responsibility to, to, to talk about this stuff. Um, yeah. Thank you, uh, Omega Star for the uh the super chat. Uh, thank you, Soul Life for the super sticker. Oh, see, you can't see. Oh, I wish it sh would show you the super sticker. I need to get a program that actually shows the super stickers because those are this one's really cute. It's a Doge. I mean, you can see it in chat. It's a Shibu Inu, smiling and like. <laughs> it's cute. It's cute. It's very cute. It's a super cute super sticker. Thank you, Soul Life. That's a good question. <laughs> you can't. You have borderline. In this hypothetical scenario, you have borderline. And this person who you just started dating is your fucking FP. They are the person that in your brain, for some reason, codes just right to be... incredibly important in your hierarchy of needs because there's some way in which they interact with your psychology combination of also the emotional intent intensity etc normally most bpd people have one i have two okay so um chat again like when i mentioned uh when she first mentioned favorite person and i tried to explain it i had people in like uh, in in chat say that like, this is not, like, I had both people saying that this is not a thing for BPD, this is a myth, this is a mistake, right? And I had people saying that this is not um, clinical language. So it, if anybody can explain this a little bit more, because I don't want to be spreading um, misinformation, especially on something like this, because, like, from what I can see, yeah, uh, borderline and cluster B uh, personality disorders are, are massively dis demonized online. There's people that make content, like, literally just like you know that if you watch it and you take it seriously you would start to think that everybody in in your life that you have a problem with is a is a narcissist or is a sociopath or is a what you know whatever you know the the you know whatever the um uh you know condition is that that's being attacked and i i wonder i want i want to understand this stuff right so if i've, I've internalized some uh, misinformation uh feel free to to, to speak up because i don't want to be saying anything that's not um yeah poppy is referencing uh maslow's hierarchy of needs that's uh i, I noticed that I mean, it's a pretty basic it's something that you'd maybe get in a like a general psych uh course like a 101 uh being borderline doesn't mean that you get to abuse people and dictate their lives yeah It's colloquial. Okay, so Adria Staley says, so am I getting this right that there's there, there's like a similar concept that that is um part of uh, part of PD. Oh my god. Donald Duck, you just got weasels. You just got weasels thanks to autumn leaves. A, can a duck use weasels? We'll find out. We'll find out. I don't think I've ever seen you post weasels before, uh, Donald Duck. So yeah, the favorite person thing is colloquial. So so there's a real concept there, right? But it's not maybe favorite person is not how it's referred to in in terms of.
uh, favorite person is not clinical, it's colloquial. Okay. Uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs is basic for DBT, uh, which I'm sure is a module of therapy. Okay, so yeah, dialectical behavioral therapy. Is often used in, for uh, you know treatment of, of BPD. Um, I think she's talking about uh, is the idealization, uh, demonization, and splitting aspect of BPD, which are real, but things you have to work on, not just enable. Oh my God, Schmegly, that's such a good point. Me thinks duck may be napping. I mean, this is tough stuff to get through, though. So I understand if people, if people need to step away, it's it's a uh, um, it's not easy for me either. You know, these are these are the ghosts. <laughs> these ones are ghosts. Let me uh, disable YouTube alerts because I'm pretty sure these are these are go these are ghost sponsors ghost memberships. Um. So, so really when we're talking about FP, then maybe a better way of thinking of it is idolization in, the, in that concept of splitting, right? So the idea of, of borderlines, um, you know, splitting between idealization and, and demonization of, uh, of somebody that, that they're really close to. Is that maybe a better way of thinking of it? Oh, they had to work later and needed to rest a while. I mean, that's understandable too. Um, that creates some problems because if there's contention, say this one's upset about losing time with me because of another partner, I go into a panic attack. And I need this one's help to, you know, have pants because I'm migrating for several days. But it can't always communicate. So or this one doesn't realize that I said, hey, I need pants or hey, I need you to do the laundry two days ago. And then, you know, two days yeah. later, here we go. There's some stress and. Oh yeah, Zeno doesn't have pants in his uh, yeah, very it, it, dysphoric now. Now to be fair, skirts. Last couple days, things have calmed the fuck down. What do you do if you're borderline and your favorite person ghosts you? Call your therapist. Beyonce Ford said, uh, "FYI, this is antithetical to everything I've understood about relationship anarchy. I understood relationship anarchy as a honoring bottom-up agreements and individual agreements over what a relationship is supposed to look like, but the principle of relationship anarchy gets weaponized all the time." Hmm. Yeah, that's another thing that I don't really know that much about relationship anarchy. Um, so, uh, Quiet in the Chaos says Jan Roberts, DSW, LCSW, is a licensed clinical social worker. Goes on further to explain Unfortunately, most people with BPD uh, have challenges in creating and sustaining safe reciprocal relationships without having intense fears of abandonment and insecurity. Uh, therefore, while a favorite person may provide some validation and comfort to someone with BPD, it becomes important to draw boundaries in the relationship to avoid unhealthy interactions. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes, um, makes sense. See, the problem is, is that I've heard that definition too. I've never seen anyone actually do it. Because to me, just honoring the agreements within each of your individual relationships is by definition just poly. Because there's nothing in poly that by definition requires you to have a relationship as it is. You basically shape each relationship yourself. That's just understanding how meaning making works. So I don't, I reject the notion that that's, that's, that's somehow a specialty version of poly because that's already built in, like it's already baked into the pie. Um, but like, so relationship anarchy, is that what you're talking about? Uh, Brianna here, um, Feel it. They saying relation. Uh, sh I feel like it's BS saying relationship anarchy is just no rules. 
it's bot it's um a bottom up structure who's the most vulnerable uh they need to express their rules and uh it rules first um anrel has a video about relationship anarchy i've definitely heard the term uh thrown around Honoring the agreements makes these relationships sound entirely transactional. Again, we're back to the fundamental nature of the White Leaf Network. You're right. This this is what this is how this all started. Like in terms of so I'm talking about the thing that gave their channel power. I'm talking about the thing that gave Poppy and Xena reach, which is their, you know, association with um streamers like Bosch, uh Demon Mama, Xander Hall, etc. That it's a network, it's actually a um uh um you know like a a system of uh servers that allow streamers to have websites which would enable somebody to be sustainable financially at a much lower level of um uh, of community like having a much you know like these this is like a, a 10k uh channel um white leaf like allows you know streamers to make more money um off of the subs and donations like for instance when you uh, sub or donate to me that's filtered through youtube or or twitch depending on what platform it's through or or stream elements or or patreon right filtered through you know essentially a platform um white leaf uh, the you know essentially Bosch has created his own platform and shared it with people who run cover for him, right? And that's, you know, when you saw Keffels and, and Tiffster come out of the woodwork to uh to protect Bosch in the uh Ethan Klein situation, um, this is not an unprecedented thing. This is what they do. This is why they, you know, this this is essentially like a a validation, um, like a circular validation network where they're all like sort of validating each other. So, you know, if you have a problem with Vosh, well then there here comes you know, Demon Mama to say, like, I think Vosh is okay. If you have a problem with Demon Mama, here comes Shark to say, I think Demon Mama is okay. If you have a problem with Shark, here comes Xander Hall to say, I think Sh Shark is okay. They're, they're kind of like, you know, protecting each other, um, each other's, each other's backs. And, and I mean, like, that's fine when everything's on the up and up, I, I guess, right? But since it's a, a validation without any sort of, um, scrutiny without any sort of like skepticism between these creators it becomes an enabling of some really bad stuff and again Bosch at his very beginning as a content creator um used his power in his, his notoriety as as a prominent like destiny community member and, and, and as a caller in uh destiny on destiny stream to abuse somebody in destiny's discord right and that was the first of many Many incidents by Vosh and, and other people in in the network and this whole, you know, sort of um, crew, they, they literally called themselves the Vosh Intelligence Agency at the outset. Like there's screenshots of this. I think I've shown them before, right, where uh, they, they joke around that they're the VIA, the Vosh Intelligence Agency. And essentially what they're doing is attacking anybody that's inconvenient for Vosh's rise to prominence. Like that Vosh is an end in and of himself and he's too he's too important, right? We we need Vosh to exist, we need Vosh to succeed, and therefore the the person that he harassed in Discord, they need to be silenced. And and they 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 helped Vosh try to silence that person. Um Idols and followers back in full swing. That's how you know it's getting good. Wait, what? I'm sorry. Be specific. <laughs> I just want to make sure I, I know what people are saying. Uh, Baba Navanaga, you are mysterious. You are you are mysterious. I will I will give you that, but I can't quite tell you what you're saying. I'm not gonna stay too long on this. I just want to make it really clear. Our lives have been hell for a minute, and that's not to say that like I'm breaking up with this partner or I'm causing any, no. I'm I'm gonna stick through it because I want to. But 
there has to be some boundaries. There has to be some rules. I need to be able to spend more time with my partners. Um, specifically this one, because I really like this one a whole lot. Um, and I also need to start taking better care of myself. So I've like recently upped my Adderall. I have recently started taking ashwagandha again, which was really good for my depression. Uh, I just increased the shit out of my, uh, my prestige because anxiety sucks. Um, and I've recently been using edibles, which I never thought I would do, but the ones my friends sent me are kind of boss. Um, adding in DHEA to help balance out the rest of the hormones. Oh yeah, I went down on my H one. Yeah, I went down on estradiol and now I'm taking DHEA, DHEA twice a week to lightly pump my estro, my, my, um, testosterone up a little bit, not beyond the cisgender level, but the cisgender woman level, but like to a level where it's like a little bit more like actually gonna function and help you out because you need a little bit okay and if you remove that entire organ from the body uh spoiler you removed the entire thing that's responsible for that hormone shakespeare yeah. said i definitely feel like Just there's a, a difference bit. between yeah what what uh i feel like there's a difference between what people think are open relationships using the term poly rather than actual polyamorous yeah yeah polyamorousness is about Open relationships usually just refer to some variation of swinging. You can have emotional content, but there's usually always a hierarchy. Open relationships always refer to the, pre the first relationship as the primary one. Um, poly relationships, on the other hand, tend to be you have a relationship with each of these people. They're ro they can be romantic or whatnot, but there are various levels to that. I don't like hierarchical polyamory other than being honest about the fact that like, I share a rent with this person. I live with them. They rely on me for their well-being. So and vice versa. Yeah. So like they they are above the they they have to be above everybody because I they need me to function. That there. Bosh uh, responded positively to people who stroked his ego. He didn't care about their views. Yeah, yeah. This is the thing. This is the thing, right? It's transactional. Like you got to think of these. Um, you got to think of these. Um, these orbiters as as like hired guns in a way, right? It is as like Vash's shooters and uh and, and you know you're not as concerned about whether you know what what these people are doing with the power that you're giving to them as you are about their ability to be there to have your back you know when somebody um especially because like look at this look at it this way right um Vash has mentioned uh my name on stream i think one time and one time only right and that's for a specific reason, you know. I, I've I've definitely um, talked about him a considerable amount, right? If he were to respond to one of my videos, that would give me prominence that he doesn't want to to give. So you know, smartly he you know avoids um, anything like that and just kind of outsources that work to people like white nervosa and going after my channel right tries to take care of it in a kind of like a a cloak and da uh, dagger method through his um sysadmin or um you know through uh xander hall or or uh or, or shark or demon or whoever else right he's got he's got people for that right when he responds to a critic that is smaller than him he gives that critic prominence and that's not a good idea for him Unless he thinks he's got a kill shot, right? And, and like Professor Flowers being a great example of that, right? He knew that if he brought Professor Flowers on for a debate, he could absolutely ruin um, Lua's reputation, and, and he did. But uh, but but saving that, you know, this kind of work is outsourced towards uh, to people like uh, Zena and Poppy. You know, even though when somebody like Jesse Gender. Like not really like a critique, a critic of Vosh in the same way that I am, but like you know when the discourse happens and Vosh happens to have a bad take, you know Jesse's gonna Jesse's gonna say something, and the the whole network has gone from Keffels to uh to these two to like a lot of people have gone after uh, Jesse Gender in a big way. Well, and there's there's certain agreements that we've had to come to. You have a household together. That's how that is. Oh, FP is favorite person. Yeah, favorite That's person. Right. So it's a it's a it's a common term in BPD where like you have a person. So I'll give you an example. ZZ is my is one of my FPs. What that means is is that ZZ has a tremendous amount of emotional and mental power over me, and 
ZZ is very good about not abusing this or taking advantage of it, but this is why border people with borderline can often end up in abusive relationships because what will happen is the person they'll be with can act in an abusive format and they don't realize that the person they, they're with has borderline. And because that person then will freak out, have anger issues, have whatever, basically... Panic attacks. Yeah. yeah. The abusive person will take it out on them and then the BPD person can't leave because that's the problem. The major thing with borderline is a fear of abandonment. Which means that, to some degree, when I get into fights with Xena, we've had to get very good at trusting one another that when we say dumb shit in the relationship, like ending it or some shit like that, we both know that is the other one just being an asshole. Yeah. Like, one of the things- and we my... really, really try hard to stay away from that stuff. Like, we have to be fighting really, really hard over something to even get there. Like, that is not something you can just bring up, like, willy-nilly. Yeah, and so the thing is, is like, one of the things my therapist brought up is like the idea that one of the things that's really good about our relationship, mine and Xena's, is that there's this very ironclad foundation in which we know the other person isn't going to go. ZZ is literally my longest running relationship. It's actually what makes this new situation so fascinating because I really do like this person a lot, but there's a lot of issues in the situation where, like... There's some things that have to kind of be negotiated or figured out because... I have that level of attachment to the person and they clearly have a strong attachment to me. And so now I have to figure out how to navigate that because I have to relearn everything I learned six years ago with this one where I have to learn again how not to stare at my messages, how not to wait for someone to respond to me, how not to just be like, you know, overly fucking clingy and whatnot. Um... And forget to, you know, do things like pay rent. I'm never living that down. Um, I, it's not even a bad thing. It's just funny to me. I just... It was just one of those really funny things. Uh, Poppy's housemate at the time. Um, am I allowed to mention who? or Just to mention housemate, that's fine. Oh, okay, yeah. Poppy's housemate at the time, like... Uh, found me in the kitchen. Poppy was doing something or... You know, in the other room, whatever. It was like... So, hey, uh, you've been spending a lot of time around Poppy lately, and I'm like, so I'm getting a lot of, uh, it sounds codependent uh, in chat. Yeah, like, it, it, it's it's scary because it sounds like a situation um, where there's not, like, a good way for somebody to decide to, you know, call it quits on the relationship, even if they want to and, and need to. Um Yeah. And then he goes, well, you know, Poppy's job is to uh, take the rent over. Uh, they just had to be, they just had to put it in like a mailbox at the center um, at the time. And they're like, can you make sure that happens? I've asked her. She's forgotten a couple times already. And uh, I really don't want that to be late. I'm like, OK. <laughs> so sure enough, I made sure that we took a walk and uh, dropped off the rent and it worked. Uh, but it was just one of those really funny moments where like, we were still kind of figuring out how to connect with each other, uh, Poppy and I, and like kind of what our relationship looked like. And I don't even think we have the borderline diagnosis at that point. You're going to want to turn your laptop on um, a little bit. Oh, yeah. No, no I don't no, need absolutely. to. Connect it in. Oh, that's right. Never mind. Yeah. You don't need to do shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, sorry. So it's just one of those cute moments uh, in my mind because it is just indicative of the no, I'm folk of like Poppy's brain being like, I am focused on this person. This person, this person, just Monica, just Monica. It, oh, it is. Just oh Monica. no, just that, that, that's really good. That's a really good fucking point. <laughs> oh yeah, no, sucks. as much as the situation does have some. Okay, so for those of you who don't get that reference, God, this is a doozy. And I mean, like, I guess they're assuming that everybody in their chat has played this game. I'm not gonna make that assumption, right? This is a Doki Doki Literature Club reference. Doki Doki Literature Club, if you don't know, is a dating simulation slash analog horror slash ARG. It's hard to describe. But the basic premise is that, you know, like, so a dating simulator, right? Um, there's the player that, that, you know, is is written as male. Like, so when you play it, you know, you get referred to by 
uh, he, him pronouns because the, the character that you're, you're playing is, is male, right? And then there are, uh, you're in school with, um, and then there's um, three, um, uh, you know, so so you you join a literature club, an after school club, like, you know, Japanese, like after school club. It's the literature club. It's the Doki Doki literature club. Right. And there are um, four people uh, in that club. Plus you um, the th there's three characters that your character can can attempt to date. And then there's one character that's the president of the club. You're not, you know, that's not, it's not written into the game that you can date uh, the president of the club, right? Um, but uh, it's a really strange game. Oh my God. It's so, it's so weird. Like, like some of you know what I'm talking about, right? Some of you have played this, uh, I'm guessing. Uh, the, the whole idea though, is that um, in the game, like, Monica is like self-aware of being in the game and uh Monica wants to date you and and like the fact that you've got like you can choose any of the three other characters uh is very inconvenient to Monica so you go through the game you choose one character to be with something like tragic happens to the other character or to one of the other characters and then you play the game again except now that character doesn't exist and then you play it again, and now another character doesn't exist. And you play it again until eventually you are trapped in a private reality with Monica, with the president of the Doki Doki Literature Club. And uh, you, you really don't have any choice. It's just Monica. That's uh, that, that's what they're talking about. That's that's what they're that's what they're referring to. Yeah, we're talking about Doki Doki uh, Literature Club. I thought you thought I was talking about school days. Wait, is that a thing? Can we play? I have played it once. It's super cursed. It, it is a super cursed, super disturbing. There's like now two games. I think there's like, uh, there, there's like a, there, there's like a part two or something like that to it now. Uh, maybe even a part three. Like they've, it was a really popular, um, game, especially for that genre. Anyway, it's a scary, it's a scary, it's a scary fucking game. It's a very, very scary uh, game. Sucky parts to it. I, I do really genuinely care for this person, and like, the last couple days have been really solid, and I guess the thing is you have to understand is like, there's a whole bunch of moving parts here where I have to kind of relearn how to be in relationship because I've never had two FPs before. I did serial monogamy for years. I only started really doing poly again with Xena, and no one else has hit the FP button. Right? So there's a little bit of like a how do I even navigate this? Because not only do I have oh, yeah, God, now I remember you, you actually have to. Okay, so like the, the the only way to beat the game, like right, so so the game has files, and the only way to beat the game, there there's character files, right? And not only does like do bad things happen to these other characters, Monica deletes the other character files because Monica's like self aware, right? She's she's a video game character, but she's supposedly like self. She's aware that she's in a video game. Right. So she's deleting all the other characters and then she's like alone with you. And the only way to get out of that situation where you're stuck with Monica is to go find the Monica character file and literally delete it off of your hard drive. That's 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 how you win. Like it's not not, not in game. I'm talking about the file. I'm talking about the file on your computer. Right. Monica dot CHR delete. That's how you win the game. All right, it's it's super spooky. It's super freaking spooky. I have to navigate my interactions with both of them, but I also have to then be aware of their interactions because, spoiler, if I am put in a position between the two of them where I have to make really hard decisions, I want to die in roadblocks. Because the problem is, is that I, there's a, there's a- Okay. Oh. It's not a bad thing that you don't play Roblox. This is like war games. The only way to win is not to play. So, yes, that that is what's going on. Lots of mental illness, lots of crazy shit this year. Lost, estranged of child, gained a whole bunch of new kids. Uh, little queer kids running around. They're great. Love them. Mm -hmm. um, I want to share this real quick before we leave this. I'm, I might make this. I'm not sure what that means. It sounds like malware. Yeah, Monica is malware. God damn.
Mon Monica scares me, honestly. This segment, I might not. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But um, I want to share this just so you guys get a real clear picture of BPD because I think it's really important. I've shared this with a lot of people, and it does feel like the best approximation. How hard do you find therapy when you're uh, yourself? You do psych work. Uh, my therapist is one of the heads of a counseling department of one of the universities. What if you delete her and read the other characters? I don't know. You mean delete like Monica, like before uh, the other characters are uh, disappeared? She is a fucking wizard. An incredible clinician, incredibly insightful, incredibly knowledgeable, not only in psychology, but also um, spiritual matters, things like that. She gives me a fucking run for my money. I fucking love it. So... I, I, you find someone better than you. That's my answer. Um, and then points you to people that sell you really good uh, psilocybin tea. Um, anyway, want to share this real quick and then we actually have to get to some shit because probably people want to go to bed at some point. Borderline personality disorder. This disorder is difficult. Every day is a battle in your head, fighting your emotions, reminding yourself that you are good enough and your friends don't hate you. One wrong word, one look, Anything that feels like rejection is rejection. Then you obsess about it. You pick things apart. It is a war zone in your own mind. Trying to control everything in your head is painstaking, exhausting. You want to be alone, but you don't want to be lonely. When you do make a connection, you attach yourself. You obsess because that is what you do. No calls, no messages, no dates equals rejection. It doesn't matter the reason. You become overbearing, annoying, bad enough that you push people away, then you are alone. How many people are standing on the bridges that you burn? Some days it feels like you don't have a heart. Other days it feels like it's going to explode out of your chest. Some days suck. Some days are great, but you never know what each day holds. You never know who you will be in the morning. Always exhausted, but never able to sleep. There is no end. This disorder is a prison and learning to live with it is the only way to survive it. Is that even yeah. the like right one? This here's been shit. <laughs> this one, right? FYI. Um some good things have happened. The channel's grown. There's been some really cool parts of my relationship was easy. There's been exploring other relationships and getting to know myself better through them and getting better about how I relate to people. There we go. Dating more people means you kind of figure out what things to look out for. But yeah, it's been rough. So that's the updates. Um unless there's anything you want to jump in there. I think I we covered everything. Um, I don't really have time for updates because it's a bit after 11, love. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. Did I get excited? Yes. I'm sorry. Bleak and puffy. I'm excited. Hi. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Well, what else are we gonna do? Like, we all- we got Beyond Safe Words already here, so. Okay. I just don't want to make- I just- Sorry. Oh. I got overly excited. You know you did. It's- Okay. Are you sure? Okay, we'll stream again and then we'll do more updates and I'm I'm sorry I got excited. Okay. Okay. Also, also, also being on the side of BPD can be really, really fun. Um <laughs> I like yes, it's really fucking hard, but also like Poppy is incredibly loyal and is very excitable and lots of fun and like yeah, there's a lot of intense emotions, but also I'm down for that. Uh, intense emotions also come with intense happiness and a lot of, like, really fun, squee, happy moments. So, like, you know, it's not all doom and gloom, but it does take a lot of work to get there. Yeah, I mean, that is the one thing that I do really appreciate about the people in my life, and I'll just say this as, like, a side note, because ZZ said this about me, uh, my partner Haley said this about me, our friend Gay Fesh has said this about me. The thing that- the two things- Gayfesh, no longer a friend. Gayfesh is one of the first people to uh, call this shit out, right? This is, uh, this is a clip from October. I think it was uh, posted just to give a little insight. Uh, it's apparently got deleted, right? But um, to give give insight on um, like what Poppy's version of, of polyamory is is like, which is the subject of the first um that everybody who really knows me knows is that i care a tremendous amount and i'm incredibly loyal sometimes to a fault um 
So yeah, um, there are some things about BPD that are great, but it is hard. Um. Okay, well, let's, uh, on that note, um, right? So that's the October stream about personal, uh, drama, um, Uh, proof of Xena and Poppy emotional uh, proof of Xena and Poppy's emotional abuse of um okay, let's see. There's a massive recall now being issued for as many as 3.3 million cars across the country. Stop! All over safety what is that concerns. doing? The National no! Highway Traffic Safety Administration announced the recall just last week and includes at least 1.7 million. Why? I don't know what that service is. It's like it's like a YouTube like service and for some reason it it uh yeah, just there we go. Um anyway, that's okay. God. See, there's so much here to get through. All right, Poppy and Zena's emotional abuse of Noah Flake uh leading up to the trip. Here we go. It needs a little doki. Do Everything needs a little doki doki tonight, I guess. Um I think I have Doki Doki, actually. I do have the game. I have played through this on stream, so I probably... Yeah, I, mu I must have it. Um, It's a lot to get through. That game is a lot to get through, by the way. Every time I do it, I feel like I have to voice act. Um, Leading up to the trip and how they coerced and abused her into going on the trip even after she expressed not being interested in continuing the relationship. So this is the deal with uh, Noah... And uh, Poppy, they're in a relationship. It's an online, uh, at a distance relationship. Noah wants out of it. Poppy demands a chance to make the relationship work and do it through uh, showing up to Noah's city and renting a hotel room. Um, despite the fact that at this point, Noah wants out of the relationship. Okay, so... Uh, now hidden clip from their stream in October about how poly poppy emery works. Sorry, not poly emery. It's a uh, poppy's uh, version nightmare version of poly emery. Uh, it's uh, half an hour. But if you want to see what they say to in public, it's pretty revealing. OK, I mean, like, I, gu I guess so. Maybe we'll see. We'll understand the context more afterwards. OK, uh, you know, philosophically, I love spiders. They're wonderful creatures and not dangerous to humans, can be cute pets. However, there's a deep fear rooted in my marrow of my bones, and I want to flee the country when I see a big one in person. No says, um, I will hold them and carry them away from you. For you, yeah. Um, this person says, Hehe, <laughs> oddly, uh, the only time I'm fine with them is when someone else is terrified of them because uh one of us has been has to be useful uh god knows i won't have to no flake i love spiders um amy oh i know uh you weren't the reason that for this post but you did come to mind um noah says i always come to mind but good to know uh amy oh i know i'm not sure why this uh interaction is here right this is like between two Oh, here's where... Okay, this is... Oh, no! Oh, no, I see what's going on. I see what's going on. All right, so they're, like, flirting. Like, or, or maybe maybe together. Maybe this is another... This is a metamor of uh, um, poppies, like a, a paramour of, of Noah's. Some, somebody uh, that Noah's in a relationship with that... Anyway, I, I think that's the context. Um, I always come to mind, but good to know. Um, you do come to mind quite a lot. So, you know, cute little moment uh, between two people. Not sure what the context is, but here comes Poppy with, huh? And then Amy, oh, like, I think of her a lot. Uh, Poppy, no, I shouldn't interact with you. That's a weird thing to post. Because, um, I mean, like, I don't know. Like, if you shouldn't interact, you know, don't? Maybe? I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. What's going on here? Uh... Love getting a panic attack by running into a metamor. That's what happened. That's what. Okay, I called it. I called it. That's what it is. So, uh, oh my God! Quote retweeted, Amy and you know, like understand. This is po Poppy Diabolique is the content creator, right? This isn't like a, as far as I can tell, this isn't like a personal private account or anything like that. This is you know, 
the uh, the account for uh for, for Poppy uh of Poppy and Xena. Um Puppy retweets herself saying, I have a very real trauma around interactions with metamors. Today uh, did not make that feel better. I worked my ass off to fix the situation and the other partner acts like a child. Bridge burned. Uh, Poppy posting a... Is that a... Uh, it's a uh, oh my god, what's this called? It's in The Lion King. What are these little... What are they they called? They're um uh chat, somebody help me here. Amy Noah's partner, thank you, uh Blitzkrieg. Thank you for clarifying. What is this? This is a um uh um jackal. Wait, no, is it a jackal? Is that the right name for it? Chat, help me identify this animal. Hyena. Oh my god. Why did I think it's Jackal? Yeah, it's a hyena. Okay, I couldn't remember what it was. <laughs> Death Puppies. Hyena. Okay, it's a hyena. Thank you. Um, I was gonna sing the Zaboomafu song. Anyway, um, real trauma interaction with my metaphors today did not make it better. I worked my ass. Oh, so bridge burned. Okay. Uh, going forward, due to said trauma, I think I am going to be very hesitant to interact with or know very much about my partner's partners. I also do not want to hear about past sexual situations uh, beyond safety behavior. These are my boundaries. These are hard boundaries, sorry. Additional screenshot, Poppy's odd treatment of Sage's suicidal depressive episodes may, uh, may is a reference to Sage's suicidal attempt. Um, I think I was right in May. Okay, so that's what happened in May, right? Uh, Poppy, love, please stop. This shit isn't cool. Um, wow. Um. Okay, so, uh. This is, oh my gosh. Um. Penny is. What's the right term for it, chat? Uh, Penny is a. Alter? Is that the right term? Uh, of poppies? Watching my headmate try to sabotage her relationship is fucking painful. She knows better. I know she knows better. She knows she knows better. But it is a compulsion. She's trying to prove her partner doesn't love her. Uh, please don't fall for it, little moth. Noah says, I would never fall for it. No worries, pretty shark. Um, Penny says, good moth. I miss you. Please reach out if you need help with Poppy. We all love you. Alter or headmate. Thank you. That's a that's the term I was looking for. Headmate. Um, alter is alter. Alter is OK, too. Yeah. Um. Okay, so speaking of uh, Lily Orchard, did Lily Orchard like She-Ra and the Princesses of Powers? I I've actually seen this one. I don't I don't want watch a lot, but I did end up uh, seeing this whole thing. Oh my God, Katra! That's the name of the character, Katra. Um, am I wrong that I'm a little bit worried with the person who identifies as Katra? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not trying to be judgmental here. Um, when I talk, just the character, right? Um, when I talk about intrusive thoughts, it feels like people wonder what is so bad about seeing two people effing. I imagine a closed eye, a mini fever dream with a person you love banging someone you who you do not recognize but are primordially scared of. Me and my intrusive thoughts of my partner getting effed and not wanting me anymore. 
yeah like Katra's like the the enemy through most of it uh, eventually i think Katra does come around and uh join uh team uh shira or i'm trying to remember it's been a while since i saw this uh sage alexis which, who i guess is another um partner of poppies um I hate having to mute people I care about because they're post-trigger. Every insecurity and fear I have makes coming here so much less enjoyable and I feel like an a-hole for not being- I can say asshole. Uh, asshole for not being able to just be happy for them and uh, feel feeling resentment instead. Maybe the end result is I'm gonna have to just set a hard boundary on certain interactions that they- okay so um so Poppy says, no, you have BPD. I have a partner muted right now. Uh, so I can't see effing vacation pics. I get it. Uh, doesn't make me feel like less of an asshole. Uh, same. Literally, I'm beating myself up because I can't look at Noah's timeline without being it being digital self-harm. Uh, do what you need to do. You are not a f effing asshole or weak. You are a person with B, P, fucking D. And that I want to survive, god damn it. I uh, had to meet with my partner in DMs for an hour. I'm not great uh, in a great headspace. I just found out uh, that a friend uh, effing betrayed me and every message just kept, uh, uh, he was up bringing up intrusive thoughts of either what she's doing more uh, of her partner, of the her other partner sitting over her shoulder, uh, but, uh, I think ideations now uh, love that for me the desire to disappear uh, because I had to make a boundary temporarily and uh, silently because voicing it out loud would have been too painful I rarely get to be the fun partner I'm too serious too passionate too sensitive it sucks uh, because too many of my conversations turn into serious BPD uh, because BPD gets triggered Back at it again. Remember, try not to be clingy. Remember that she is coming back and is in love with you. You trust her. She is willing to work with you. See, now, here's what I'm thinking. On one hand, like, you know, this is somebody using Twitter as a digital diary. It's uh, not how I use Twitter, but, you know, teach their own whatever. Right. But also the other the other way that this has to be seen as is as something. So even if if um, Poppy has like no um temporarily blocked right um ostensibly no is seeing this so it kind of seems overall a little bit manipulative like right this is being posted publicly this is not a dm but it's it seems to be directed maybe at i i, I don't know uh, one of the things that makes BPD so hard is the self-loathing. I hate the feeling this way. I hate that I question my partner's motive and sneak pick uh, every effing thing can uh, feel rejection at the drop of a hat. I can only, uh, all I can uh, co ha can hope is that my partners love me and don't hate me. It's not really my thing, but good morning to everyone who celebrates it. To celebrates morning, I guess. Um, spicy, uh, this should stay, this should, this should say mute. Uh, Poppy had to mute her partner uh, because, okay, so correcting something to mute. Mute her partner because she didn't want to go into a black split. Damn, damn it, proofread. Oh, I had to mute my partner, not meet my partner. Okay, I see. I'm thankful for my pretty little moth, Noah. I don't even know where to begin. I love you so much. This has uh, been the definition of a whirlwind romance. Despite my mental illness, you have hung in there and supported me in every possible way. Um, I get the feeling that this isn't like, you know, th this is like a, a, a relationship that is, you know, online and, and, and fairly new. And yet you sort of don't get that through how Poppy's describing it. I'm deeply thankful to Xena, as opposed to Xena, who, you know, is like a long-term uh, relationship of uh, a long-term IRL um, relationship of, of Poppy's. 
They are my best friend and one of the most important people in my life. I don't think I would be alive right now without them. Uh, it's their love and inside and wisdom that insight uh, that keeps me stable. I love you, bunny. Uh, I am thankful for every for my pretty moth, Noah. I don't even know where to begin. I love you so much. Uh, this has been the definition of whirlwind romance. Okay, so thankful for another partner. If even just occasionally heart messages means a lot. You cheer me up. Okay, so this is posted. Um, like on, you know, this is from an NSFW um, account, and and is posted, I guess, publicly. Although I don't know, they could be behind, like they could be, like it's posted on Twitter, right? Is is what I'm trying to get at. This isn't like these aren't DMs. They sound like DMs. Sound very personal. Sound very directed. But um, no, they're um, you know public DMs at. The different partners. Um, thankful for my partner Sage Alexis. I know uh, we're in a weird place right now. We've had to endure the abuses of so many people. People we thought were friends. No matter how we shift, I want to you in my life. Okay, God, she like. I'm a little uncomfortable with like how in like like somebody's like I don't know like I. Uh, honestly, I feel like if somebody was posting like this and and it it was on my feed, I'd have to mute them because it's it's like I, I don't really I wouldn't be comfortable being let into like this kind of personal stuff um, for my friends. I'm not sure like how much, you know, reach this account has or, or what the deal is, but. Um, I have never been so angry. The data doesn't line up. If someone wanted to get a hold of Poppy, they have thousands of ways. This suggests they didn't try. If the timeline doesn't match up, uh, they are either wrong or lying. Why does everyone benefit get the benefit of the doubt but us? I will be your opponent. Um, calm down, Sharko. Uh, this is Poppy uh, replying to her uh, headmate, Penny. Like we are all I, I think what this is, I think the reason this is posted is to give you a sense of what this looked like, maybe from Noah's end. We are all mad, but it will be OK. I have faith in her. Noah Flake will hear us. It'll just take time. Stop posting shit on Twitter. I mean. And then you don't say. So last night during my date, one of my headmates decided to use the opportunity to go off instead of visiting our partner, uh, which completely tired everyone out and fucked up the mood. I am so angry. I mean, this is, yeah. Four days, one hour, 36 minutes until Friday when I leave with ZZ to go see No Flake for Christmas. Me looking at her. And I'm not able to entirely. She's tagging her too. It's called X now. No, it's called Twitter. It's always Twitter. Um, There is no X. I'm I'm just like uncomfortable counting down the hours, days and minutes. Like honestly, I would be uncomfortable getting DMs like this, let alone like having somebody like at me and I mean that's just me, right? I don't want to speak for other people. Okay, so yeah, we're getting a lot of the uh, no, okay, that's a that's a that's a hand. That's a hand. Okay, okay. God damn, like I didn't even think about like the possibility of NSFW material uh, in this uh, before the trip. Uh, so so here's what we're trying to. Oh my god.
All right, chat. It's a uh, video time. So um, this is a video called, so we've been gone uh, for a minute, toxic situations, mental illness, and harassment. It's an ARG. Okay, do you see what I'm saying, chat? What the hell? Oh my God, it's on the wrong thing. Look, I want you to see this. This is important that you understand what I'm... This is important for you to understand why this creeps me out. Okay, check this out. We are alive. We do exist. True. We are also very gay. Quite a while. And there's probably a lot of people asking questions as to why, why was the channel content slowed down so far and what was going on with us at the time because we were being very vague on social media. And so to talk about that, I have to talk about a couple concepts. One of the things I need to bring up is that uh, I am uh, Polly, as is Easy. Yes. And while Zizi doesn't pursue a, 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 you know, a large number of partners, they prefer to hang out and educate and take care of baboos and do that. It's, do that fun stuff. The song is giving you psychic damage. Yeah, look, it, it is, it is, but it's like, it's somehow, it's somehow perfect. Like the fact that they mentioned Doki Doki Literature Club, I feel like this is like a, I feel like this is an ARG and that's like one of the clues. And like, I don't, I don't know, chat. Like, I, I feel like I'm going to have to like start, like, wh what do you do? Like there's, there's weird shit in uh Doki Doki Literature Club. Like there's files that you can take and you if you manipulate them the right way you turn them into an image the image like shows you something that's like a clue for the game like it's like it's like complicated shit do you know what i'm saying about like arg like this is an arg stuff um i tend to date uh, a decent number of people and um i have four partners and one or two playmates one because of one of the people i'm already playing with and another one wants to be a maid to my house well certain things are happening moving on anyway um the point being is is that because of that usually i'm able to handle this stuff pretty okay because my borderline definitely gets triggered there's definitely difficulties with it but for the most part i'm able to handle it and deal with it the only person that's not true with was up until now was uh, up until the last four months was easy because easy is an fp for those who don't know uh in borderline personality disorder which i am diagnosed with there is a concept called fp and that refers to favored, favored person. person and what this is the idea is is that this there's a person who for whatever reason you know matches your psychology matches your your way of thinking your your na internal narratives and what ends up inevitably happening is you build a very, very quick connection with this person. Now, sometimes this can be a relative. Sometimes it can be a friend. But where it gets really intense is when it is someone that you love, someone that you are romantically interested in. Then it becomes a thing. It's borderline. We have abandonment, extreme mood swings, unstable relationship, impulsive, self-destructive tendencies, unstable self-image, self-harm, paranoid association, chronic feelings of emptiness. One of the things that happened about four months ago, five months ago, is I started talking to a girl that I've had a crush on for about a year. And this girl was somebody that I occasionally checked in on and just thought she was beautiful. She was a trans girl and I thought she was absolutely radiant and... I literally was like, oh, I, I'm just not going to shoot my shot because that I'm going to be very disappointed because a lot of very popular girls on Twitter have disappointed me for various reasons, either because they are incredibly weird about borderline or for very, various reasons just don't seem to want to engage or whatnot. And so what happened is, is that I took my chance right around when I got bottom surgery a little bit before, which was back in August. And around September 4th, I had been asking back and forth, hey, you know, I want to date, date you. I really think you're beautiful. I think you're wonderful. I want to get to know you more. I know you have X number of other partners. I'm fine with that. But I really want to be with you. And so this person went to their other partners and proceeded to, you know, talk to them, see what they, you know, how they felt. They were fine. Go through that th that polycules protocols. Yeah, and long story short, well, not, not a polycules. I think the other people are Basically, long story short, is group of poly people. Yeah, yeah, poly network, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but the point being is, is that what inevitably ended up happening is they decided it was fine. I got to start dating the girl I had a crush on for over a year, and it was very, very nice. And there have been some missteps because this person became an FP. Now, with most borderline people, you get one. But there are cases in which some people will get two. And so feelings of disconnection from either Zena or this other person will cause me to get into panic attacks. Things like that. It, it is not fun. 
And because of some of the early missteps in the relationship, such as, you know, a boundary being missed, not intentionally, just being missed, going into a lot of detail about previous sexual experiences, which is something that's a trigger for me. You know, bringing up like, you have too much information about partners, our interactions can be really rough. Bringing up, you know, desire, you know, desires that come up as a BPD, like there's a tendency to overly fantasize about the future. Bringing that to the person, the other, the other person sort of doesn't interact with it great. Or rebuffs in some format. Yeah, and so the problem is, is like, none of these are on her. These are things that most people would never even think of. Well, and refresher for borderline too. Borderline really, really does have to do with abandonment. That is a really big core thing about it. And that can be real or perceived. Both count and both will bring up very, very extreme emotions about that. You know, it's pretty well known that like a lot of times with like mood and emotion, a lot of borderline people, people or people with borderline feel that very intensely. So like if the max of, you know, that the general population might feel is like a 10, your person with borderline might be at, like an 11. And that's just all the time. Like, there's a lot of really big intense emotion, which, you know, we can kind of see demonstrated throughout like the picture that Poppy shared. And long story short is that I had never had this situation happen before. I have never had another partner who became an FP. So having two FPs suddenly threw me for a loop because all of the personal work that I've done over the last 15 years didn't feel as effective. And again, none of this was CZ's fault. None of this was anyone else's fault. It just kind of what was. One of the major reasons why we've been away is that over the last two months, starting in November, my partner went to the other side of the country to visit another partner, one who, due to a mistake done early on, had been coded in my brain as unsafe, which, again, I don't believe that's actually true, but that's that's the way my brain coded it. The last two months have been hell. A lot of chaos. Not because of anyone's fault, but because dealing with two FPs who may get into conflict, which then causes me to feel torn in half, and not to mention a bunch of other things, ended up bringing up some really, really difficult emotions. A lot of feelings of worthlessness, a lot of feelings of being unworthy, a lot of, I'll be honest, desire for self-harm and suicidal ideations. There was a couple times during this last couple months where it was there was a legitimate concern that I might harm myself. So much so that the two firearms we own were moved, were moved to a friend's house. And again, I don't put this on either of my partners. I don't put this on any of my friends. I, have had not, I haven't had to deal with a new FP, a new favorite, favorite person, in seven years, six or seven years since I started with CZ. And I ended up being in a really, really rough situation where, you know, the girl of my, you know, the girl of my dreams, essentially, I was afraid that I would lose her at any moment, and especially during this trip. You know, I talked about this on the channel before, but a lot of people here are new, so I'll just reiterate this. Is I have trauma around people dying. In 2004, my partner, uh, my wife, was riding a horse. She was an expert rider, had done dressage, dr dr I think that's the word. And what ended up happening was she was just riding slowly down the street, didn't have a helmet on because she, she didn't think she needed one. Again, they were just you know, walking the horse slowly on top of them. And a dog ran out of someone's property, scared the horse, knocked her down, hit her head, and she never woke up again. And then suffered brain death five days later, leaving me a widower and a, leaving me with a five or a four year old. I have very real trauma and memories around what I saw when I got to that road and saw what was all over it. And it was not great. I won't go into details. When I get paranoid about my relationships because of BPD, it doesn't just come up as a fear of, in some way, the person cheating on me or leaving me. Sometimes I'm just actively afraid they're going to fucking die. Well, your brain actually has data points to prove it. Yeah, data points to prove it and also like memories of what a loved one dying looks like. It can almost, I think, be more, you know, just as difficult as the times where your brain's coming up with like fantasies. You're not, I don't want to say like, not like the good kind of fantasies, but like usually I think we say intrusive thoughts. You know, it is somewhat of a different game when you are dealing with a way that your brain has a way to kind of make fears come real mm -hmm. or feel as real as possible. Yeah. So one of the things that came up was that between this trip, which I want to be really clear my partner was amazing for. We ended up creating some relationship accommodations. There were regular calls, which unfortunately led to some fights with ZZ, but that happens. What ended up happening is, what I'm trying to convey here is not, not looking for necessarily sympathy for my wife. I mean, this was a long time ago. We're literally, next like next year, it'll be 20 years. So I'm, like, I, when I say that I, I'm not as affected by that as I once was, I mean it. The issue I have is, is that now this stuff comes into my current relationships, especially with FPs. And so this week that I went through was hell, but my partner stayed with me and worked with me and ZZ when they were, you know, when they were able to, were supportive and we got through it. But over the last two months, this prompted some other things to happen. One of my partner's partners was supposed to block me after the whole kerfuffle at the beginning of the relationship. It was decided just to keep me separate from the other ones because I just didn't feel safe with them. And so I said, just block me, I'll block you. You know, we're just going to be mutually blocked. We can try to fix it later. Well, in BPD is very, very good at the impulsive stuff and, you know, some of the other different ways that, like, comparing yourself to others can come up with BPD. In fact, going on to other people's social media, looking at their pictures, things like that can easily start turning into digital self-harm. And so I asked for all these people to block me because I wanted the other number of partners to not have access to me. And... Well, and for you to not have a bad moment either and go yeah. searching their stuff. Well, what happened was, is one of the people in question never blocked me and lied about it. And I ended up just going with it because I didn't want to cause another fight with my, my other FP. And so this created an unfortunate problem where I was still seeing this and then when I was in a really bad moment at night, I ended up continually going to this person's stuff, looking at stuff where they were interacting with my partner, seeing them be romantically interactive, getting really triggered, yada, yada, yada. It was not fun. I ended up making the ideations worse. Because I know of this, the, the story, the kerfuffle that created this whole thing, it ended up being a, a trigger for me and bringing up intrusive thoughts. The reason why I don't like to hear about my partner's previous sexual exploits, especially with current partners, is that I will start seeing them graphically, visually in my head. They are intrusive thoughts. They are not sexy. They are not fun. They are painful. And I feel like I'm dying. To put this in perspective, my point is, is that I want to give you the framework of kind of what's going on. Now, long story short, is I'm doing much better now. I've been back in therapy, but dealing with uh, my, my therapist, who is a uh, one of the, the heads of one of the counseling programs, I um, mean, she's amazing. She's a wizard. ZZ's been coming to sessions with me, which is really nice. Things have been slowly but surely getting better with my other partner. Slowly but surely making our way to being a little bit more functional and dealing with some things. Like, for example, discussions of future stuff, because we are all adults here and that stuff's important. And right now, the partner in question is struggling with a very hard decision, which I do not envy. Basically deciding, does she go to one partner and potentially lose this relationship because it fades off because me being away from that piece is not great? Or does she, you know, eventually somewhere in a year or two online choose to be with me and Xena in some format, in some format, you know, with the potential of that other relationship fading off? I don't know why that just wasn't. I bring this up because I love this person deeply. She's amazing. She is absolutely gorgeous. I have not been this profoundly in love in, uh, uh, since this one, <laughs> which has brought some headache up because most of the time my other partners don't have that, don't occupy my brain 24 seven, where I don't get stuck on a problem because I'm trying to grind it out and figure out how to fix it. So I wanted to give this this, this thing because we're going to talk about other stuff, but I want to be really clear that like beyond the stuff that was going on with me, there's other stuff with CCC, you can talk about that for them.
incredibly uncomfortable going through this. Okay. Um, like I was like, let me put on the video. That'll be better. Okay. So, uh, that's fucking, fucking lame. Apparently when we were on stream, I, so that's speaking about DMS after stream. All right. So they went on stream, they talked about the situation and being uncomfortable. And when we were on stream and I was vaguely talking about how uh, happy I was with my new relationship as well as the mental illness I've been dealing with. That's the other thing is like to see this shit go on up on YouTube, on your partner's YouTube, like discussing problems that you are currently navigating with them in the relationship. Like I, I, I can't imagine what this has got to be like for Noah. Apparently Sage saw this and got super triggered and started having ideations, so we had to check in uh, to see if she is safe, but she is apparently uh, my, she is apparently my ex Molina, a friend of ours told them uh, before anyone else knew uh, that Sage was safe. Uh, we have no idea how she got that information for any of us. Weird. Yeah, it irritates me. Uh, I keep things vague on stream but Molina is harping saying that I am ignoring Sage or you and I caused this which I did not I have no idea no worries just more nonsense focus on the positive get uh to snuggle you soon snuggles you closely sorry about sorry you are busy darling I oh god so do you see this like snuggles you closely right no response sorry you are busy Anyway, anyway, this is like uh, I'm feeling the pressure. I'm, I'm. I <laughs> uh, I have this problem chat where um. Like, I have a lot of empathy, and that sounds good because it's it's generally good to know what other people are feeling, and to be in touch with that. And you know, you don't like. There's obviously problems with having too little empathy, but. My empathy is the kind of empathy where I start feeling what I imagine the other person would be feeling. And at this moment, feeling what Noah Flake, you know, what I imagine, you know, I'm, I'm not uh, her, she's not me, but what I, what, what I imagine feeling, you know, like putting myself in that place, it's, it's just really uncomfortable. It's really scary. I do have plans in the morning, but I don't think uh, it will last all morning. I should be able to talk up 12. Uh, sounds good. I then I will send you good mornings and random stuff. Or respond if you're able. Talking at noon sounds nice. Okay, love. Uh, thank you for being clear. Means a lot to me. Emojis. I appreciate uh the time you give to me, love. Um, I hope your plans are fun and will uh send love and memes. Gosh, I love you so much. Uh, Nini, I love you too. Okay. Uh, hi mom. I can't sleep. I love you. Love you too, kiddo. Hugs, uh, I know you are busy. I just had to come up and thoughts come up and I got scared. Hugs you tightly. Buries face in your neck. Rubs your back. I'm here to love. Okay, so this is like role play. The the italics are like role play. play you know what I mean? It's like um, asterisk um, is what makes that do the italics thing. Um, I get scared because I thought about our trip going bad and not what you're not wanting to be with us. I know we can't talk about stuff, but I feel like I am going to uh, mess up and ruin things. You'll be perfectly fine. I'm excited to see you. I know, uh, but so much of, is riding on these trips. Uh, what if you hate us? What if uh, body sucks at adult stuff? What if Penny says something dumb? I don't hate you, though. Uh, you know that if Penny says something dumb, I'll boop her in the nose. And the body stuff isn't a big deal to me. Just uh, want to snuggle. Any what anyone can snuggle. Uh, bet you're great snugglers. I'm a great snuggler. See, perfect. Okay, so I just don't want to mess things up because then if I do, then Penny and Poppy will be mad. Um, wait, okay, so is this like, a, a, like an altar other than Poppy or Penny talking at this point? 
Well, what if Peppermint freaks out? Or what if ZZ gets all PMDD? I just don't want it to ruin uh because want it to ruin this because you're never gonna want to see us. Oh my god. Okay, so there oh my god. There is 200 pages of this shit, chat. There are 200 pages that I cannot possibly even Okay, so there's like, before the trip, between uh, 12, 20th of December and the 29th of December, I can't do this. I cannot fucking do this. I mean, I've got a sense of, I guess, what the person that put this together is trying to express, which is, like, how claustrophobic uh, No likely felt in this situation. I'm kind of looking for the I fucking hate Twitter. I fucking hate Twitter. No, okay, like, I'm so worried about, like, the possibility of NSFW, like, stuff. Uh, like, I'm trying to just, if I see art, I'm going to scroll past it, right? Because I don't want to... No, oh my god, what the fuck? So the, the 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 part that's pertinent is about the trip about you know the 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 fact that Noah expresses um a desire to leave the relationship before the trip happens obviously I think that Poppy and and Zena had booked the hotel and so then you know based on a lot of stuff Poppy starts you know putting pressure on Noah um, to at least just try to make things work, at least, you know, show up to the, okay, um, nine to five, uh, is eight hours, 15 hours of persistent emotional turmoil with a few hours of sleep in between financial abuse, guilt tripping, relentless harassment, confirmation of suicidal threats. If no, like, didn't pick Poppy over Amy, a person who has had minimal contact with Poppy, uh, and made attempts to be amicable with her. Notice that how Noah Flake becomes more distant and short of speech. The therapist would recognize Noah becoming more and more uncomfortable, unenthusiastic, more and more disassociated. The responsible thing to do is step away and allow space for recovery. Poppy is aware that Noah uh, Flake is dissociating heavily in these conversations. Noah Flake uh, tells her directly, Poppy keeps pushing. Yeah, I feel like, like, chat, if you don't mind, I'm more comfortable reading the synopsises in the in-between parts rather than the, rather than the DMs. But I think we're close to the, the, the crucial 
thing here, right? This is the relationship. Um, this is the, um, this is the person that Poppy called a rapist, that, that Poppy, you know, accused this person of essaying her, um, retroactively, not, you know, like, after um noah had had broken up with poppy so the the controversy the the back and forth between these two you know sides of things are you know did um did poppy push noah into into you know being in the relationship longer um you know showing up to the hotel and and you know being intimate or um you know it, poppy's claim is that like poppy's claim is that noah like you know tricked her like like essentially um intended to have um to be intimate with her and then to break up with her and that like the stipulation that poppy made was like you know that she only wanted to be intimate which you know if in any way that if um there there was a, a guarantee of the relationship continuing Okay, so the emotes here are to denote like who is fronting, right? So this is a, a you know, uh, like like w with people who have um, DID or I think the other one is OSDD, um, you know, the our our, our systems essentially um, the personality that's fronting that that is like you know, the person that's, like, speaking, right, within the system. Does this make sense? The icons identify the altar. Yeah, I'm just trying. So the penny obviously identifies penny. Um, I don't know what this one is. It's like a... Like a beetle or something. Okay, so here's an instance uh, where Noah says this. It's a date morning with Sora. Uh, Poppy says, oh, um, Noah says, was that bad? I should have asked uh, for the green light, right? So was it bad? No. Uh, should you have asked for the green light? Probably because I just woke up. Should I probably just go away? Yes. Pro tip. Normally, uh, you'll say what plan, what the plans are unless it's with a partner, in which case you'll just say plans. Okay, so this is what this is the accommodation that Poppy's asking for. Essentially, uh, they're you know they're poly, they're they're with um other people, they're they're in other relationships as well. But Poppy does not want to hear anything about um it, Poppy's you know sort of demanding constant contact with Noah, but doesn't want to hear about anything involving Noah's other partners. Didn't want to upset you with the partner stuff. I mean, I am upset now, but that's besides the point. My only request is that this weekend that you be mindful. So the weekend, they're they're the trip. The um, I really didn't like uh when you were on the date and you were super distracted. But yeah, next time, just ask for the green light and uh tell me about it. See, there's it's like Poppy's asking for two things that are sort of mutually exclusive right you weren't distracted when you were on that date so in other words you're not like 
texting back enough. You're not keeping in constant contact. But even though you're on a date with like someone else, if you're if you're Noah, you're expected to keep in contact, but not mention anything about the other partner. It's it's kind of just like I don't know I don't know how to nav I don't know how anyone would navigate this. But yeah, next time just ask for the green light and tell me about it ahead of time instead of just dropping the bomb three minutes before it happens. I don't mind hearing uh what you're going on uh, out with Sora, but finding out when I just woke up is not my favorite, especially when this person uh who is like the main rival for what I want. Uh so if your plans aren't starting yet, uh my guess is that you won't be available at noon, so I guess uh, just let me know if you have any time before you go to bed. I haven't uh, really got to talk to you much saying for yesterday. I was just playing. Okay. Okay, so you won't be available at noon. Is that correct? I don't know yet. Okay, so then don't tell me at noon next time. Wow. The whole point is to have a concrete time, not just a random thrown out, random time thrown out. I really appreciate you try. This is impossible. I don't know how anyone would do this, right? Really appreciate you trying to do uh, the thing last night. But if you don't uh, understand why a concrete time matters, it makes things really difficult. What? You told me noon, which I took as a concrete time. I barely got to talk to you this week because you're so busy wouldn't uh won't be able to talk much tonight because i'm going to be packing i feel a bit frustrated again there was no no ask for the green light so i just kind of got dumped that got that dumped on me got the mention of the other partner before popping into the shower can you please give me a concrete time when you will be done or is that not possible it's not possible i said noon but there's a possibility it will be a little bit longer um Okay, then don't tell me at noon next time because it's a concrete time that is a hypothetical time, but it sounds like you're going to be longer, which means that if it goes longer, you're going to be uh, going to bed soon. If I don't play, if I don't play yesterday was the morning. Okay. Um, there, there are a lot of um, also. So, you know, I don't know how to navigate this, but in general um a lot of people don't like being texted with multiple things you know when they're not answering right it kind of it kind of comes off as as like desperate and it's i don't know there's it, there's a discourse to be had about that so people have different di communication styles and i i you know want to be like understanding of that but i also know that a lot of people uh, would feel, you know, like an overwhelming pressure from all these fucking, uh, all, all this like communication and, and that at some point it just becomes un uh, impossible to answer. I have spent the morning arguing with Poppy on your behalf. This is Penny talking, uh, and this happens. Not cool, moth. Please don't quote tweet the friend who lied repeatedly nearly got poppy hurt i still hold that this person has no reason to still be around and you sharing sexual material from that negligent wreck is gross i will be fronting the rest of the day and poppy deserves a genuine apology for this stuff because right now Pop pepper and i that's peppermint uh, are the reason this trip is happening uh you don't understand the requests around planning and have to give better notice and ask for a green light uh, nothing Amy related, uh, period. Uh, this is with an agreement. So this is, you know, Poppy or the, no, this is sorry. This is Penny insisting that, uh, you know, no, uh, other relationships are, are mentioned. So this is Noah quote treating quote tweeting amy uh poppy responds you know that when this loads you can see who the person is briefly oh yeah so even if you're blocked yes twitter does this i've seen i've seen this happen before when it loads you can kind of see the the tweet right um 
even if we have others mutually blocked. So yeah, Noah essentially was trying to uh, not, w was assuming that because like Amy is, is blocked or uh, blocks Poppy that, that this part wouldn't be seen. And it was, Poppy doesn't appreciate that. Uh, listen, this can be fixed, but I need help. Uh, can I call, please? Uh, no, it says no. Why, please? I am trying to fix this. Please don't shut me out. I am still coming tomorrow, please. Fixing what? The situation. There's barely anything here. Uh, that... That isn't true. We love her. It is true. Uh, Max, stop, please. This hurts. I know. I'm sorry. No, stop. So wait, the Ma Max is the... So the this beetle, I think it's a beetle um icon, it means Max is grunting. Um There's barely anything here that isn't true. We love her. Max, please stop, it hurts. No no stop. I'm I know, I'm sorry, no stop. I really wish I didn't uh need to do this either. Uh you missed a call from Oh shit. So this is like Noah's side of the uh of the Discord DMs. And uh, Poppy called and Noah didn't pick up. Or sorry, uh, Max did not pick up. Uh, Max, we want to see you. Uh, see highly. We need to fix this. Uh, I don't think it will go well at all. Okay, so do you see this? This isn't somebody that wants to want wants to meet Poppy in the hotel. Like, right, this isn't somebody that wants to, it sounds like, continue with the relationship, right? Uh, she didn't go by the agreements we do. Please, please just uh, listen. There's a, there's like a, a pepper? Oh, it's peppermint. Okay, pepper. Um, Max, please listen to us. Uh, it will be okay. We are just dealing, we are just dealing with Poppy and trying to fix things. We are still coming out tomorrow. Uh, there's a fair, there's far too much resentment, stress, fighting, possessiveness. Uh, this isn't possessiveness. It's not something this body and mind can handle. So doesn't want to be a part of this. Doesn't want to. We just need people to hold agreements, please, please listen to me. We tried and we were instantly criticized for even trying. Pepper, I'm... we can't lose you, father, mother. She is my mom. Please listen. Give us another chance. Pepper, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry, but we can't uh do that. We can't do this any longer. We can fix this. Please, please don't. Uh, We love her. Please let me fix this. I don't think there's any way to fix it. It's too broken. Please listen. It is not. It is. It, it isn't. You are being overprotective. Uh, please let me talk to my mom, please. She is my mom. Let me talk to her. We're both here. Uh, Mom, please don't do this. Please let me call. I will talk and fix this. I have to do it, kiddo. No, please. We love you. Are you breaking up with Poppy and Penny right before the trip? Please don't. Uh, that is another... Uh, I don't know this one. It's a, it's a different uh, emote. Love, stop. It's a different um alter, you know, speaking here. Love, stop, please. Sorry I fucked up, Uh, but hear me out. Yeah, I am. I am breaking up with you both. I need to get back to normal. I need to fix myself. I need to be okay. I need to not be stressed at this time. Um, that's like a, a devil um altar. A devil uh, emote here. Please listen to us. I can't. I cannot do this again. Uh, Poppy calls. Uh, or yeah, yeah. Um, Poppy calls and um, no, it does not answer. Hi, Haley. Please don't do this. We can fix this. We are sorry. It's over. I do love you. Uh, what love is left? It's so broken and shattered. Love, please. We can fix this. I am coming to see you tomorrow. No, we can't. Oh my God. See, do you see how much pressure that Noah's under here? And uh, spoiler, no, no does you know give in. No, no agrees to you know meet with po to, to 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 go to the hotel room, uh, with with Poppy and Zena, and you know there's they're they're intimate together. And the fact that after being intimate together, after like 
so much information, so much communication from Noah saying, like, I'm not comfortable with this. I can't do this. But still, like, Poppy is trying to hold no to this, like, agreement that seems to have been forced on uh, on no that they would stay together and, quote unquote, try to fix things, try to work things out. Right. Uh, yeah. Look at this. I can't even refund the hotel now. So much pressure. Right. I, I've spent money and now it's, you know, please uh, give us the weekend. We can fix this. Please. We beg you. Talk to us. We overreacted. This is way too much at once. Please, please. You didn't. You reacted like normal. I fucked up. I fucked up again and again and again and again and again. Uh, stop. It can be worked out. Please talk to us. Stop shutting down. Anytime we try, we just fuck it up again. Uh, we love you. Uh, no, we have uh, dozens of successes and hundreds of fuck ups. Not true. Stop. Please listen. You. I know you're upset. I'm more than upset. But we can't lose you. I've been more than upset. So we have, so we have, but you're uh, promised, but you promised you would stay. You said you wanted us. I did. And now you don't. I can't. You can. And you are just being scared. Uh, I can't do this for the rest of my life. Um, it will get better. I could barely do this for a couple. Do you see how much pressure is? Like, why the rest of your life, right? This is somebody that feels like they're being forced into a situation that they can't leave. I can't do this for the rest of my life. That's what it feels like saying like, okay, relenting would be like essentially, uh, it will get better. I could barely do this for a couple of months. Love, please. I'm shattered. Yeah. A couple of months. That's how long they've been, you know, um, you know, sort of, uh, online, uh, uh, you know, sort of, sort of dating, you know, at a distance. Right. Um, try, listen, I've tried. Have you repeatedly, you, uh, fucking posted shit from Amy. Fuck off. That isn't try. No, we love you and we are fighting this. It's fucking over. No, it isn't. Please don't go. Love, please. Um, I fucked it all up. I fucked it all up. I fucked it all up. Lost the girl that I love. So yeah, no, it's blocked. Poppy. Uh, I can't do this anymore, ZZ. I'm sorry. Uh, I can't let your relationship, Cena's involvement in gaslighting Noah Flake. I can't let your relationship suffer by waiting till you pulled the plug. So we're doing it. What are you talking about? It's over. I can't handle relate this relationship anymore. I understand that you are stressed uh, to address the stuff from above. As far as letting my relationship suffer, that's not really a choice you can make, nor uh, would I pull the plug. I've never advocated for that. Is there anything I can do? Everyone, including myself, was looking forward to a holiday with you. I don't think so. I'm so burned out and stressed out. I keep breaking. I don't think I can last until a therapist can try and fix me. And after this, I don't know what amount of the trip could be salvaged. I don't think one trip can fix loss of love, building resentment. So yeah, like falling out of love with... um. I think that there are ways you struggle. There are ways you struggle, but you're not as broken as you think. We want uh, you to have a therapist for your own sake too, so you have uh, so you have support and help uh, someone to and someone to go to. I am still uh, going to try and get a therapist for my own sake. As far as the rest, I think uh, that it is something to talk out. I don't think there is anything more any there's any more talking things out. Why not? I'm getting trauma response from just talking to them and interacting with them more and more like just the act of sending a message makes my hands tremble uh trauma is coming trauma coming up it really hard in new relationships is something this is pretty normal in new relationships uh that strong connection can remind the brain of past family stuff very easily for flashbacks to occur the brain needs only the tiniest vague reminder uh start to make associations I have a feeling with a lots of extra past stress getting mixed up at present. Oh my God. Um, sorry. Possibly spawn in the house. Thank you. Uh, Blitzkrieg. Why is my, Oh, I turned the YouTube alerts off. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry to anybody that, um, super chatted or super stickered while that was going on. We, we got, we get these ghost, um, alerts from time to time. And the only way to get them to stop is for me to um, turn off 
all the YouTube alerts. And I did that, and uh, that's why I didn't see a Brit Skrieg super chat there. I apologize, chat. I got like, ah, uh, like this is, oh my god. Look, we're just gonna get through this part and understand the. I think this is the key part. I don't want to get my head into this relationship because it is fucking me up. I don't know how you know no this affected no but it's affecting me really strongly and like wow um let's see <laughs> i'm so sorry uh let me, i gotta I, i'm still trying to find uh youtube alerts here it's somewhere it's buried there it is youtube alerts and turned on uh? britskrieg super chatted ten dollars ten dollars from britskrieg possible spawn in the house uh so you think spawn was mentioned is that what you're saying britskrieg Oh my gosh, you're talking about spawn is in uh high this is spawn. Um oh potentially. Oh my gosh. So spawn um I I don't have a way unfortunately of verifying like who anyone is. Like apparently anybody anybody anyone can come in and claim to uh be someone. Um let me try and catch up with chat. Um god damn. Okay, sorry, sorry. Um, hi everyone, it's Spawn. Uh, obviously, uh, take my words with a grain of salt because I can't prove. Okay, so so you realize where where we're at as far as that. Uh, can't prove my identity in a YouTube stream chat. Uh, my mom's. Okay, my mom's alter. Uh, sorry, my mom's alters are Poppy. That's the Poppy. Wait, Poppy emoji, Penny coin emoji, Pepper a uh, child alert uh so, sorry child altar pepper emoji oh wait oh did i get penny and and uh pepper mixed up then for some reason i was thinking P penny was um and the one i don't know the name of peppermint emoji okay um wait poppy is in the flower okay so the the flower emoji is poppy um uh, penny emoji is coin uh pepper is um thank you also um for uh uh brits creek for uh, alerting me that um sorry i just didn't i i i got distracted um like just reading through this because i feel like we're almost to the point where you know the the thing that's being the, the whole the whole controversy here as far as you know poppy's claim that noah you know r worded poppy uh by by being with them intimately and then breaking up with them that that somehow that is a uh essay by deception right that's that's poppy's claim um you know that this is this is where the rubber meets road the road is as far as that claim um and so we're we're kind of in the the zone that and i don't want to read more of this than i have to because like seriously this is fucking me up like um Okay, so Poppy and Penny are the only ones I've spoken to before moving out, though. Okay. Um, she might have uh, more than that, but those are the only ones I know of. Okay. So tired of this. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Um, I also have OSDD1. Poppy handles it very poorly, though. Um, as someone um, who also has BPD and alters, my mom uses it as an excuse for her poor behavior. Um, the way she acts as a result of her BPD is not normal. A BPD is not an excuse for bullying and blackmail. BPD does not remove the ability to consent. It is not a person. It's not a person's partner's responsibility to manage their BPD. That responsibility lies on the person who has BPD. Um, yeah, yeah. Please take my words with a grain of salt, uh, because yeah. So you understand. Uh, yeah. Listen, uh, Poppy. Or, like this is this is like. I, 
I can only imagine what you've been through, Spawn. And um Poppy using her social media presence and, and power and reach and all the, the the platform in order to strike um not just at Noah but um but but at you uh for for just you know telling your side of the story and say speaking your truth is something that i can't possibly imagine but i i know it's a lot so much psychic damage yeah i mean it's um And the only reason that I'm talking about this, because like I said, this is difficult for me to deal with. I can't really experience like accounts of other people's um, trauma without also feeling that trauma myself. And what I felt so far from this is like beyond words. So we're going to try to get through this part and then we're going to go back to the um, the stream that I might very well get DMCA'd for posting, but like this needs to be out here. And, and especially when people like Noah and Spawn do not have their own platform to um, to, to be able to. I mean, th there have been people like, you know, Malcolm is 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 talking about this, unfortunately, some less uh, savory uh, people. Are, are talking about this and they're using this story as a way to attack trans people they're using it as a way to uh, attack um you know people with disabilities people who deal with mental illness and 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 people that are polyamorous like right this is you know a very unsavory side of the internet has, has latched onto this as well and so i feel a little bit of a responsibility to you know, try to try to at least even the playing field as as far as like I mean, it's not right. I'm a much smaller channel than um, uh, Poppy and Xena. When I had the chance to join the White Leaf Network, I said no because I knew that that um, I knew that that offer came with a loss of independence. I knew that this was a website that while extremely useful for streamers um it, it make making it like way more doable to make your um stream sustainable right uh that the cost was that you're then under the control of of that network and um you know for instance um but before this all came out before before the um you know the threats were brought to the sysadmin's attention of white leaf there wouldn't have been a way to like speak out about something like this without somebody risking you know their own website right because we've seen in the past anything that displeases uh vosh's sysadmin anything that displeases Voss vosh is going to be met with like a um an immediate um withdrawal of that website and um you know that's you know, fucked a few people up. Lance um, from the serfs um, in, in just talking about what would be the procedures for winding down my relation, his relationship with Whiteleaf had it immediately um, yanked from him. Xander Hall, um, when when Xander Hall was doing something that Vasha's sysadmin didn't like, had the, uh, you know, what was threatened with losing the site. And I never wanted to be in that situation. Right. I never wanted to be in a situation where I couldn't be honest about uh, what I see and what's going on and, um, you know, how I feel about it. Uh, Spawn says, I was not, I'm not a child for clarification. I was in my 20s when the abuse started. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and Spawn's uh, gotten out of that uh, situation, gotten out of that uh, household uh since then um we we actually haven't really gotten um spawn to to your part of the story yet i thought i thought that we were going to be able to um finish it all tonight but this is this is a lot 
This is a lot. Okay, so let's try to get back into this and finish at least this part. I've been getting trauma response from just talking to them and interacting with them more and more. It's just like, uh, like just the act of sending the, okay, so we read that part. Um, what are you scared of happening? Uh, Noah says, I'm scared of, uh, talking to her at all. I'm scared of even more of stress coming up. I can't be with someone I'm terrified of. Literally, God damn it. Literally been told that if I hadn't broken up with Amy and Pop and Poppy unalived herself, that it would be my fault. That's so much pressure. Like, do you see how much pressure is being exerted on this person? Uh, that line from Penny I thought was inappropriate, but even so, she still wants to be with you. Plus, I've been working uh, with her on that front. Uh, but where does the fear lead? What are the actual ramifications? I get scared. Do you see what this is? Yeah, so, so whoever put this together is accusing Xena of helping to gaslight No. And, you know, like, obviously No is traumatized, is in a bad way. And the way that Xena is talking to No is in, like, a helpful, guiding, you know, therapeutic sense. But what is, what are they being guided towards? And unfortunately, they're being guided towards an encounter with, with Poppy that they're both going to come to regret. So, I don't know. I get scared all the time. I was terrified this weekend, but this is an emotion that can go off uh, any number of reasons. It does not automatically mean the situation is bad. That fear that I felt was able to be worked out and healed. It was a lot of my own stuff about being left out too. Poppy and the girls helped remind me about how much you care and have been telling me that you've been really working on communication. The fear went away, and now I'm really excited. Emotions can be worked out through and healed. I know the girls would want uh, would want to be there to reassure you and help heal things too. Plus, there are tricks to help compartmentalize this stuff, so the raw, intense emotions are easier to deal with and can be dealt with in a healthy way. I need my life back. I need to be able to have my other partners. I cannot be forced to spend 100% of my time and energy on the girls. Zena, nobody asks you, uh, nobody asks that. That that's what that's what she's being pressured towards, though. It's uh passively demanded. I, I would say not so passively. No, it hasn't. It really has. Anything involving other partners has either been uh put to an ultimatum or is such a triggering boundary that I can't even mention them. Uh Zena, I've been trying to get you to take a space. Take space when you need to need it for months. Uh, the ask is that you give a heads up on hard topics, like with the date. Ask, uh, ask to be upfront last night the way Poppy would know to compartmentalize and could give you the space to do your thing. Giving an accurate time would mean okay. See, this is the thing I couldn't give an accurate time. Like that's a give me the accurate time of when you're going to be talking to this person. That, you know, is your other partner. Like, I, that's too much of an ask. Giving accurate time would mean that you had plenty of time with Sora uninterrupted. Uh, so that, that is not how I interact with partners. Okay, I'm sorry. It's not, it's not on a timeline, especially if you haven't seen somebody in a long time. And uh, the girl, yeah, to, to fucking set an alarm and be like, oh, sorry, I gotta go, uh, you know, gotta text my other partner because it's noon. Uh, the girls as a whole would give you space to do your thing. Uh, I wasn't even given a space. They uh, messaged me all anyway. Anyway, they always do. Uh, they panicked in true BPD fashion, but all that happens was was message. All that happened was messages. You can mute them and tell. Oh my gosh, I can only imagine what would happen if Noah muted them and uh, tell them you'll talk when you're done. You can uh, also hold your boundaries. My boundaries get trampled over repeatedly. Uh, did you tell them to stop messaging or mute them? I have before. Uh, then I just get a guilt trip messages of them being sad and missing me. And especially when somebody dangles like the prospect of unaliving themselves in front of you. 
as like a you know worst case scenario that's a lot of pressure that's that's too this is too much pressure for anybody to be expected to handle uh before but not this time and that isn't uh them trying to guilt trip bpd literally changes how your brain functions and perceives things it is hardwired to think that uh, they will aban be abandoned every second. Even with me, I've been uh, with her for six to seven years. Again, those emotions, you're not responsible for them. The thing uh, with BPD compared to regular people um, is the capability of their range of emotions is much larger than for others. That goes for all of them. Uh, happy, sad, angry, uh, all of the emotions. Ha happy, sadness. Happiness, sadness, anger, all of them. Um, all they did is uh, trigger all manner of trauma responses from me by doing things they can't help. What if the end result of your trauma is that also can be seen and healed? Like all the parts that you were scared of with others where uh, you are scared of yourself, light can finally reach those places. You don't have to hide. It's a chance to truly unlearn things that you passed that the past taught you. When they see I don't know if like yeah. this is Xena telling Noah that that everything that 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 the instinct to get out of this relationship is pathological. No, it's not. It's a choice. It needs to be a choice, right? You can care about somebody a lot. You can love somebody, okay? But the choice needs to be there for you to be able to say that this relationship isn't, the choice needs to be there for everyone. I, I, I don't know, like, if they wanted you to do something, they would just be direct. I think you, uh, your past, taught you to be fearful of anything passive. A lot of people can uh, get a bit passive when they are scared to. It's not intentional. If anything, it's a sign that it's a sign of trauma is what it is. This is this is trauma coming up. I'm terrified and not in a pathological way where like like I, I don't mean in the sense of I mean in the sense of what's happening to Noah just the poppy part is is traumatic not just that it's like reawakening or bringing up old trauma like this in and of itself is trauma noah's response to protect herself and to get away from that is not pathological it's self-preservation and xena seems to be trying to short circuit that self-preservation I can't handle the responsibility of somebody with BPD. Uh, I thought I could at first, but I had no idea what I was getting into. I looked things up. I really tried uh, to know and learn, but I cannot do this. But then we, uh, okay, anyway. I just want to know how Noah ends up agreeing to go to the hotel room after all this stuff. Um. BPD, when treated properly uh, or understood, is not as scary as Poppy makes it out to be. I am not uh, treated for mine because finding a therapist who understands is very difficult. But yeah, yeah, no, I've definitely heard, uh, you know, there's a lot of therapists who uh, demonize uh, BPD. And, and, you know, that's probably not what you need. Um, but even I know it's not an unmanageable, life-ruining beast. Uh, Noah is ju was just worn down. Oh no. God. Um. Uh, Spawn says, I have done uh, the work on my own to manage my BPD, and I know uh, when I get fears of aban abandonment, they are usually unfounded. She met up, I can't believe she, well, I, I don't know. I mean, like, I get that. I don't want to, I feel so uncomfortable getting, like, so into, you know, somebody else's relationship. And especially, you know, the, this, you know, troubled 
relationship, but um for another sexual encounter, I I, th I think this was their first sexual I, th I think this was their first IRL encounter, if I'm not mistaken, right? And, and you're like, no, Noah obviously has misgivings, obviously, um, you know, wants to end the relationship, but apparently gets worn down. Oh, my God. And like the way that Xena is talking to talking down to no, who's like in a traumatized state. The, the way that like Xena is kind of occupying this almost paternal. um role like right like like it sounds like to me like you need reassurance about uh it being okay to take space away even if poppy is having reactions or some big emotions poppy is okay and will be okay if you do take space i know because she's uh, done this for me and she really cares about you you and max are really major figures in our lives i would hate to lose you both like this you're a friend and a lover and a mate and a partner and a parent and parent to my closest family um i know so the parent thing is about i this is so hard to explain um so When somebody has different altars and um what like poppy and, and one of those altars is identified as uh you know you know a a a a child personality like oh my god I've got the sunlight coming in ruining my shot ruining my shot making uh me look ridiculous right now Chad I <laughs> um but it anyway um like the relationship I, I guess that they have is that no is kind of like a acting as, as like a caretaker to that personality. Um th this is way beyond my own lived experience. And so I d I don't want to mischaracterize, you know, something that I can can't possibly understand. But that's what's being spoken of when Xena says as a parent to someone that I like love and care about parent to my closest family that's what that's um uh if someone generally believes that BPD prevents them from being able to consent then it is their responsibility to stop having a yeah yeah I, you think I I have it right? Okay, I'm just trying to make sure I don't. Mischaracterize any of this. Um, I just don't know. I believe in you. I really do. I don't like so. Yeah, making it like, you know, this is like a an achievement. This is like a psychological breakthrough, like for Noah to stay in this relationship that she obviously doesn't want to be in and and it's not it's not a it's not a breakthrough it's a giving in to uh, and now it's not just about poppy it's 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 xena and poppy kind of working in tandem to wear down uh nose resistance to something that she really doesn't want to do i believe in me i don't believe in this yeah you got to go up with your gut on this stuff you really do. Um, I just don't know. I, uh, I'm i not even upset after uh, breaking up with her. Just kind of disappointed. I don't know, but the longer this relationship goes on, the more I resent her. My gut is telling me to get away from this. I wanted this weekend. I wanted this relationship. I tried really hard, but nothing was ever good enough uh, for longer than a few hours or a day i don't need constant reassurance i just need to feel like i'm not an emotional punching bag
How does anyone even have a remotely enjoyable time after this on the trip? What if the trip... Okay, so at this point, yeah, she's kind of, like, I don't know, resigned to... Like, just saying, like, I don't... This isn't going to be enjoyable. This isn't going to be fun for anyone. Like, why, why, are, why are we doing this? What if the trip happens and then it's for nothing? Oh, so right there. Right there. So what? At least we tried. No, no, not... Unfortunately, that's not right. <laughs> unfortunately, if the trip happens and it's for nothing, in other words, if no uh, feels that she still wants to leave the relationship after having, you know, you know, been with with Poppy uh, at the hotel, um, she does not get to just say, at least we tried. This is this is, you know, Poppy is going to be vindictive, at, you know, and uh, accuse no of. Uh, of essaying her through omission, through deception, right? So I think it's pretty clear from this that No is not going into this willingly. No is no is being pushed by not just Poppy, but also Xena. Okay, so yeah, at this point, there's, there's just like walls of text from uh, Xena. If I uh, give her hope from this trip and nothing changes, how can they not make it worse? Um, wall of text from Xena. We can try. So yeah, bro, just kind of like somebody said, worn down. I don't know. We can try the trip. I am really tired and worn out. Literally, literally worn out. Literally says it, right? So I'm guessing this is like the day of. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, so do you want to see me tomorrow? Yes. So after being worn down by Xena, No is going to try the trip. Based on being told that, like, her resistance is somehow pathological when it's actually self-preservative. Like, Xena, Xena and Poppy have successfully um, overridden Noah's instincts to uh, protect herself. literally six minutes away from her house and uh she keeps telling me all and all she keeps telling me to do is go home i'm exhausted i have no food in me i spent thousands of dollars on this girl and i drove oh my god no pressure though right and i drove eight hours yesterday just to see her and now i'm stuck here this feels like hell oh my god yeah so okay apologies chat um this is you know, trigger, I don't want to say trigger alert, um, content, I don't know, like, you know, obviously that image is not easy for a lot of people to deal with, um, I, I can't, I can't read that, that fucking, but I mean, you saw what the image is posted there, right? Like, I, 
I don't know how to take that other than an implicit threat. Okay, so Nightwild, uh, I guess a mod in uh, the community is saying one of the, my partners dumped me. Uh, Poppy responds with one of my partners just broke up with me too. I'm right here with you, uh, ZZ, and I still, oh, want you? Oh, I didn't realize there was like a relationship with this member of the community. Is that, Am I getting that right? Is that real? Okay, a kid you agreed, um, kid you agreed to be a parent to. She's not a real child. She's a child in a headspace. Responsible. Yeah, so that, yeah, the, the altar of, uh, and you said that was Pepper? Um, responsible for that altar, responsibility for that altar falls on the system, not an outside party. But am I getting this right about this? This is Night Nightwild is like a some somebody in the like this is a this is like a fan, right? This is like a audience member. But I ZZ and I still want you. I'm assuming that doesn't mean like as a community member, right? I'm assuming that means like the colloquial want you. There's like poetry from from Noah. I drove four, drove out four hundred miles just to get used and then tossed aside. So look, getting broken up with sucks, okay. But this turns from getting used and then tossed aside as if Noah is like, "Yo, I'm gonna get you know, I'm gonna let the the sex happen, but then like not." do the relation like like as if like Noah's somehow like getting one over on Poppy like that's not that's not what's happening this is too much this is too real like I am looking at this from a distance and I am you know not able to handle this I can't imagine what it must have been like to be in this situation I don't even know what this um emote is. It looks like like a moon or something. Stop hiding responses. It's it is silly. Uh people can see them anyway. Poppy and Pepper deserve better. Uh then so they're talking about it when you make a tweet, um, you can hide uh responses. There's a there's an icon that people can press to get to see the hidden responses but generally people will use this for like spam or something like that you know if somebody spams on your thread then you know you hide that if somebody is uh trolling or harassing you 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 would hide that um but also you know if you just like don't want somebody to see you know the one of the replies you you could do that but it's a little bit of the streisand effect right if you're trying to hide something that somebody else uh, said you you end up you know it's it, it ends up just being really you know obvious that you didn't want people to see that but in this case like I, I i think that noah probably has you know reason to hide responses it's it's pretty understandable um poppy and pepper deserve better than broken hearts and a dishonest poem dishonest poem hiding shit in metaphor oh my god so now we're criticizing the poetry that's great. Um, this is Penny. Uh, no, I'm not going to let you lie. Poppy deserves better than this shit. Uh, tell the truth about what you did. You broke a mentally ill woman for fun after your headmate was emotionally abusive to me and you abandoned a child because, oh no, it was convenient after you sexually took advantage. Yo, did anybody in here get the feeling that Noah was like somehow looking forward to or or or, or wanting or you know the the like the the 
sexual situation is something that Noah seems to be have been pushed into, not something that Noah is like, you know, engineering or manipulating, right? Uh, Poppy uh, take it, sexually took advantage of Poppy uh, to see if you still loved her. That's literally what they're like asking Noah to do was to like you try you know see see how it is you know what's the worst that could happen maybe uh, there's no love there and then you know you end the relationship and she ends the relationship and she all hell breaks lo loose on on her fucking name like and I don't even know if like you know how like I I don't know if there's like real life ramifications or if it's just like like as far as as Noah being trashed like this, right? If you say if you are a large, if you are a decent sized content creator, and you make an accusation of somebody essaying you, there's a very good chance that that person's real identity will be exposed by someone in your audience, right? If they're th oh my god, my favorite content creator got essayed by this horrible person, uh, let me like you know. Find out who they are and, and and attach the you know online persona to like a real life you know name. I mean like this is potentially like life ruining. You are not uh, the hero here. You are the reason my sister can't be found right now. Pepper can't be found in the headspace, and it's your fault. We loved you. Oh my God, we loved you. We took care of you. Got uh you got used the space you needed. A camera even showed. Uh, how awful Amy is as a person. That's the that's the metamor. That's the other person that Noah is with, right? Showed you how horrible your your other partner was. Wow. Spent nearly thousands of dollars to see you. No pressure though, right? Remember, no pressure. And uh, what did we get? Emotional harm, a lot of tears, and a possible UTI. Okay. Wow. Poppy initiated the sexual encounter. Xena was present in the hotel, often in uh, other rooms. Noah Flake broke up with Poppy, according to and according to Noah Flake, uh, was physically barred from leaving by an uh, upset Poppy who clung on to her. Noah was uh, one against two individuals who did not have her best interest in mind. Fuck, have her best interest in mind in the hotel room. Look, if anybody has a claim to, like, having been, like, essayed, it sounds like it's it's Noah. It's, I mean, it's not clear from this, but, like, this is, there, there's this, like, I don't, um, she was trying to hold her boundaries and stay firm in of on her needs poppy just didn't care like holding somebody against their will in a hotel room you see weird key smashes my cat might just be stepping on the keyboard they do that they definitely do especially when you're at your keyboard right my cat would always when i'm reading a book try to like you know i got a book in my lap my cat would like sit on the book <laughs> like you you don't need to read this you just need to uh anyway um it's weird to notice the number of people who haven't reached out uh to check on the safety and about me one um okay got to scroll by that really quickly i don't want to you know be surprised about any artwork that's not safe for. My relationship with Noah Flake was an abusive one. Her poem gives away uh, this abuse and not in the way that she thinks. This was abuse through negligence towards me. She knew the boundaries and the lines and kept breaking them over and over again. She continued to say thoughtless things that did harm and damage to me and my system well-knowing BPD and understanding that us leaving was nearly impossible. She regularly made choices that hurt me even if she didn't mean to, and even when one of her partners had lied to her and was causing suicidal ideation for me, 
she uh, still took a week to decide to break up with that person. On a side note, I have no doubt she'll uh, get back together with the awful human being, but that's not my business anymore. Enjoy your relationship with somebody who has the communication skills of a potato. God. As far as I'm concerned, they all deserve one another. I tried to give this girl love, support, and a family, and what I got was reoccurring negligence over and over again. Someone who couldn't care about my feelings and regularly stepped on every trigger possible, not to mention someone who essentially abandoned Pepper, the little girl in my of my system who called her mom. The joke was that she was never malicious as far as I could tell which makes all of this much worse because rather than being malicious, it just means she's so comically inept at relationships that she never stumbled into, nearly stumbled into me unaliving. That is still putting pressure, still putting pressure on Noah. Um, as far as I'm concerned, they all, do, okay, like, yeah, we already got, The sad part of this is that she was the child of neglect. She knows what the that abuse does, but she just reenacted it on me. There we go with reenactment again. Uh, somehow is okay when uh, uh, Poppy does it, even in a way that in in a way where she implies violates the other person's consent. Like I never got a clear understanding of what, what that situation was, right? But here she is, you know, accusing um. Noah of re of of reenacting um neglect. She wouldn't seek help or therapy until uh, pushed on it. She uh was asked to seek a therapist for the entire relationship just because being with a BPD person is hard, and she didn't even start looking into looking until I provided therapist uh for her a week ago. Jesus Christ! I feel like that's a conflict. I feel like your partner who is a therapist or a, a you know mental licensed uh mental health care worker recommending a therapist to you i feel like that's it sounds like conflict of interest it also explains why she cho chooses the relationship she does uh, their relationships of convenience, people who ask very little and want very little, uh, you never have to actually show up. She would claim that they would ask demands of her, but when she, when asked that what they were, she could never give examples. She's like a leaf in the wind who just goes where things are carried and that, and that way she never, uh, But she does never have to make hard decisions again because the last time she did, her engagement broke up. She wrote a letter to this Amy person. I finally reached out to Amy to fix it. She, li okay. I hope this finds you well. Dear Amy, I hope this finds you well. I know you've been instructed uh, to block me if I write you based on recent events at times. I think it is best, uh, that is best after reading this. Please let me explain. For the duration of my relationship with Hailey, I have been indirectly, oh my god, I'm worried about, like, I mean, I, I guess this isn't, like, identifying information. I just, uh, I, I, we, we went through and re redacted, um, when when Poppy and Zena talked about Spawn, they um they mentioned um Spawn's name and um we went through great pains um thanks to, to Zara was able to redact all all mentions uh, of Spawn's name uh from that VOD. But um now I'm worried that there's stuff in here that could be um one one thing is true that this kind of drama does attract you know, especially especially when you got commentary fuckers like Chud Logic covering this, right? 
this is what attracts like the worst part of the internet and so like for anybody's information to be findable for this from this um from these documents would be really fucked up okay so writing to amy writing to uh, i don't know what this is other than possibly like trying to sabotage noah's other relationship i cannot i cannot and i will not read further into this what noah flake sounds like snowflake Okay, so last DMs. Okay, this is, um, I was under the impression we were keeping texting as a main source of content. So, sorry about that. Moment of weakness. It's okay. It probably shouldn't be. I'm, uh, sorry for bothering you. I don't want to assume where you are at emotionally. It's still struggling a lot. I'm stable enough. Okay, so... Depends on what the goal of the communication is. Who initiated it? Uh, wait, no, it looks like. Wait, so I'm we're missing one. Like, like, right? Noah says yes. I was under the impression we were keeping texting just as a main source. Okay, I, I the only thing I can figure is that maybe there was like a phone call, that that Noah didn't answer. I don't know, but this is like a response to something. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to make of that. I don't necessarily know if the communication is healthy yet for you, though, or if communication is even desired. Uh, so this is after Noah's broken up with uh, Poppy. It depends on what the goal of your communication is. You've been clear that you uh, really want nothing to do with me beyond possible friendship. At this point, I'm not even sure I want that, or whether I want that or not. Emotionally, I keep oscillating between beating myself up and feeling like... Uh, there was something that I should have done differently or thinking that I wasn't good enough until the other shoe drops. And then suddenly I'm very angry at you uh, for everything you did and did not do. I've also come to some conclusions about our relationships. But yeah, for uh, all of this is a struggle. I miss you and I still love you. And part of me is incredibly angry at you. A friendship at this point would be uh, the most I desire. If you don't want that, I accept that decision and I won't even bother you again. I'm really sorry for how much you're struggling. I know it's my fault. It is your fault. One of the things I've uh, come to the conclusion of about our relationship is that it was abusive. It was abusive due to negligence, it, the continued ignoring of my boundaries and not being mindful about BPD along with the stuff with partners it all just comes down to looking like you don't care i know you did and i know what you felt but I, I know what i felt uh but you handle all this uh so poorly i spent the last four months in uh into something like a manic state wishing uh for you to just connect with me and you wouldn't and the one time that i thought we actually made a connection it was just you using me uh, to see if you still had love for me. Uh, do you know how much sex with you felt violated and tainted? So here's here we're coming to the part where Poppy's going to give her rationale of why she feels like Noah breaking up with her after being intimate is a it is 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 you know she's calling it rape rape by um, deception, right? I would like to be friends. I would also like to be more than friends, but you need therapy. You need to do your personal work so this passive bullshit ends. Your trauma... Oh my god. Oh my god. 
Your trauma is incredibly destructive, and there would need to be some growth on your end if there were to be a friendship. I would hope that there there be a possible uh there be possible for more cause uh, I do love you, but you've already said that you would never date me again because of some reason. And if you've already put a line down like that, wait, that's a boundary. That's a be clear, clear boundary. I, I don't know. It feels like that should be helpful, right? Up front, there's no chance for a relationship. That seems like a kind and proper thing, boundary to, to lay down. There's no real point uh, to hoping because you've already decided I'm some sort of monster or that I'm somehow toxic when uh, all I ever did was be open and honest and transparent with you. Uh, with what I said in the hotel after, yes, and uh, I can and do see how awful it was to you. Oh my god. See, this is... Oh. Um, You took a moment of passion and a love and made me feel used. I saved that experience specifically for you. It was all cast aside. I always felt torn of whatever. I feel like Noah's trying to be nice to Poppy. He's trying to let Poppy down gently. He's trying not to push back on, you know, Poppy's, you know, self-serving characterization of what happened. And this is going to be used as justification for the false charges for, for the false accusations that poppy's making you know and you can already see this in the works right uh i don't know if i really knew you because i don't uh think you ever let me in i gave you everything and showed you every part of myself and at the end of the day it was too much and somehow broke things or just made them so you don't care you I, I, so yeah, again, just kind of, I don't, uh, you have no idea how hard thing this has been. I don't, uh, not for you. I don't, I only truly understand things from the perspective of my side of it. Okay. So yeah, I, and I'm pretty sure that this is what, this is the, like this kind of, um, you know, Noah, Responding, I absolutely know I did harm. I made mistakes. I admitted that many times. I This is going to be used against Noah. Like, this is going to be used to justify the bullshit charges. Love, you literally ruined my Christmas because you couldn't tell me that you weren't in love with me anymore. She did! Did you... Wait, am I, am I wrong about that? Uh, Spawn says, yeah, my mom wanted to name uh, me that before my bio mom. Uh, okay, sorry, I'm not sure what that's. Um... Poppy doesn't love no, she loves the idea. Yeah, again, I feel like I don't like getting like this close to like, you know, like I'm mean, reading somebody's. Like, I wish that this weren't necessary. I wish that, you know, even if Poppy, you know, had these ideas, you know, running through her head of, of how she characterized the relationship, I wish she hadn't used her platform irresponsibly given to her by, you know, the people that we've talked about in order to smear and slime Noah, whose one crime was breaking up with her. Okay, so yeah, Poppy's still wanting uh her back. Oh my god, chat. Okay, so tweets, that's where we want to go. Um I was just in contact with my ex-girlfriend. She unironically used Darvo on me. She denied 
every effing thing that she did and refused to take responsibility for any of it. No, I feel like she took responsibility for more than for too much, right? She was trying to let you down easy uh, for any of it and then proceeded to turn it around on me and call me uh, the abuser uh, because I asked her not to step over my boundaries during the relationship. There is utterly no hope for being friends or even in each other's uh, lives. So this got... So so Noah did eventually push back, it sounds like, right? Um, can't wait to cover this on stream and talk about the ways that relationships can go tips up when the other person doesn't even show up and uh, actually allow themselves to be vulnerable and then uses Darvo at the end because uh, they can't handle the shit she, they did. She had the gall to blame Penny for the reason our relationship ended. Um, I think this is the first time I've ever said this because it's the first time I've ever felt it. I'm glad the relationship is over. I'm glad that... Uh, okay, glad to be done with her. Um, I just... Real One of the things I realized the relationship was a huge issue uh, was reactive abuse. She would step over a boundary or cause a problem or god forbid one of her partners would do something wrong and she would defend it when this happened i would okay so where does this turn into charges of r word Just had a conversation with one of my close dear friends and we were talking about uh and i was describing about the feeling of being used sexually she basically compared it to something i can it to something i can to assault i don't know if i agree with that but the idea of just being used uh to see if someone still loves you does feel totally gross i feel like that's what poppy and xena were asking no to do and, and no didn't want to this is so, yeah, there's Darvo here, but it's like the other way around. Um, uh, Noah, okay, here we go. Noah Flake had sex with me under false pretenses. This is kind of essay. No wonder I feel so conflicted and gross about the experience. It makes sense. Amy and Sora, these are the other partners, I guess, of Noah. Uh, were shit at boundaries and consent, even highly uh, couldn't answer basic questions about consent to ZZ. The whole group of them are unsafe. Gotta make sure to... Yeah, I, I, know, I don't know which of the art is going to be potentially NSFW, so I gotta scroll past that as quick as I can. Um, since I came to the realization of what happened to me, I find myself in a place where I can actually feel calm again. Uh, no flake isn't some monster it's deeply okay so anyway going back and forth about how uh they feel about i am just wondering like where does this turn into accusations of essay i mean like, we, we've already got the sense of like Um, chat, I've got one minute and 30 seconds before I have to end stream. Otherwise, um, I turn into a pumpkin. We don't want that to happen. Uh, for people who don't know, Darvo stands for, yeah, deny, attack, reverse victim, and offender. Uh, basically saying uh, that abusers will deny their abuse. Yeah, and turn it back on the person that they did the abuse to. Uh, yeah, six hour mark. Thank you. Good for Gabby. Oh my god, chat. Um, so I would say that we got through it, like it was tough, but we got through it, but we didn't get through. We, this is, we got through Poppy Amory, uh, conclusion. No flake is a victim of thorough psychological, emotional abuse by two people who have a history of inflicting the same on others, including their own adult child. That is, uh, speaking about spawn there. Oh my God. Uh, Combat pay. Super chatted $50, $50 from Brit Screeg. Combat pay. Thank you so much, Britzkrieg. Thank you so much. That's really sweet of you. Um, uh, let me see if I can read the just speed read the rest of this. Poppy pressurized, uh, disassociated, upset, and vulnerable. Uh, Noah 
into recanting the breakup so Poppy could visit and initiate sex with her. Noah Flake placated Poppy until uh, it was too much to bear and broke up uh, for a final time in which Poppy retaliated by painting her as a rapist. No Flake was promised that she could walk away. Yeah, that's what Xena and Poppy said to her. And if it didn't work out, and this is what happened instead. Now she is being defamed, abused. Okay, so this is why it's important. This is why I had to cover it. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for helping me get through this. And um, this is, uh, you know, I'm, to Noah and to Spawn, I'm sorry you suffered this. I gotta go. I, I'm gonna turn into a pumpkin if I'm not careful.